Chapter 1069. Half Step to Ninth Grade Sovereign. Rumble. The waves were churning amid the boundless, stormy sea. Their noise was deafening, shocking everyone. Amid the heavy waves, Mu Chen's silhouette was like a motionless rock. Even if the huge waves enveloped him, they still could not shake him. Although it surrounded him, his spiritual energy was suppressed, so it did not have spill over in the slightest. However, the surface of his skin glowed with spots of golden light. As the tides kept rolling in, Mu Chen's eyes, which had been closed for a whole year, finally opened slowly. Boom! His dark eyes suddenly became a bright gold color, as if the essence of the golden light had mixed with an indescribably strong spiritual energy, then surged out of Mu Chen's eyes. The golden light in Mu Chen's eyes continued to surge. If one observed his body carefully, they could see that it was quivering, and he had his fists clenched. On his arms, his veins wriggled like a dragon, and every time they did, it seemed that all of the terrible forces were radiating outward, causing even the surrounding air to vibrate and buzz. Mu Chen's heart was excited, as he sensed that the sovereign sea within his body was majestic and vast, reaching its optimal extent. It was so strong, in fact, if he continued to practice, even his sovereign sea would be unable to withstand it and explode directly. Every meridian point in his body contained the ultimate spiritual power. At this point, if someone suddenly attacked him, it could completely destroy the control that Mu Chen had over his spiritual energy, which was reaching its limit. Hence, when that time came, the spiritual power inside his body would roar out. As such, even if he had a dragon phoenix body, it would explode under that violent storm of spiritual energy, thus reducing him to ashes. Now, he was basically like a volcano that was about to explode. However, once he could learn to withstand this force, his gains would be envied by countless people. Almost there, feeling the roaring spirit of his body, Mu Chen murmured in his heart, then without hesitation, his face became grave and his hands conjured seals in front of him. Crash! At the instant that the seals formed, Mu Chen's body seemed to vibrate violently and his skin suddenly turned red. Even blood began dripping through his pores. However, Mu Chen ignored all of these things, because within his body, circumstances were even more terrible. The majestic spiritual power in the sovereign sea had exploded, causing the torrents in his body to surge forth like an enraged dragon. Wherever it passed, the meridians were distorted. His flesh and blood stung in pain, and even his blood was forced to seep out of his body. The terrible force was destroying Mu Chen from the inside out. An indescribable pain swept through his body, but his glance remained still, as he had made preparations for this scary outcome. Hence, he had a plan to try to suppress his spiritual energy and break through it. According to his estimate, two years of cultivation and a daily, normal practice would only allow him to break through to the eighth grade sovereign. After all, he was not able to obtain the inherited blood essence of the undying bird like Nine Nether did. Thus, it was impossible for him to easily jump two levels. After all, humans and divine beasts were different, as human beings depended on steady practice to progress, while divine beasts, although they normally didn't improve much in a thousand days, once they made progress, it was fast and vast, like a thousand miles of improvement. In the past, Nine Nether's strength had surpassed Mu Chen's, but he had slowly caught up to her. Currently, however, Nine Nether's strength had again quickly progressed. Therefore, if Mu Chen wanted to use this opportunity to enhance his power as much as possible, he had to take other measures, such as the absorption of spiritual energy, in order to grow from thin to thick. However, this method also had its drawbacks, one of which was that the suppression of the spiritual power was too strong. As such, he may not be able to bear it, which would lead to the danger of his destruction. However, even in the face of this danger, Mu Chen did not hesitate to choose this path. Boom! Crash! His eyes grew increasingly redder, as the vast expanse of spiritual power collided within his body. A bit later, Blood trickled down from the corners of his eyes, as if he was crying tears of blood. While standing on the rocky island, Nine Nether looked at the scene nervously, knowing that the breakthrough in Mu Chen had reached its most critical moment.
She was also fretting over the fact that his two years of cultivation would not only be for naught, but even lead to his own self-destruction, if he failed at this moment. Roar! Just as Nine Nether looked on nervously, the roar of a dragon reverberated in the air. Mu Chen rose suddenly, ignoring the streams of blood on the surface of his body. For a moment, he directly ignited the innermost spiritual powers of his body. As he did so, an indescribable spiritual energy impact burst out. Where Mu Chen stood, spreading throughout a radius of 10,000 miles within the sea, the waves were suppressed to the bottom of the sea forcefully, where they formed a huge whirlpool. Around the whirlpool, the waves were forced away, as the waves were rumbling from far to near. Then, the waves finally dissipated quietly, just before arriving at the rocky island. Nine Nether stared unblinkingly at the sea on top of the huge whirlpool. She could see that a spiritual light bloomed where Mu Chen's figure stood in the air. Suddenly, a strong spiritual energy wave burst out of his body. In just a few moments, the spiritual energy fluctuations emanating from Mu Chen's body had completed the accumulation of a seventh grade sovereign. Then, almost immediately, he had another breakthrough, allowing him to step into the rank of 8th grade sovereign. A breakthrough to the 8th grade, Nine Nether exclaimed in surprise. Beside her, the beautiful woman, who was already transparent, was smiling and said, it seems that he has not reached the limit yet, this little fellow is ambitious indeed. Will he break through to 9th grade sovereign? Nine Nether could not help but ask. Although she knew that Mu Chen's practice had always been steady, even though he had been practicing for two years already, she worried that if the breakthrough was too fast, there would be serious consequences. It's not impossible for him to break through to the rank of ninth grade sovereign, especially if he puts in all of his efforts. But, he's going to have to suffer some consequences, the beautiful lady said nonchalantly. She was incredibly perceptive, so she could see his potential to break through to the rank of ninth grade sovereign. However, just as Nine Nether feared, sometimes taking too big of a step came at a huge price. Nine Nether nodded gently, immediately looking at the distant figure in the sea. As she did so, she could not help but clench her fists tightly. Under their gazes, amid the majestic spiritual light, the fluctuation of spiritual power that exploded from Mu Chen's body was still growing rapidly. In a short period of time, the fluctuation of spiritual power had surpassed that of a normal 8th grade sovereign, then gradually advanced toward its peak. Dozens of moments then passed, as the spiritual fluctuations continued to explode out of Mu Chen's body. They were like dark clouds, covering the sky, which was inexplicably domineering as well. Nine Nether's heart was in her throat, as she looked at the current circumstances. She knew deep down that, as long as Mu Chen was willing, he could step into the rank of a ninth grade sovereign. And, once he did so, then the earthly sovereign level would also finally be within reach. His goal of becoming an extremely powerful sovereign began to feel extremely close to being realized. Boom! Sure enough, the fluctuation of spiritual power that burst out of Mu Chen's body once again began to soar. In a short span of mere moments, the spiritual power in Mu Chen's body reached the limit of the eighth grade sovereign. Finally, the spiritual power exploded, and Nine Nether could sense that the spiritual fluctuation had broken through the shackles of the eighth grade sovereign. It was almost as if Mu Chen was even reaching the beginning of the ninth grade sovereign. Sigh. Nine Nether sighed lightly in her heart, while the beautiful woman beside her shook her head. If he did not even have enough self control now, in the future, if he wanted to break through to the rank of an earthly sovereign, they were both afraid that he would suffer a lot of pain. As a former sovereign divine beast and a heavenly sovereign, the beautiful woman naturally knew that there were many ninth grade sovereigns in the world, but that in the end, only a few could successfully break through to become an earthly sovereign. This was because, in previous cultivation, if even a single mistake was made, it would force them to remain as ninth grade sovereigns thus unable to advance. However, in the midst of their thoughts, the women's facial expressions suddenly changed. They looked at the distant sea in astonishment, for they had suddenly realized that the spiritual power fluctuations, which had been increasing madly, had been forcefully suppressed, 
just as Mu Chen was about to advance into the rank of a ninth grade sovereign. In the distant sky, majestic spiritual energy rolled in like the tide. As it did so, Mu Chen's young and slender figure stood in midair, his body emanating a faint golden light, while a subtle pressure quietly radiated out from it. As Nine Nether's tightly clenched fists finally relaxed, her expression of joy could not be concealed. The beautiful woman beside her also nodded happily, relief in her eyes. Mu Chen had not disappointed them, as he had proven that he could resist the temptation to break through to the ninth grade sovereign. However, he had also broken through the shackles of the eighth grade sovereign, which was equivalent to being the half step to becoming a ninth grade sovereign. Chapter 1078 Return. Upon the vast ocean, majestic spiritual energy fell from the sky like a rainbow forming colorful streams of ribbons. Mu Chen stood in the air in the center of it. As he had just advanced into higher ranks, he was so powerful that he did not have full control over himself. Thus, his robes billowed, and the air around him was buzzing with agitation. His eyes slowly opened, glowing with spiritual light, and the streams of blood on the surface of his body also disappeared entirely. Half a step to ninth grade sovereign. Mu Chen lowered his head as he gazed at his slender palm, feeling the majestic expanse of spiritual power that had never before been in his body. Even with his composure, he could not resist the surge of emotions in his heart. When he had left the Northern Heaven Spiritual Academy, he had not yet condensed a sovereign celestial body, and when he first entered Daluo territory, he was a mere first-grade sovereign. However, over the past few years, he had gone through all sorts of training, and it was today that he finally touched the end of the sovereign level. As long as he could break the shackles of ninth-grade sovereign, then he would step into the level of the supreme sovereigns. An earthly sovereign, as long as he stepped into this level, even within the whole Great Thousand World, he would have the qualifications to travel the world and really join the ranks of the strong. At that time, he would really have the capital and qualifications to head to the Luo God clan. What once seemed unattainable, today became something that was within reach. This let Mu Chen feel gratified and relieved that these years of effort had not been in vain. Mu Chen smiled slightly. He looked within himself and finally observed the Sovereign Sea in his body. Today, the scale of the Sovereign Sea was almost several times more magnificent than before when he had cultivated two years ago. The spiritual power contained therein was also immeasurable. What's more, that kind of spiritual power was also more refined and condensed. If one looked more carefully, it would appear that there seemed to be a transparent flame emerging in the spiritual power, so that the spiritual power was full of vigor and vitality. It's the undying flame you absorbed before. Mu Chen saw this, and joy bloomed in his heart. It seemed that in these two years of cultivation, the undying flame that was absorbed into the sovereign sea had completely integrated into his spiritual power, so it was a great harvest. Although this undying flame did not seem remarkable, Mu Chen was certain that when his spiritual power fused with these flames, he would have continuous vitality. Looking at this, although Mu Chen was half a step away from ninth grade sovereign, if one only competed based on the pure strength of spiritual energy, even a real ninth grade sovereign may not necessarily have an advantage over him. Mu Chen smiled, and his thoughts retreated from the sovereign sea. He then looked at his own arms, only to see where the true spirit of the real dragon and real phoenix lay quietly. Their size seemed to have not changed much, but the color had undergone a huge transformation. The original bright gold color had been thoroughly turned into a dark gold color, and in that dark gold, there was a purple light. As if aware of Mu Chen's gaze, the spirits of the real dragon and phoenix suddenly opened their eyes, and in a moment, there were two powerful forces of true dragon and phoenix oppression coming from them, which caused the sea around them to sink. Detecting that strong oppression, Mu Chen's gaze turned bright. Even an eighth-grade sovereign would be suppressed to immobility under such pressure and have no fighting power. Clearly, in the two years of his practice, the true spirit of the dragon and the phoenix, with the help of the miraculous qualities there, had progressed by leaps and bounds and undergone an amazing transformation. Now if Mu Chen encountered Bai Ming again, he would not need to attack personally. 
As long as the oppression of the real dragon and phoenix emerged, that guy would be utterly defeated to the point of lying flat on the ground. The harvest has been astonishing after this period of cultivation. Mu Chen's eyes were filled with satisfaction as felt his own improvement. According to the rules of time there, he ought to have been cultivating for two years, but in the Great Thousand World, only six months had passed. In half a year, his improvement was enough to astonish anyone. He smiled and waved his sleeves, appearing like a spectre on a small island in the distant sea. He, congratulations on the breakthrough. His figure had just appeared as Nine Nether's laughter rang out. Mu Chen looked up, only to see the slender figure in front of his eyes, and then, his face was colored with amazement. You broke through to ninth grade sovereign, Mu Chen asked in amazement, for he could clearly perceive a faint sense of danger emanating from Nine Nether, which was something possessed by a true ninth grade sovereign. Nine Nether nodded, all thanks to Elder's inherited blood essence. Her face was also full of joy, as she was extremely satisfied with this harvest after cultivating. In the future, she would be able to help Mu Chen and was no longer as powerless as before. Mu Chen pursed his mouth. He had put in hard work for two years, but could only reach half a step to becoming a ninth grade sovereign. In the end, Nine Nether's opportunity and luck had been stronger, and she directly set foot into becoming a ninth grade sovereign. That really made a person envious. The undying bird sovereign beast beside him smiled and said, the practice of divine beasts is different from that of human beings and has its own merits and demerits. Mu Chen nodded, and he looked at the almost transparent figure of the beautiful woman clad in palace robes. His eyes were dark, and he knew that it might not be long before the undying bird sovereign beast would dissipate completely. This ancestor gave him the opportunity to enter this place that was of vital importance to him. Otherwise, if he had wanted to get to the present level smoothly, it would have taken at least a year, and that foundation would not have been as strong as it was now. The beautiful woman looked in his eyes and smiled nonchalantly. I have already fallen, leaving a spiritual clone, to prevent the demonic psychic powers from infecting the land of the divine beasts, she said. Now that I have found an heir, I have completed my goal satisfactorily. If I am capable of inheriting the power of this place in the future, I will do my part to protect the Great Thousand World. Mu Chen clasped his fists as he made the solemn promise and commitment. The beautiful woman nodded in relief, and then her body became more transparent, as if all her thoughts were gone. She pointed in front of her as the space rippled, forming a space whirlpool. This space whirlpool will return both of you to the Nine Netherbird clan. When I dissipate, you can both leave. Mu Chen and Nine Nether bowed again. The beautiful woman looked at the space. Her eyes were no longer nostalgic. They gradually closed as her body grew more transparent. Finally, she shattered into countless spots of light and dissipated. Rumble. The vast sea rolled tumultuously and roared, as if sending off the most powerful sovereign of the land of the divine beasts. Mu Chen and Nine Nether looked silently for a long time at the place where the beautiful lady had dissipated. They sighed gently and then glanced at each other. No longer hesitant, they went into the space whirlpool. The space whirlpool rippled, engulfing the two. Finally, the space fluctuation exploded, and the whirlpool also gradually dissipated. As they left, the vast space of the god sea was once again completely silent. The next time it was opened, perhaps Mu Chen would enter the place as a true supreme sovereign. The disturbance of spatial fluctuations interfered with their spiritual perception, but the spatial transmission did not last long. A ray of light bloomed in front of them as they took a step out, and there was a great change in the scene around them. Familiar scenery was reflected in their eyes, and in the distance, there were a lot of silhouettes that suddenly charged forward, obviously aware of the spatial fluctuations. Mu Chen and Nine Nether looked at the familiar scene within the Nine Netherbird clan and felt as if they had been reborn. Two years of cultivation in the space of the God Sea was too boring and monotonous. As Mu Chen and Nine Nether froze, the silhouettes of the Nine Netherbird clan had already appeared, and when they saw Nine Nether, the vigilance in their eyes turned into astonishment. Nine Nether waved her hand and said nonchalantly, Bring us to see the clan leader and elders. 
These silhouettes were all law enforcement in the Nine Netherbird clan. They were all incredibly strong, and their seniority was higher than Nine Nethers. In the past, they were also much stronger than Nine Nether, but now that they saw her once again, they were shocked by the oppressive aura that Nine Nether was emanating, for it was only something that they had felt from the clan elders. How could Nine Nether's strength have increased to this extent in just over half a year? They looked at each other, full of questions, but they did not dare to ask as they quickly turned around and led him to the elders. Elder Academy. Clan leader Tianwang and the elders of the Nine Netherbird clan were shocked when they saw Nine Nether and Mu Chen standing in the hall. Nine Nether. Clan leader Tianwang could not help but ask. In only half a year's time, Nine Nether had made a breakthrough to the rank of ninth grade sovereign from seventh grade sovereign. Mu Chen had made an immense breakthrough to the rank of half a step into ninth grade sovereign from sixth grade sovereign. Even the well-informed clan leader Tianwang was shocked by such a huge ascension. Nine Nether smiled slightly and said, I have received the inherited blood essence of the undying bird, and we have received guidance from elder undying bird sovereign beast, thus making rapid progress in our strength. She did not expose the existence of the space of the god sea. After all, the attraction was so great, that even the most powerful would be jealous of it. However, the only one who had the qualifications to enter it was Mu Chen. If exposed, it would inevitably bring Mu Chen trouble. It's the undying bird sovereign beast, indeed. Clan leader Tianwang and the others sighed. They knew that things should not be as simple as that. But since Nine Nether did not want to elaborate, they could not ask more. Anyway, this was a good thing for the Nine Netherbird clan. Clan leader Tianwang and the elders looked at each other and then looked at Mu Chen. Their originally serious gazes also became softer. This time, Mu Chen not only helped Nine Nether obtain the inherited blood essence, but also made her strength soar. That was a big favor. Mu Chen, from now on, we no longer have any objection to the blood bond you have with Nine Nether. I hope both of you will be more careful in the future, clan leader Tianwang said slowly. Thank you, clan leader and elders. Mu Chen clasped his fists and smiled as his heart relaxed. Finally, there was a peaceful solution to this problem. With Nine Nether stuck in the middle, he had not wanted conflict with the Nine Netherbird clan. In addition, clan leader Tianwang paused. After deliberation and discussion, we intend to invite you to become an elder of the Nine Netherbird clan. What do you think? Upon hearing these words, Mu Chen and Nine Nether were stunned. The weakest of the Nine Netherbird clan elders were at least ninth grade sovereigns, and that was why the Nine Netherbird clan had such a strong history. Mu Chen now was only half a step into ninth grade sovereign. Because of this, he was not qualified to be an elder. Most importantly, he was not a member of the Nine Netherbird clan. However, this elder's title was quite important in the Nine Netherbird clan. If managed well, the Nine Netherbird clan would be a source of support for him in the future. This was a top force stronger than Daluo territory. This source of support would be quite necessary for Mu Chen in the future. So when he heard clan leader Tian Huang's words, he only hesitated for a moment before clasping his fists and smiling. I, as a member of the younger generation, have no objection. Seeing that Mu Chen had agreed, clan leader Tian Wang and the elders were also relieved. Their glances towards Mu Chen grew softer and friendlier. By the way, not long ago, a message came from the Mandela, the dominator of Daluo territory. This is for you. Clan leader Tian Wang suddenly lifted his hand, and a scroll shot towards Mu Chen. Mu Chen caught it, and with a clench of his fist, crushed the scroll. Then, his eyes suddenly narrowed. In the scroll, there was only one simple line, but the emotions in Mu Chen's heart grew tumultuous. The ancient celestial palace has emerged. Return. Chapter 1079. The Daluo Territory's Situation. North Territory. Since the end of the Great Hunting War, the Divine Pavilion, which was once the most powerful force in the North Territory, was destroyed. This destruction led to the situation in the North Territory surging and changing. After all, the Divine Pavilion had been too strong before, leading all of the top forces covetousness, 
wanting to take a slice of the pie to strengthen themselves. In such a situation, the Daluo territory had risen rapidly. In less than a year, it had already expanded greatly, thus becoming the strongest force in the North Territory. As for the North Territory Alliance, which was formed between Mandela and other top forces, it also acquired some substantive significance. Mandela had relied on her prowess as an upper earthly sovereign to become the leader of the North Territory Alliance. The fame and status of the Daluo Territory made it the force in which countless powerful people in the whole North Territory wanted to rely on most. Therefore, in this short period of nearly a year, countless strong people poured into the Daluo Territory, trying to join become allies. However, this expansion inevitably caused some trouble, as those old and powerful people, who had once been in the Daluo Territory, inevitably had some conflicts of interest with the newcomers. As such, even Mandela did not have solutions to these problems. After all, such issues were inevitable in times of expansion, so they could only wait for time to resolve them. Today, the entire atmosphere was particularly lively, as it was time for another conference of the Lords. These conferences, which were now held in the Daluo territory, were much larger than they used to be. After all, following the rapid expansion of the Daluo territory, there were now as many as 18 lords. Mandela had carefully hand-picked these lords stringently, but with the addition of so many new lords, it was clear that it had caused a great impact in the Daluo territory. Now, even senior lords like Lord Asura, Lord Bloodhawk, and Lord Mountain Cracker felt a bit threatened by the new influx of lords. Every conference of the lords saw the appearance of Wither a new lord or king, so by now, it had become the most important meeting in the entire Daluo territory. Whenever it was held, even the dukes of the Daluo territory's most important cities would attend. However, as the entire Dalwotian Empire was in the midst of its bustling preparation, it was silent in Nine Nether Palace. In the huge palace, the army, which was donned in black armor, was strict. The sky above had powerful spiritual energy fluctuations, in which spiritual symbols appeared subtly, indicating that a powerful spirit array was guarding the place. Today's Nine Nether Palace was vastly different than when Mu Chen and Nine Nether had left it. Whether it was the number of cities under its command or the number of strong people who populated it, the palace had made a significant leap forward. After all, it was clear to all of the Daluo territory that the relationship between Mu Chen and Mandela was very close. As such, even the three kings would pay their respects by giving their resources to Nine Nether Palace. In fact, Nine Nether Palace now showed signs of being the most powerful force in the entire Daluo territory. Regarding the attention that Mandela gave to Nine Nether Palace, everyone in the Daluo territory was jealous about this. This naturally made some of the people very dissatisfied. This was because they considered the inferior powers of Mandela and Mu Chen to not be worthy of being placed in charge of the vast Nine Nether Palace, much less obtaining such a huge amount of resources. Thus, it seemed that this pairing was a mismatch, which led the people to become very skeptical. Nine Nether Palace, within one of the main halls. As the entire Dalwotian territory was in an excited frenzy, it was rather quiet in Nine Nether Palace, as if the Conference of the Lords had nothing to do with them. Within the main hall, there were many people, making for a grand scene. Two empty positions had been left open within the hall, below which, sat the chief steward of Nine Nether Palace, Tang Bing, and her sister Tang Ro. Alongside them, a lady dressed in a white dress in a wheelchair sat primly. The woman in the wheelchair looked beautiful, but her cheeks were a little pale. Her spiritual energy fluctuations were not particularly strong, but she was obviously in a position that was second only to Tang Bing. This lady, whom Mu Chen had met in the Great Hunting War, was Zan Tai Liuli, the Divine Pavilion's war troop dispatcher. After the fall of the Divine Pavilion, Zan Tai Liuli and her family had joined the Daluo territory at Mu Chen's request. She was currently the most sought-after war troop dispatcher in the entire realm. Therefore, although her spiritual strength was not strong, when coupled with her war troop dispatcher power, even an ordinary seventh grade sovereign would find it difficult to obtain a victory over her. Following the line after Zan Tai Liuli, dozens of figures sat along the hall, 
powerful spiritual energy fluctuations surrounding each of them, especially the four figures in the front. Judging from these spiritual energy fluctuations that were radiating out of their bodies, they were all seventh grade sovereigns. This kind of strength, even if placed in the present Daluo territory, gave them the preliminary qualification to be crowned lords. These strong people, who were naturally summoned by Mandela, were tasked with helping Tang Bing to temporarily stabilize Nine Nether Palace. Today is the Conference of the Lords. In accordance with our usual practice, Nine Nether Palace will not be involved in this matter for the time being. I will close the palace for one day only today. At the top of the hall, Tang Bing looked at the strong and powerful lineup. Although the audience had expected Tang Bing's words, there was still inevitably some regret in their eyes. After all, it was a pity that they couldn't participate in such a grand event. It is said that, in this conference of the lords, the dragon arm sovereign and the withered old man may get the opportunity to vie for the position as the new king. This is a major event. So are we not even going to make an appearance? One of the middle-aged men among the four seventh-grade sovereigns suddenly asked. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were the two most powerful figures out of all who had joined the Daluo territory within the last year. They had actually just stepped into the ranks of the ninth grade sovereigns, so they had extremely powerful momentum heading into the Daluo territory. They had both coveted the position for a long time, so now that they felt ready, they wanted to compete for it. If they were successful, the three kings of the Daluo territory would expand to become five. As such, the middle-aged man wanted to bring Nine Nether Palace closer to the two new possible kings, or at least to try to forge some positive relations. This middle-aged man was named Zhu Kun, and he was powerful. He was also the strongest among the four seventh-grade sovereigns. As such, although he had not been at Nine Nether Palace long, he seemed to be the strongest person there. Thus, he was held in high esteem. Now that he had opened his mouth, it attracted some people to immediately echo in consensus. After all, in the Daluo territory, the status of a king was second only to the dominator. Tang Bing saw the situation and frowned slightly. Naturally, she was aware of the dragon arm sovereign and the withered old man. She had also thought of visiting them on behalf of Nine Nether Palace in the past, but the two men regarded themselves highly and were arrogant towards everyone, even Mu Chen and Nine Nether. In Tang Bing's view, if it were not for the Dominator, these two arrogant people would ignore Nine Nether Palace entirely. After all, towards a ninth grade sovereign, even the Dominator would take a slightly lower stance, because they were the best combat powers apart from the Dominator herself. However, since these two were so cold, Tang Bing naturally did not want to face humiliation by approaching them. In addition, Mu Chen and Nine Nether were not present so she really did not have too much confidence to do so. Thus, she could only try her best to control the present circumstances. Tang Bing looked at the main hall, where the discussion was going on. She sighed in her heart. With the crazy expansion of Nine Nether Palace, her reputation had obviously been weakened. It did not help matters that these new strong men were both powerful and equally defiant. However, even though they did not respect her command entirely, they listened to her begrudgingly. At the time, she did know that Zhu Kun was said to have something to do with the dragon arm sovereign and withered old man. From this point of view, he probably meant to form close relations with them. After all, once these two people became kings, it would certainly change the situation in the Daluo territory. Obviously, Zhu Kun was not the only one who had such an idea, as the voices in the hall began to all speak at once. The silence in the hall had been broken, and for a while, even Tang Bing could not suppress it. Chief Steward Tang, if you still don't want to, then allow me to go to the Conference of the Lords alone, said Su Kun, who smiled and got up directly. Seeing him rise, there were also some strong people in the hall who followed, and even more people who were obviously hesitant. Tang Bing looked at this scene, her face becoming green with displeasure. When Zhu Kun saw Tang Bing's face, he smiled faintly and did not care. Although Tang Bing was under the command of the two masters of the palace, he regarded himself as being a powerful man. Thus, he decided that he was far more important than this runt Tang Bing. 
Even if the two masters of the palace came back at that time, they would surely rather rely heavily on him. Thus, he has no fear of offending Tang Bing. Thinking of this, he waved his sleeve and was ready to leave with his supporters. At this moment, however, Tang Bing rose up and yelled, Stop! Zhu Kun paused his footsteps and frowned, declaring in a cold voice, Chief Steward Tang, I am not your subordinate. As the two clashed, the atmosphere in the hall immediately became tense, with many strong men looking at each other, wondering what to do. The situation was in a stalemate. Then, a faint laugh rang out suddenly. Ha ha, I didn't expect to see such a lively situation in Nine Nether Palace. The sudden sound immediately shattered the tension in the hall, as all of them were shocked by the mysterious voice. It was as if they had caught sight of something, all of them looking directly at the two empty positions in the main hall. There, a man and a woman had suddenly appeared, and the young man, who looked tall and handsome, was looking at the people with a smile. That smile, which seemed gentle, made everyone in the room feel an inexplicable sense of pressure. Tang Bing also stared at the two figures. Then, a moment later, there was an irrepressible look of surprise that filled her face, as she exclaimed, Sister Nine Nether. Mu Chen, Yal have returned. Chapter 1080. Eliminate. Sister Nine Nether, Mu Chen. When the two names jumped into the ears of the many powerful people in the hall, they were suddenly shocked. Their eyes were startled as they looked at the two figures. The two people in front of them were the two masters of the Nine Nether Palace, Lord Nine Nether and Lord Mu. They did look young, but to everyone's dismay, they seemed to feel a sense of pressure in front of them. Zhu Kun also stopped in his tracks as he looked towards Mu Chen and Nine Nether in astonishment, and asked doubtfully, are you two Lord Nine Nether and Lord Mu? There was not much awe or respect in his tone. After all, he was a seventh grade sovereign himself, and he was the best among them, thus he was also famous in the North Territory. It was said that Mu Chen and Nine Nether in the past were only sixth and seventh grade sovereigns. Thus, he naturally felt he had the qualifications to remain proud. Mu Chen glanced at this person nonchalantly and asked, who are you? Zhu Kun saw Mu Chen's nonchalant glance, and somehow, he had some palpitations and could not help but answer, I am Zhu Kun, a guard assigned to Nine Nether Palace by the Dominator. Mu Chen nodded slightly, then his glance swept across the crowd. Those whom he looked at hurriedly got up, clasped their fists, and reported their own names. It was only after the last man had finished that Mu Chen retracted his gaze, and the oppression that had shrouded all the people dissipated, much to their heart's relief. However, they felt surprised and confused that they could not understand why a young man like Mu Chen would have such a strong aura of oppression. After all, didn't the news say that Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether were merely sixth and seventh grade sovereigns? Zantai Liuli pays her respects to the two palace masters. Below, Zantai Liuli glanced at Mu Chen and immediately bowed, looking respectful. Ah, it's Miss Zantai, Mu Chen said. He was surprised to see that Zantai Liuli was also present at their Nine Nether Palace, but he nodded gently. As his voice fell, his eyes turned once again to the unfamiliar but unruly and defiant faces of the strong men. I don't care what fame you have had in the past, he said. But since you have entered my Nine Nether Palace, you have to follow the rules here. Tang Bing is the chief steward elected by Lord Nine Nether and myself. Her authority is only under the two of us. From now on, you will all be in her charge. The growth of Nine Nether Palace to this scale had surpassed Mu Chen and Nine Nether's expectations. However, neither of them had much time to manage Nine Nether Palace, so everything had to be managed by Tang Bing. Moreover, they trusted Tang Bing wholeheartedly. Thus, among the seemingly numerous, powerful people like Zhu Kun, he and Nine Nether would choose Tang Bing without hesitation. When Zhu Kun and others heard this remark, they could not help but change their expressions. They did not think that as soon as Nine Nether and Mu Chen returned, they would put their power in Tang Bing's hands, and even those who were strong would have to obey Tang Bing's orders. In the past when Nine Nether and Mu Chen were absent, they did not give Tang Bing much respect while she was in charge. After all, her strength was really not worth mentioning in their view, 
Tsze Zhu Kun had been trying to carve up some of Tang Bing's rights and shake her position. However, with Mu Chen's words now, it was clear that his ambitions were completely shattered. Zhu Kun's gaze changed, and finally he gnashed his teeth and said, Lord Mu, although Chief Steward Tang is a senior member of Nine Nether Palace, she is weak in strength. Now that the scale of Nine Nether Palace is huge, and those strong men under its command are as numerous as the clouds. If you let Chief Steward Tang lead the charge, I'm afraid we will not respect her command. Zhu Kun looked up, staring straight at Mu Chen. He himself was a seventh grade sovereign. With that kind of strength, he even had the power to compete for the position of Lord in Daluo territory. If he was successful, that position was equivalent to that of Mu Chen and Nine Nethers. In his view, as long as Mu Chen and Nine Nether had foresight, they should know that his value was stronger than Tang Bing's. When Zhu Kun's voice fell, suddenly there were some echoing sounds of agreement from the strong men who supported Zhu Kun. Hearing these supportive voices, Zhu Kun's confidence grew, and his originally slightly bent body gradually straightened. However, when he looked towards Mu Chen, the latter's young face was expressionless. His black eyes looked at the opposition nonchalantly. That kind of indifference made Zhu Kun uneasy. Many strong people in the hall saw Mu Chen slowly stand up. His indifferent gaze swept the crowd as he said, Did I say I'm discussing this with all of you? His tone was calm, but it contained such dominance, that the hall fell into complete silence as many strong men were shocked. Zhu Kun froze because of Mu Chen's domineering aura, and his eyebrows knitted into a frown as he said, Mu, boom. However, as he spoke, Mu Chen's dark gaze shot towards him, and the spiritual energy of heaven and earth seemed to surge in a frenzy. Crash! Terrible pressure emanated from all sides, and Zhu Kun didn't even have time to react. He was suddenly aware that he had lost control of his body. His legs were soft, and his entire being knelt down in the hall with a bang. The spiritual power between heaven and earth was as heavy as a mountain on his body, and he knew that as long as the man in front of him had a little murderous intent, he could crush him into smithereens. It was at this time that everyone felt a terrible surge of spiritual energy fluctuations building like a volcano and bursting out of Mu Chen's body like a storm, sweeping the whole hall. Aware of this spiritual energy fluctuation, all the strong people's faces changed dramatically, and their eyes showed disbelief. That kind of spiritual energy fluctuation had reached the level of a ninth grade sovereign. Zhu Kun, who was kneeling on the ground, was also horrified, and he broke out in a cold sweat. Didn't they say that Lord Mu was only a sixth grade sovereign? But at the moment this kind of spiritual energy oppression was at a level that even the dragon arm sovereign and withered old man were on par with. Boom, boom, in the main hall, those who were still watching quickly knelt down, and their defiance completely dissipated. Facing a lord who was a ninth grade sovereign, if they were too unruly, they would be annihilated with a flick of a finger. Mu Chen gazed at the kneeling masses in the hall indifferently and said nonchalantly, Does anybody else have any other opinions? Mu Chen did not use any soft means on these future subordinates. He knew that with these defiant guys, only the most domineering and forceful means could completely tame them. With that, even Zhu Kun was shivering and covered with cold sweat, but he dared not say a word. Standing in front, Tang Bing was looking at the fierce and domineering Mu Chen of this time, and she was secretly awed and amused. Mu Chen now was obviously stronger than before, and his aura had become much more dominant. Inside the hall there was deadly silence. Many powerful men secretly looked at Mu Chen and Nine Nether on the throne. There was no doubt in their eyes. Instead, the color of awe began to appear. Obviously, the strength Mu Chen had revealed was shocking. We did not expect Nine Nether Palace to grow to such a great extent. But since you are now our people, if you comply in appearance, but oppose in heart in the future, then forget about remaining in Daluo territory. Mu Chen's cold voice spread in the hall but it made everyone tremble, as they could hear it clearly. In today's North Territory, once banished from Daluo Territory, one could forget about remaining in the North Territory. If this had happened in the past, people might have laughed, 
But now after they had witnessed Mu Chen's formidable power, they understood that with his strength and his position in Daluo territory, he was indeed entitled to do it. We will remain absolutely loyal. Many strong people were breaking out in cold sweat and hurriedly expressed their loyalty. This time, even Zhu Kun was afraid to have the slightest pride. Obviously, he was suppressed into obedience and afraid to pride himself on being a veteran. The atmosphere inside the hall was thoroughly purged as Mu Chen and Nine Nether glanced at each other. Nine Nether smiled slightly, apparently satisfied with Mu Chen's method of shock and awe. After the internal problem has been solved thoroughly, Mu Chen asked, Today is the Conference of the Lords. Tang Bing took a step forward and shared about the various details of the Conference of the Lords. The Dragon Arm Sovereign, with an old man. When Mu Chen heard these two names, his expression changed slightly. These two men seemed to be great powers in the North Territory, but they did not expect that they had now joined Daluo Territory. Looking at the circumstances, they had interest in vying for the position of king in Daluo Territory. The two of them have a very strong reputation in Daluo Territory, and are qualified to compete for the position of king, she said. Looking at the current situation, the chances of success are pretty high. At this point, Tang Bing pursed her mouth and grumbled, but they are too proud and do not seem to respect us much. Tang Bing's words were already a bit subtle, because in her opinion, the dragon arm sovereign and withered old man not only did not hold Nine Nether Palace in high regard, but perhaps he had even less regard for Nine Nether and Mu Chen, who were the masters of the palace. In their view, Perhaps Nine Nether Palace could grow so strong because they only relied on the care shown by the Dominator, and they had no regard for such relationships. However, Tang Bing took into account the overall situation and did not say these words due to their implications. After listening to Tang Bing, Mu Chen glanced at Nine Nether. The latter smiled faintly, apparently also understanding the implications, and said, these kinds of people who pride themselves on being veterans are tiresome, indeed. Mu Chen smiled, then got up and said, let's go. Tang Bing froze and asked, where are we going? Since it is the conference of the lords, how can we be absent? Mu Chen smiled gently and waved his sleeve, but his next words came as a shock to everyone, and disbelief surged in their eyes. Furthermore, Nine Nether and I also have some interest in the position of king. The journey to the ancient celestial palace was on its way, so he should try his best to elevate his position in Daluo territory. After all, he would have to rely on the power of Daluo territory then. Thus, Mu Chen was now interested in the position of king. Chapter 1081, The New Kings. In the depths of the Daluo territory, silhouettes roared from all sides. Finally, the square, which had been opened up from the top of a giant peak, was occupied. Compared to a year ago, it was obvious that there had been earth-shaking changes in the Daluo territory. At this time, the scale of the square was now the most prominent place within the entire region of the Daluo territory. This was because at every conference of the lords, a new king was crowned. This position was very important, because, only by becoming king, could one have the qualifications to develop their own powers, while at the same time being able to obtain more resources from the Daluo territory. Thus, looking across the entire region, countless strong men were eyeing the king position. Apparently, the battle for the role was even more intense than it had been a year ago. In the past, as long as one's strength had reached the rank of a fifth-grade sovereign, it was deemed as an adequate qualification to compete. Yet now, unless one was a seventh-grade sovereign, he would have no courage to fight for it. At the moment, the huge square was filled with voices, and from time to time, in the distant sky, there would be a great number of silhouettes roaring by. Although these silhouettes auras were far away, they would attract envious eyes in the square, for in Dalwotion, only those who were qualified to travel with such entourages were the various lords and kings. These silhouettes landed directly at the most central area of the square, which was considered to be the core of the Daluo territory, amid countless envious glances. What was most conspicuous about the central area was the golden throne at the end of the stone ladder, which seemed to have a sort of inexplicable majesty. Even if it stood quietly, it still garnered countless awed glances from the crowd. 
Upon the throne, the dominator, who was the strongest existence in the North Territory, was perched. Below the golden throne, there were three silver thrones shining in the sun, all of which were equally striking. Within these three thrones, sat three people, who had their eyes slightly closed. This trio was naturally the three kings, who were able to hold such a position from the very beginning, as they had fought together with Mandela to build an empire. Below the three kings were a great number of stone thrones, upon which sat extraordinary figures of men, all of whom radiated great spiritual powers. These were the lords of the Daluo territory. Among these lords, the most striking and unexpected ones were not Lord Asura and Lord Mountain Cracker, but the two figures in the front. One of the figures was old and thin. He looked as if he were withering, as his eyes were drooping and he seemed feeble. However, he still emanated a palpable and oppressive aura. This man was known as the Withered Old Man. On the right side of the Withered Old Man was a middle-aged man with a solid body, built like an iron tower. He sat on one side of the Withered Old Man, the shadow of his body covering the Withered Old Man entirely. His arm was particularly unique, as it seemed to be several times thicker than the average person's. His wide palms hung casually to one side, but if one looked carefully, they would see that, when his fingers moved, there was a faint sonic boom that rang out, as if they had enough destructive power to crush mountains. This man, known as Dragon Arm Sovereign, was also an extremely powerful person in the North Territory. It is said that his skill cultivation was very unique, and that he had implanted a pair of dragon arms into himself, refining them into his own arms. This had allowed him to have the strength of the Dragon Clan. The strength of these two men, both of whom were the first to enter the rank of ninth grade sovereign, far outstripped the other lords of the Daluo territory. As such, even the strongest of the lords, such as Lord Asura, could only be subordinate to them. Of course, the two men obviously did not hold the lord position in high regard. They talked and laughed with each other, but occasionally, their sweeping gazes passed through the three figures on the silver thrones in front of them, and when they did, deep in their eyes, an eager provocation and unruly defiance flashed. This was because, in their views, they were not inferior to the three kings in the Daluo territory. Moreover, except for the sleeping king, who looked perpetually drowsy and gave them a vague feeling of fear, neither of the other two kings intimidated them whatsoever. With such strengths, they naturally coveted the king position, as it was the only one that could match their prowesses. Above their silver thrones, the Condor King and the Spiritual Pupil King also sensed these two subtle yet provocative glances. Although their faces remained nonchalant, they hummed coldly in their hearts. As the veteran subjects of the Daluo territory, they were naturally aware of the fierce competition that had grown over the past year, such that even their positions were beginning to be coveted. As such, they could not claim that others were not qualified to cover their positions, for the reputation of the withered old man and the dragon arm sovereign was indeed stronger than their own. Furthermore, with the help of the immense amount of resources provided by the dominator, they had finally broken through their own bottlenecks and made breakthroughs in their own strengths, reaching the rank of ninth grade sovereign. If not for their having received that help this year, they would have been surpassed by these ambitious newcomers. It was in this way that the contradictions between the old and new subjects in the Daluo territory had begun to spread to their level. It seems like these two guys are hell-bent on obtaining the positions of the new kings. The spiritual pupil king glanced at those two figures, speaking lowly to the Condor king. In the past, there were disputes between the Condor king and the spiritual pupil king, so they were not too friendly with one another. However, with the increasing number of new arrivals from within the Daluo territory, the dispute seemed to have dissipated completely. They even showed signs of forming an alliance to defend themselves against the others. As such, upon hearing the spiritual pupil king's message, the Condor king also nodded faintly and said, These two guys are strong enough. And now that their foundation is growing stable, I'm afraid that they just might get what they want. At this point, the Condor King pursed his mouth in displeasure. He was thinking that, with the Dragon Arm Sovereigns and the Withered Old Man's characters, if they became the new kings, the competition with between them all would only become fiercer. Oh, what do you think of this, Brother Meng? 
The spiritual pupil king now turned to address the sleeping king. Although he was now a ninth grade sovereign, he was still quite polite to the sleeping king, because he knew that the sleeping king had been following the dominator for many years, and was the most loyal to her. As such, if the dominator had any idea, the sleeping king would know something about it. The sleeping king's eyes opened for a brief moment. He then smiled casually and said, the dominator means for the new king's positions to be increased by two seats. The spiritual pupil king and the condor king were both startled by this news. They shook their heads and said at once, as if sharing one voice, that's really advantageous for these two guys. Previously, the two men had tried to compete for the new king's position, but had been denied by Mandela. After all, the position was too important, and the dragon arm sovereign and withered old man did not have the qualifications and loyalty to match it at that time. However, at this moment, even Mandela was about to relent, so it was natural that they would both be crowned king. The two kings sighed. They had been fighting alongside with the dominator for many years before arriving at their present status, and now these two relative newcomers might be able to sit on an equal footing with them. They felt this was obviously unjust. The sleeping king opened his eyes wider, seeming to look towards where the dragon arm sovereign and withered old man were located. He then smiled inexplicably and said, the dominator only said that two seats for the new king's positions would be opened, but no one said they were for them. The spiritual pupil king and the condor king heard his words and were stunned immediately. They felt baffled. As they looking out at the entire Daluo territory, only dragon arm sovereign and the withered old man had the qualifications to compete for the position of the new king, unless the dominator planned to let Lord Asura ascend in position. But, that would inevitably lead to dragon arm sovereigns and the withered old man's defiances, as Lord Asura was only an eighth grade sovereign and did not command enough respect from the public. The two kings looked at each other, about to ask more questions, but the sleeping king closed his eyes again leaving the two shaking their heads helplessly. Bong! The ring of a bell suddenly reverberated between the heavens and the earth, quieting the excited square immediately, as countless people looked on in awe. Even the dragon arm sovereign and the withered old man bowed slightly, their faces respectful. A wisp of splendor seemed to penetrate the entire space, as it had condensed on the bright golden throne in the middle of the square. A petite figure in a black dress then surfaced, her golden eyes opening to survey her surroundings. A terrible pressure swept by suddenly, and even as powerful as Dragon Arm Sovereign and the Withered Old Man were, even their powers seemed to stagnate for a moment, rendering him immediately appalled and horrified. This was most certainly the power of an upper earthly sovereign, as with just one glance, they had been rendered defenseless. As her gaze swept out, Mandela finally waved her small hand. Then, her calm but crisp voice reverberated in the air above the square, causing the excited atmosphere to erupt. The Conference of the Lords, commences now, she announced confidently. Chapter 1082, The Fight Over Kingships. Just one word from Mandela had caused much excitement at the Conference of the Lords. Many top powers were hyped up, and it was especially so with the rivals of the lords of Daluo territory. They were breathing very hard, and they looked ready to remove anyone who stood in their way. The rules for lordship in Daluo territory had changed. They had to fight in the arena and be recommended by at least five lords. The main concern was the number of lordships that were available. There were too many top powers in Daluo territory currently, and there were not enough positions to go around. If there were too many positions, it would create disputes among the top powers, and a civil war might break out. Mandela had thus set up only a few seats for such important positions. Only five of them would be selected. Since there were many top powers who were eyeing the five lordships, the dropout rate would be high. When Mandela waved her hand, majestic spiritual energy burst out instantly and multiple figures shot out at the same time toward the stone platforms in the large square. Roar! Roar! The supporters of the candidates shouted and cheered loudly. After all, once the candidates whom they supported became the lords of Daluo territory, they would be rewarded for being supportive. When the candidates became powerful in the future, 
they would be given many resources to help them quicken their cultivation. Mandela sat on the golden throne and looked around. She then shut her eyes and rested. From what she could see, it would be a tough battle. She would have let the three kings handle the conference of the lords if Daluo territory had not become so powerful. Moreover, she was not there to watch the fight for the lordships. As Mandela thought of this, she looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign and withered old man from the corners of her eyes. They were sitting below her, looking relaxed. They looked as though they had already secured the positions of the new kings. They considered the lords in Daluo territory as undeserving of the positions, as none of them could possibly defeat them. Mandela curled up her lips as she watched their behavior. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were powerful, but they were too arrogant. It would not do Daluo territory any good if they became kings now. The fights on the square were fierce, but they ended quickly. The difference in the strength of these top powers was obvious. After the fights went on for about two hours, five people remained standing on the five stone platforms. The five people had extraordinary auras, and the spiritual energy fluctuations around them were overbearing. They had just advanced to grade eight sovereign, and their strength was comparable to Bai Ming's, whom Mu Chen had met in the land of the divine beasts. These five people were apparently the new leaders. Mandela looked at the five of them and nodded. As Daluo territory had expanded quickly, the quality of the top powers who came and joined them had become better. Daluo territory had become more attractive than it had been previously. The strength of the new lords was overbearing. Among the older lords, other than Lord Asura and Lord Mountain Cracker, the rest of them were still grade 7 sovereigns. The new and older lords might get into a power struggle due to this. The older lords were experienced, but the new lords were powerful. They would have conflicts, but Mandela was not bothered by it. These conflicts might be good for Daluo territory. The people shouted for joy as the five lords emerged. They were thrilled. The three kings stood up and announced the five new lords and their territories before they left. After the new lords left, the atmosphere in the square did not diminish. The people were excited, and the atmosphere was great. Many people then looked across the horizon toward the center of the square. Two people were meditating on the stone seats. Everyone knew that the Conference of the Lords was only an appetizer. The emergence of the new kings was the highlight of the day. There were more than 20 lords in the entire Daluo territory, but only three kings. When the Dominator had gone into seclusion, the three kings took charge of the entire Daluo territory. This showed how powerful this position was. The fight for the two positions would be fiercer than that for the lordships, and only the top powers at grade 9 sovereign were qualified to participate in it. Currently, only Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man possessed the qualification. When both of them assumed kingship, there would be five kings in Daluo territory. The whole situation would definitely change. Some of the people were already planning to join Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man once they assumed kingship so that they would look after them. Mandela opened her eyes and said flatly, Daluo territory will have two more kings. Anyone who is capable can go for the positions. Wow! There was an uproar and many people looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. They were still looking relaxed and confident, assuming they would both become kings. The older lords like Lord Asura and Lord Mountain Cracker sighed helplessly. They were supposed to be the ones to be conferred as kings, but others had surpassed them as Daluo territory expanded. They had no choice but to accept the cruel fact. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man had proven their strength. Other than being more experienced, the older lords had nothing superior to the rest. Condor King and Spiritual Pupil King looked at each other expressionlessly. However, they knew that with the addition of the two new kings, things would not go so smoothly in the future, and Daluo territory would not remain so peaceful. Mandela sat on the throne and looked at the crowd. She repeated flatly, anyone can vie for the positions of the two kings. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man stood up from the stone seats and looked around. Dragon Arm Sovereign smiled and said, is there anyone who wants to challenge me? I will let you take over the position if you defeat me. He sounded indifferent but authoritative. 
He was confident that no one would be able to compete with him over the kingship. Lord Asura and the rest of the lords turned pale. They looked at one another and shook their heads. They would be bringing shame to themselves if they challenged the two of them. There was silence in the square. After a long while, no one said anything. It was apparent that no one was a match for Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. When Dragon Arm Sovereign saw it, he broke into a broad smile and said, Since no one dares to challenge us, we will take up. Before Dragon Arm Sovereign could finish his sentence, someone laughed from afar. Ho ho ho, take it easy, gentlemen. Both of us are interested in the positions. A voice resounded in the area and shocked everyone in the square. Lord Asura and the rest of the lords lifted up their heads and saw spiritual light swirling toward them. A bunch of shadows then appeared in the sky. A handsome man and a beautiful woman were standing at the forefront, and they captivated everyone. Lord Asura and the other lords were stunned when they saw the two of them, and they shouted, Lord Mu. Lord Nine Nether. The people were shocked when they heard it, and there was a commotion. Many people looked at Mu Chen and Nine Nether, and started to whisper among themselves. They are Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether. They have disappeared for almost a year and now they are back. Lord Mu is holding a high position in Daluo territory. The Dominator was able to break through to Upper Earthly Sovereign because of him. Of course we knew that. If not for him, Nine Nether Palace would not be what it is today. This comment was filled with envy. Ha! What did Lord Mu say earlier? He and Lord Nine Nether want to become kings as well. He is young and inexperienced. Even if the Dominator favors him, he is not qualified to become king. You are right. It is impossible for him to vie for the position with Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. The area was bustling with noise, and it was apparent that everyone was scoffing at Mu Chen's remarks. Not everyone was qualified to be a king. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man lifted up their heads and frowned. Then they smiled as they looked at Mu Chen and Nine Nether, who had kept their spiritual energy within themselves, and laughed mockingly at them. I was wondering who it was. So, it is Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether. I have heard of your contributions to Daluo territory. However, if you are eyeing the kingships, I have only these words for you. You are too presumptuous. Chapter 1083. Coming on strong. You are too presumptuous. Dragon Arm Sovereign said flatly. After he spoke, the square suddenly quietened down. The people had weird expressions on their faces, especially the veteran top powers. Although Dragon Arm Sovereign had great strength and was well known, Mu Chen had contributed much to the Daluo territory. In fact, if it had not been for Mu Chen, Mandela would not have advanced to Upper Earthly Sovereign during the Big Hunting War. Moreover, the Daluo territory would not have survived in the North Territory if the Divine Pavilion had won. As such, everyone in the Daluo territory was grateful to Mu Chen. Even the three kings were respectful toward him. These people did not look down on him because he was young. Thus, when the people heard what Dragon Arm Sovereign had said, they were understandably very unhappy. Dragon Arm Sovereign, although you are well known in the North Territory, to us, you are still a greenhorn. You come here because we are powerful now. But please remember, Mu Chen played an important role in building the Daluo Territory up, Lord Asura said. He was already unhappy with Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. Ho ho ho, you need to go according to the order of arrival. It is useless to flaunt your seniority in the Daluo Territory. Lord Mountain Cracker said with a smile. Lord Bloodhawk and the rest of the older lords voiced their agreement with these sentiments as well. Only the new lords looked at one another in silence, not wanting to get involved. They did not want to offend Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man, just in case they became kings and pillars of the Daluo territory in the future. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were shocked when they saw that the older lords were reprimanding them. They instantly turned pale. After all, they were already well known in the North Territory, so they were naturally proud of themselves. They had become a bit overconfident and been rude to Mu Chen, looking down on him. They thought that Mu Chen was too young, but he had indeed hit the big time during the big hunting war and gained the favor of the Dominator. Even this made them more annoyed with him, 
as they looked down on people who pulled strings to get protection. Thus, when they saw that Mu Chen was eyeing the kingship as well, they reprimanded him. It was apparent that they had underestimated Mu Chen's influence in the Daluo territory. Hence, they were looking only for trouble by making such a comment. Before Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man could say anything else, the Condor King said, Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether have contributed much to the Daluo territory. The two of you are not kings yet, thus you are of the same status. Please be respectful. The Condor King and the Spiritual Pupil King were already unhappy with Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. As such, they took the opportunity to add insult to injury when they saw that the two of them were being attacked by the crowd. Even the Sleeping King smiled and nodded his head in agreement. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man turned ghastly pale. They had not expected the crowd to be so infuriated by such a simple remark. After all, in the pair's minds, especially given their strengths and reputations, it was only right for them to reprimand the younger generation. However, they had not expected things to turn out this way. They looked at each other and then at Mandela. They hoped that Mandela would speak up for them, but she simply pretended to be asleep. She did not say a word and did not even try to stop the Condor King and the rest from rebuking them. When Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man saw her passive attitude, their hearts sank. Mandela would rather allow him to be attacked by the crowd than to stick her neck out and support them. This showed how important Mu Chen was to her, as well as how much less they meant in comparison. All they could do at this moment was to swallow their prides. They lifted their heads to look at Mu Chen and Nine Nether, who were standing in the sky, then forced out two smiles. Dragon Arm Sovereign said, This is my fault. I hope Lord Mu Chen will not hold it against me. They had to give in, as they did not want to have more people rebuke them, which would bring shame upon themselves. Mu Chen was shocked by this scene. He shook his head and smiled. You are unlucky, Mu Chen muttered to himself. He then shook his head and smiled, refusing to be bothered by what Dragon Arm had said. Mu Chen then said, since the Dominator has said that anyone can go for the kingships, does that include the two of us? Mandela opened her eyes and looked at Mu Chen. Golden light surged in her eyes and she smiled faintly. Although Mu Chen and Nine Nether had hidden their spiritual energy fluctuations, she knew their actual strengths at a glance. Yes, you may, she said with a nod. This announcement caused yet another uproar, where even Lord Asura and the rest of the lords frowned. They had not expected that Mu Chen and Nine Nether would vie against Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man for the kingships. After all, Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were Grade Nine Sovereigns and very powerful. Even the Condor King and the Spiritual Pupil King were barely on par with them. They knew that Mu Chen and Nine Nether must have enhanced their strengths this year. When they had left before, Nine Nether had not yet reached Grade 7 Sovereign and Mu Chen was only at Grade 6. At the most, they should have advanced one level up since that time. Yet, even if this was so, they would not be able to defeat Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. Light flickered in the eyes of Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. They did not say a word, but curled up their lips into sneers. Mu Chen and Nine Nether were well known in the Daluo territory. If Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man had used normal means, they would not be able to take back the territories. However, Mu Chen and Nine Nether had come to them of their own accords. As such, they were eager to find out how these two young people would suffer in their hands. They were fascinated by them, wondering how many times they could afford to bring shame upon themselves. Lord Mu, Lord Nine Nether, this is not an easy task. Please consider this carefully, the Condor King warned them. Thank you for your reminder, Condor King, Mu Chen replied with a smile, yet did not show any intentions of withdrawing. Condor King was shocked by this. He could hear the confidence in Mu Chen's voice. Although this Mu Chen is young, he is prudent. He would not take such a risk, unless he was full of confidence. Has he acquired some powerful means? which enable him to contend with a grade 9 top power. The Condor King became less worried as he thought of the trump cards that Mu Chen had. After all, 
he was a spiritual array master, a war troop dispatcher, and many other things. Hence, Mu Chen must have a decent chance of winning. Otherwise, he would tarnish the reputation of Nine Netherworld Palace. Ho ho ho, since the two of you insist, I will have to be seen as a bully of the younger generation. Withered old man laughed hoarsely, then immediately appeared on a stone platform in the square. He then looked mockingly at Mu Chen and Nine Nether, who were in the sky, and asked, May I know which of you wishes to challenge me? If I lose, I will hand the position of the new kingship over to you. The people looked at Mu Chen and Nine Nether. Some of them looked hopeful, some looked doubtful, and some were gloating over the pair's misfortunes. I have long heard of you. Let me take you on. Nine Nether smiled and appeared before withered old man. Flames seemed to be burning in her eyes. She was burning with fighting spirit. She had spent two years cultivating in the God Sea. With the help of the inherited blood essence of the undying bird and the guidance from the sovereign beast, her strength had increased tremendously. As such, she needed an opponent that was on par with her to verify her strength, so Withered Old Man was a good candidate. Withered Old Man looked carelessly at Nine Nether and then frowned. He had noticed that Nine Nether had kept her spiritual energy within her. Have you hidden your spiritual energy? Withered Old Man asked in shock. Nine Nether smiled and did not reply. Instead, she stepped out, a horrifying spiritual energy exploding from her body like a volcano. The heavens and the earth quaked and a majestic spiritual energy swirled out. A horrifying spiritual energy oppression then burst out from Nine Nether's body. Many people were shocked as they looked at Nine Nether, especially Lord Asura and the rest of the lords. The Condor King and the spiritual pupil King turned pale, looking at Nine Nether in astonishment. The Condor King then took a deep breath and muttered, She has had a breakthrough. To Grade 9 Sovereign, Chapter 1084, The Undying Fire God's Shield. Grade 9 Sovereign, Many people looked shocked as they stared at Nine Nether. They found it hard to believe. They had heard that Lord Nine Nether was only a Grade 6 or Grade 7 Sovereign, but she had now become so powerful. Lord Asura, Lord Mountain Cracker, and the rest of the Lords were shocked as well. Nine Nether had great strength, but she could only be ranked third or fourth among the lords before she had left them. However, she had now advanced to grade nine sovereign before Lord Asura. Someone in the crowd asked, has she used some temporary means to bring up her level? This is impossible. If she has done that, she will have difficulty controlling her spiritual energy. However, her spiritual energy is not chaotic, and it indeed belongs to her. This is incredible. How could she possibly do it in less than a year? The crowd whispered among themselves, and even the lords were taken by surprise. They shook their heads, as they did not know what Nine Nether had gone through in order to advance to such an amazing level. With an old man stood on the stone platform and looked at Nine Nether with disbelief. However, as he was experienced and knowledgeable, he quickly collected himself and no longer looked down on Nine Nether. He looked grave now. He could feel the intimidating aura that Nine Nether exuded. He had heard that Lord Nine Nether was from the Netherbird clan, and she had the Divine Beast's constitution. She had such a strong combat force, and even Withered Old Man, who was also a Grade 9 Sovereign, no longer had confidence in defeating her. They now knew why Mu Chen was so confident. Lord Nine Nether had reached Grade 9 Sovereign, and she had the capability to fight for the kingship. It was my fault earlier. Let me have a taste of your skills. With an old man looked at Nine Nether, and then put his palms together. Bright light seemed to burst out from his eyes. Boom! The moment withered old man finished his sentence, majestic spiritual energy burst out from his skinny body. It was grey in colour, and as the spiritual energy swept out, even the land dried up. With an old man indeed possessed special power. These people who had advanced to Grade 9 Sovereign and created a name for themselves in the North Territory were indeed powerful. Vast spiritual energy burst out in the area, and even before the two of them struck, the strong oppression had caused fear among the top powers. With an old man's dull eyes suddenly brightened up, he stepped out, and vast spiritual energy surged. It then turned into a grey light and whizzed out toward Nine Nether. 
the spiritual energy light rainbow was withered and wherever it passed, the space would wane. That is withered old man's withered spiritual energy. Anyone who is struck by it will be dried up, and even spiritual energy will be contaminated and wane. Many top powers looked at the gray light rainbow and were fearful. They would be severely injured if they were hit by it, and their bodies would weaken. Nine Nether looked flatly at the powerful attack. She stretched forth her hand and pressed down telekinetically. Boom! Vast spiritual energy whizzed out like a tidal wave at a high temperature, causing even the air to be aflame. Swish! Swish! The two vast spiritual energies clashed against each other, but surprisingly, there was no explosion. They continued to attack each other and created dark cracks in the space. The grey light rainbow whizzed down like a meteorite, but no matter how strong the rotten force was, it could not get near Nine Nether. Although Withered Old Man's spiritual energy was weird and horrifying, Nine Nether's spiritual energy was special as well. She had cultivated the genuine undying flame under the guidance of the undying bird beast, and that brought about a tremendous change to her spiritual energy. The undying flame was unperishable, and it was more overbearing than the withered spiritual energy. Although withered old man's spiritual energy could encroach on the other top power's spiritual energy, it could not do so with nine nethers. The top powers turned grave when they saw that no matter how hard withered old man tried, he could not attack nine nether. Withered old man, if this is what you are capable of, I am afraid that it will be tough for you to secure the kingship, nine nether said with a smile. Although it looked as though Withered Old Man had attacked her with great force, he was merely testing her out. Withered Old Man started to look serious. He then nodded and formed a seal with his hands. Majestic spiritual energy swirled out like a windstorm, and a humongous spiritual energy shadow appeared behind him. The spiritual energy shadow was unique. It took the form of a human, but branches were growing out of it. From afar, it looked like a towering old tree that was swaying. However, this old tree exuded a withering force that weakened the spiritual energy in the area. That is the withered celestial body that withered old man has cultivated. The top powers shouted out in shock when they saw the towering old tree behind him. The withered celestial body was intriguing and ranked number 61 on the list of 99 sovereign celestial bodies. In order to cultivate it, one had to absorb the different withering forces in the heavens and earth. Withered old man had spent years in the desolated land to cultivate it before he could possess this celestial body. Every single move carried a withering force. If it invaded one's body, the flesh would dry up. This celestial body was overbearing and vicious, and it was withered old man's trump card. However, no one expected him to use it right from the beginning. It was apparent he knew that he could not use ordinary means to deal with Nine Nether after testing her out earlier. With an old man rose up slowly and landed on the towering old tree. He looked down at Nine Nether and said in a hoarse voice, If Lord Nine Nether can counter my withering power, I will admit defeat. Nine Nether looked up and stared at the towering old tree to feel the withering power. She was not alarmed by it, but instead, she smiled and said, if you can counter my fire with your withered celestial body, I will admit defeat, too. Having said that, the spiritual energy above nine nether gathered together to form a giant black bird. As it spread out its wings, it looked like clouds. As the giant bird cried out, fire spurted out from its mouth. The flames were transparent, and they looked amazing. Undying fire god's shield. Nine nether called out in her heart, and the fire instantly swelled out. Space warps were formed, and the fire turned into a huge fire shield that engulfed the withered celestial body. Crackle, crackle, as the transparent fire shield came down on the withered old man, his face twitched. He said, Lord Nine Nether is overconfident. Do you think that you can trap me with this fire shield? He sneered within himself and immediately looked stern. He changed his seal at lightning speed, and the towering old tree started to sway. Grey light whizzed out and covered the area. Hand of the withered willow whisking the heavens. As the grey light gathered together, it formed a gigantic, withered grey hand. It caused the sky to darken as the withering power emitted from it. Many top powers were shocked when they saw it. 
with an old man was well known for using this means. Even a grade 8 sovereign who was struck by this vicious attack would have his flesh weakened and die instantly. Although withered old man refused to admit it, he was wary of nine nether. He was afraid of being overthrown by her if he was too careless. Boom! The withered gigantic hand brushed casually across the horizon. It looked light, but its power inflicted fear among the top powers. As the gigantic hand dashed toward the fire shield, ripples started to form above the fire shield. Fire twirled around it, and transparent flames spurted out and hit hard against the withered hand. Boom! Boom! High temperature raged out as the two collided. Withered old man turned pale, as his withered hand seemed to have met its nemesis. As the transparent flame swirled toward his withered hand, his withered hand started to burn up like dead wood. What an overbearing fire! Many top powers shouted as they were taken aback. Condor King and Spiritual Pupil King were amazed as well. Even they felt threatened by the transparent flame. This, this, is this the genuine undying flame? With an old man was dumbstruck by the transparent flame, and his voice suddenly became sharp. His withered celestial body was vicious and strange, but it was afraid of power that was filled with vitality. The undying flame was a nemesis to his withering power no matter how hard he tried to encroach upon it. Nine Nether smiled as she looked at withered old man, who had turned ghastly pale. This undying fire god's shield was passed down to her by the undying bird sovereign beast. Although she could not cause severe injury to him, she could use it to entrap him. With an old man, you can go on trying, Nine Nether said. After a while, Withered Old Man smiled wryly and shook his head. He said, Lord Nine Nether is indeed talented. I have lost to you. Wow! There was an uproar in the square, as no one had expected Withered Old Man to admit defeat so easily. Withered Old Man knew that he was totally restricted by the fire shield. He could have given his all to break out of the array, but he would need to spend much time to do so. This would give Nine Nether an advantage over him as he would have exhausted his energy. Even if he managed to break out, he might not be able to defeat Nine Nether afterward. He would rather admit defeat than waste his effort. Thank you for letting me win. Nine Nether smiled and waved her hand. The giant fire shield then turned into transparent flame as Nine Nether gulped it into her mouth. In an instant, the temperature in the area went back to normal. With an old man darted out of the stone platform and landed beside Dragon Arm Sovereign, who looked pale. He looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign and said in a low voice, Lord Nine Nether is powerful. I don't think Lord Mu is easy to deal with, either. This is a load of crap. Light flickered in Dragon Arm Sovereign's eyes as he looked sharply as Mu Chen, who was smiling from afar. He rebuked with an old man and said in a cold voice, it is tough to deal with Nine Nether, as she is a divine beast and possesses the undying flame. Mu Chen is a human being, and I don't believe that he can have the power of a grade 9 sovereign within only a year. Having said that, he snorted. He stamped his feet and appeared on one of the stone platforms. He looked fiercely at Mu Chen and said in a flat voice, Lord Mu, if you wish to take away the kingship from me, you have to prove to me that you are capable of doing so. Chapter 1085, The Power of Dragon Arm. Dragon Arm Sovereign placed his hands behind his back and stood tall on the stone platform. He was like a mountain, causing the earth underneath his feet to quake. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were the masters in the North Territory, but Dragon Arm Sovereign was more successful than Withered Old Man. It had been rumored that even the Divine Pavilion had wanted to recruit him but were unsuccessful in their attempt. The Divine Pavilion had sent a Pavilion Master to spar with Dragon Arm Sovereign, but he had lost to Dragon Arm Sovereign. This was proof of Dragon Arm Sovereign's strength and reputation in the North Territory. As compared to Dragon Arm Sovereign, Mu Chen had been viewed by most as a mere youth with great potential. Although he had made a name for himself in the North Territory, most people felt that it was impossible for Mu Chen to vie against masters like Dragon Arm Sovereign. When Dragon Arm Sovereign went up to the platform and looked at Mu Chen, all of the onlookers' eyes turned to Mu Chen as well. No one dared to mock him, especially after Nine Nether had turned the tables around. 
Moreover, given his character, Mu Chen would not be rash enough to challenge Dragon Arm Sovereign, unless he possessed the adequate means to do so. As such, all of the people were interested to find out just what means Mu Chen possessed that could help him deal with Dragon Arm Sovereign. As the people looked at him eagerly, Mu Chen remained calm. He then looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign and smiled. In a flash, Mu Chen then appeared on the stone platform. Lord Mu, have you camouflaged your spiritual energy? Have you reached Grade 9 Sovereign? I will be impressed if so. Dragon Arm Sovereign asked mockingly, then fixed his gaze on Mu Chen. Although Nine Nether had taken them by surprise earlier, he believed that it was impossible for Mu Chen to have reached Grade 9 Sovereign within such a short period of time. Even if he had done so, his foundation would be weak, so it would be impossible for him to develop further. As such, there was nothing for Dragon Arm Sovereign to be worried about. When Mu Chen noticed his attitude, he was not enraged. Instead, he smiled and said softly, You are right. I have not reached Grade 9 Sovereign. When Dragon Arm Sovereign heard this, he loosened up. As long as Mu Chen had not reached Grade 9 Sovereign, he had no need to be afraid of him. Some of the people also heaved sighs of relief, including some of the lords. After all, it is not easy to reach Grade 9 Sovereign. Mu Chen lifted up his head and looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign, who now looked at ease. He then said slowly, that is why I am still half a step away. Boom! After Mu Chen said that, majestic spiritual energy burst out from his body and swirled around the area. It was like a tidal wave that engulfed the whole area, sending a strong gale across it. Although there was no wind around Mu Chen, his robe still flapped. He smiled and a strong oppression exuded from his body. All of the top powers suddenly froze. They were shocked by such a strong oppression. Although the spiritual energy fluctuation was not yet that of a grade 9 sovereign, it had surpassed that of a grade 8. Clearly, Lord Mu was only half a step away to grade 9 sovereign. Lord Asura, Lord Mountain Cracker, Lord Bloodhawk and the rest of the lords looked stunned. Before Mu Chen had left them, he had just entered grade 6 sovereign. However, in less than a year, his strength had shot up to a half step to grade 9. It made sense for Nine Nether to advance to grade 9 sovereign, as she was a divine beast. There was a difference in the cultivation of a divine beast and a human being. However, it puzzled them that Mu Chen was able to have such an accelerated advancement as a human being. Many top powers were dumbfounded. Even the three kings looked grave. The Condor King looked especially perplexed. When Mu Chen first came with Nine Nether to the Daluo territory, he had just condensed the sovereign celestial body. However, in only a few years, he had almost caught up with him, now being only half a step away from him. I knew back then that he was extraordinary, but I never expected him to progress so quickly, the Condor King exclaimed. Given Mu Chen's current progress, he would soon surpass the Condor King. Mu Chen had a great future and, given enough time, he would not only reach Grade 9 Sovereign, but he could even be on par with the Dominator. The Condor King finally knew why the Dominator treated Mu Chen differently. She had foresight and saw the great potential that was within him. Thus, she had never treated him as a subordinate, but rather as a friend, even though there was still a great disparity in their statuses. In any case, no one who have expected that Mu Chen would reach such a high level in just a few years. There was a sudden uproar, and as Dragon Arm Sovereign looked at Mu Chen, his face twitched. Although he had predicted Mu Chen's strength, when he saw it right before him, he could not help but feel shocked. Mu Chen was still so young, yet he was already a half-step to grade 9. He was indeed amazing. Dragon Arm Sovereign found it incredible that the spiritual energy from Mu Chen's body was so rich and flowed so steadily. There was not a single sign of superficiality within it, and it was firm and stable. Dragon Arm Sovereign found it hard to imagine how Mu Chen had managed to advance three levels in less than a year. Even if he had consumed some sacred treasures to increase his strength, he would have had difficulty controlling his spiritual energy. However, it was clear that Mu Chen could easily maneuver his majestic spiritual energy, as it was not even chaotic. This chap.
Dragon Arm Sovereign frowned and became wary. He no longer looked down on Mu Chen, now starting to take him very seriously. Lord Mu is indeed well prepared. Dragon Arm Sovereign took in a deep breath and suppressed his emotions. He then became expressionless, no longer concerned with how Mu Chen managed to increase his strength so quickly. Dragon Arm Sovereign focused on the future, determined that he would not forego the kingship, as he wanted to have more power and resources in the Daluo territory. Although Mu Chen's spiritual energy was stable, he was still only a half step to grade 9. Thus, there was still a gap between his skills and that of a grade 9 sovereign. In light of these facts, as long as he was careful, he believed that he could still suppress Mu Chen. At this thought, Dragon Arm Sovereign looked at Mu Chen and said, It is really impressive for Lord Mu to have reached the realm of a half-step to grade 9 at such a young age. However, if you want me to let you have the kingship, you have to show me what you are capable of. Buzz! Light flashed across Dragon Arm Sovereign's eyes, while a vast spiritual energy swirled out across the horizon. There was a gale, then the clouds gathered in large numbers, causing the sky to darken. The ground under his feet started to buzz and quake, almost seeming like it was wailing. Dragon Arm Sovereign had a burly build to start with, but he had become even larger now. As the people watched him, they felt breathless, as they felt a strong oppression exuding from him. The spiritual energy oppression that had burst out from Mu Chen's body was swept away instantly. Dragon Arm Sovereign had a strong aura, which caused him to appear like a god of war. His look was intensely intimidating. The moment Dragon Arm Sovereign struck, he showed an astounding strength. In fact, the oppression in his power was stronger than even that of Withered Old Man. The top powers looked respectfully at Dragon Arm Sovereign, while he slowly grasped his fists together. At that moment, a majestic spiritual energy burst out and formed ancient spiritual runes on his body. Then, a red light burst out from his arms and the cry of a dragon resounded throughout the area. Bang! As Dragon Arm Sovereign's arms trembled, the clothes that were touching his thick and strong arms turned into ashes and disappeared. Then, red dragon scales appeared on his arms, and his fingers became sharp, like a dragon's claws. When the Condor King and the Spiritual Pupil King saw his arms, they turned pale and became wary. They had heard that Dragon Arm Sovereign's arms possessed the power of the Dragon Clan. In fact, legends told that he had sparred with a master, who was at the same level as him, and that he had blasted the master's sovereign celestial body with only his arms. Thus, many sovereigns, who had just stepped into grade 9, were wary of Dragon Arm Sovereign, whose arms were powerful beyond description. It was apparent that Dragon Arm Sovereign took Mu Chen seriously as he immediately displayed his dragon arm. He intended to give this battle his best shot and defeat Mu Chen quickly. Dragon Arm Sovereign is cautious. Mu Chen is in grave danger now. The Condor King and the other kings looked at one another, their expressions grave. Mu Chen was at a disadvantage, as he was only at a half step to grade 9. As the top powers watched Mu Chen, he took a deep breath. As he did so, flames seemed to gather in his dark eyes. Eyes that the power of the dragon arm. Mu Chen muttered to himself. He then slowly grasped his fists. As he did so, the spirits of the real dragon and real phoenix on his arms started to open their eyes. Let me see if your dragon arm is stronger than my real dragon and real phoenix. Chapter 1086. The fight with a grade 9. Roar. Dragon arm sovereign stood proudly on the stone platform. Dragon scales appeared on his red arms making them look like ferocious dragon arms, and the cry of a dragon was indistinctly heard. It sounded frightening. Many top powers looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign's arms with respect. Dragon Arm Sovereign was made famous by them, and of course, he was named after them. He had defeated many top powers with this pair of arms and had become well known in the North Territory. Mu Chen was in front of Dragon Arm Sovereign and he let his hands down, looking calm. He gently closed his eyes, and majestic spiritual energy circled around him, causing the space to shake. He exuded extraordinary aura as well. Boom! Dragon Arm Sovereign glanced at Mu Chen. In the next instant, 
light burst out from his eyes, and he put forth his foot and stomped on the ground. Dong! As Dragon Arm Sovereign stomped his foot, the mountain in the square quaked. The hard slab stones under his feet cracked, and gravel flew out all over the place. It carried with it a horrifying force that tore apart everything that came its way. Dragon Arm Sovereign's blow was brutal and overbearing. Those who were observant would know that even if more than ten peak of grade eight sovereigns had joined forces to counter the attack, they would be smashed into pieces. As the ground continued to crack toward Mu Chen, he slowly opened his eyes. His dark eyes seemed to turn fiery, and he took a step forward instead of dodging out of the way. He stomped his foot, and majestic spiritual energy penetrated into the ground, causing a large crack to form. Majestic spiritual light surged within as the powerful spiritual energy gathered together. In the face of Dragon Arm Sovereign's brutal and overbearing attack, Mu Chen had chosen to go head on with him. The two fiery cracks moved from the two sides of the stone platform and hit hard against each other at lightning speed. Boom! Boom! When they clashed together, gravel flew all over the area. Cracks started to form from the center of the stone platform and tore it apart as it exploded. Visible powerful shockwaves raged out and threw Mu Chen and Dragon Arm Sovereign backward. Dong! Dong! Mu Chen moved back several steps, leaving behind deep footprints on the ground. At the last step, even his ankle went deep into the hard slab stone. Dragon Arm Sovereign, on the other hand, moved back only one step. At their first exchange of blows, it was apparent that Dragon Arm Sovereign was slightly superior to Mu Chen. However, the outcome took everyone by surprise, including Dragon Arm Sovereign. Although Dragon Arm Sovereign had not used his deadly kick, the blow was destructive enough, and any half-step to Grade 9 Sovereign could not possibly counter it. Mu Chen had not only counted it, but he had only moved back a few steps. Dragon Arm Sovereign was obviously not getting the upper hand. Condor King and Spiritual Pupil King looked at each other and became more grave. If they were the ones to receive the blow from Dragon Arm Sovereign, they would probably be in the same state as Mu Chen. Mu Chen was only a half-step to grade 9, but he could counter the attack so well. It was apparent that his combat force was more powerful than what he let on. This is interesting. Dragon Arm Sovereign looked fiercely at Mu Chen and smiled. He then suddenly shot out. The air exploded under great pressure. Dragon Arm Sovereign's speed was quick, and only a few people managed to catch a glimpse of his shadow. Many of the top powers shouted, he is so quick. Mu Chen was shocked when he heard the sound of the wind and thunder. He then crossed his arms in front of his body to protect himself. Boom! The space before him tore apart, and a fist that was covered by red dragon scales punched his arms. The power was so great that it could smash a mountain. Bang! There was an air blast, and Mu Chen was thrown back as he was hit hard by the powerful attack. The aftermath of the force continued to cause an air blast in the sky around the area. Dragon Arm Sovereign sneered and shot out again. He did not give Mu Chen any time to react. Boom! Boom! His fist was like a dragon's claws, and he punched out hard toward Mu Chen's chest. The space before the fist was suppressed so much that it caved in. Just as the dragon fist was about to hit Mu Chen, a slender hand suddenly appeared out of nowhere and fended off the dragon fist. It covered the ferocious dragon fist with its palm. Buzz! A deep sound traveled out, and there was an air blast that astonished all the top powers in the square. Two figures were seen hitting each other in the sky, with Dragon Arm Sovereign maintaining his punching posture, and Mu Chen covering the fist with his palm. His palm was like a chasm, and regardless of the power of the punch, it got stuck within. Dragon Arm Sovereign's expression changed. He stared at Mu Chen's palm, and at such a short distance, he could see dark golden dragon claw light runes coming out from Mu Chen's sleeve, covering his fingers up. Dragon Arm Sovereign could indistinctly feel the oppression from the dragon claw light runes. His red dragon arm seemed to dim under the oppression. Mu Chen lifted up his head and looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign. He said calmly, you are not the only one to possess the power of the dragon. Oh, 
Dragon Arm Sovereign gritted his teeth and sneered. He was proud of the power of the dragon. Although he did not know how Mu Chen managed to possess it, he believed that Mu Chen could not be better than he was. You were just a young chap. What do you know about the power of the dragon? Ridiculous. Dragon Arm Sovereign looked vicious. He used his mind power, and the dragon scales became more reddish. They seemed to turn into magma and were boiling. The cry of a dragon resounded and triggered a destructive force. Crackle, crackle. From far, dragon arm sovereign's arms looked as though magma was flowing on them. An overbearing power emitted from them. And even Condor King and the other masters were wary of the fluctuation. Get off, dragon arm sovereign shouted, and a horrifying power burst out from his arms. His fist shook and broke away from Mu Chen's palm. After Dragon Arm Sovereign's fist broke free from Mu Chen's captivity, he stepped forth. He waved his fists like a red dragon that was dancing around and formed fist shadows that carried with them destructive power. These fist shadows moved toward Mu Chen to cover him up. Each fist shadow was powerful as it smashed the void. Dragon Arm Sovereign looked frantic. Even those who had just stepped into Grade 9 Sovereign would not have dared to take him on. Bang! Bang! Dragon Arm Sovereign's brute force attack once again suppressed Mu Chen. As the fist shadows whizzed past, Mu Chen was taken aback, and he quickly moved back in a sorry state. He groaned every time there was a clash. As the two of them exchanged blows in the sky, horrifying power raged out and caused the space to crack. This inflicted fear in the top powers. Dong. When they clashed once again, Mu Chen did not seem able to take the blow, and he was thrown back. As he landed on the stone platform, two deep cracks formed on the stone platform. It was tough for Mu Chen to stabilize himself. His clothes were a little torn, and blood stains appeared on his arms. However, he was not dispirited. In fact, he was filled with fighting spirit and burning with excitement. This was the first time that he had fought with a grade 9 sovereign. Although the fight was fierce, Mu Chen was thrilled. He was overjoyed with the improvement in his strength. He used to find grade 9 sovereigns beyond his reach and felt that they were peerless. However, Dragon Arm Sovereign was now having only a slight edge over him, even though he had shown the astounding power of the dragon. Mu Chen finally had a distinct feeling from this fight that all his years of training and cultivation had paid off. He was now a different person. Ha! He felt so excited that he curled up his lips into a smile. Are you still smiling even now? Dragon Arm Sovereign said coldly as he looked down from the sky at Mu Chen. Mu Chen lifted up his head and looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign. His dark eyes gradually turned deep. He then smiled and grasped his fist tightly and said, Now, I shall send you flying off with a punch. If I am unable to do that, you win. Presumptuous. Dragon Arm Sovereign squinted and mocked Mu Chen. Roar. The cry of a dragon suddenly sounded out from Mu Chen's body. Dark golden light burst out from his body, and a humongous golden nine-clawed dragon appeared behind him. As the nine-clawed dragon took its form, the imposing aura of the dragon raged out like a windstorm. When the aura of the dragon advanced toward Dragon Arm Sovereign, his hair stood up, and he squinted. His voice suddenly turned sharp. Is that the real dragon? Chapter 1087. Securing the kingship with one punch. The dark golden dragon cried out from behind Mu Chen, sending forth a strong oppression that shocked the top powers. Is that the real dragon? The Condor King asked. He and the spiritual pupil king were freaking out at the sight. After all, the real dragon was the king of the dragon clan, meaning that it possessed the supreme power of the heavenly sovereign. This is not the real dragon, but it has a portion of it within it, the sleeping king said, then added, if I have guessed correctly, this is the effect of the dragon phoenix body that Mu Chen has cultivated. I am surprised that he could bring it up to this level in only a year. The Condor King and the Spiritual Pupil King gazed at Mu Chen. They knew about the Dragon Phoenix body that Mu Chen possessed, but were surprised at how his strong oppression had grown from a year ago. Judging from the power of this real dragon, Mu Chen is well above any ordinary half-step to Grade 9 Sovereign, the Condor King said. 
Then, the two kings sighed within themselves. They now knew why Mu Chen was not afraid of Dragon Arm Sovereign. He indeed had some trump cards up his sleeve. Specifically, with the power of the real dragon, he possessed the ability to contend with the top powers, who had just stepped into Grade 9 Sovereign. Mandela sat on the throne, remaining very still. She was also a little shocked by the shadow of the real dragon that had emerged behind Mu Chen. She was aware of the Dragon Phoenix scripture that Mu Chen had cultivated, so she knew that the real dragon shadow must have been formed by the real dragon symbol on his body. Although the dragon symbol was helpful to Mu Chen, it did have its limitations. However, the real dragon shadow at present possessed a spiritual body and was very powerful. What has he gone through within this past year? How did he manage to bring the Dragon Phoenix scripture up to this level? Mandela was puzzled. She knew how tough it was to cultivate the Dragon Phoenix scripture, let alone to bring it up to a higher level. Such necessary conditions were rigid, and in order to bring it to the current level, Mu Chen would have had to absorb a ton of divine beast blood essence. Could he have collected all of the corpses of the divine beasts in the land of the divine beasts? As Mandela was wondering about these things, Dragon Arm Sovereign looked gravely at the real dragon shadow. He was wary, as he knew what was before him was not an illusion. It indeed possessed the aura of the real dragon. Specifically, the aura was that of the oppression of the supreme, which stifled the torrential power of the dragon in Dragon Arm Sovereign. The real dragon was the lord of the dragon clan, so its bloodline was royal and mighty. Dragon Arm Sovereign's arms were from a flame dragon. Although its bloodline was powerful, it was nothing compared to the real dragon. At the moment, Dragon Arm Sovereign found it hard to believe that a human being like Mu Chen could possess the aura of a real dragon. As such, he had previously scoffed at Mu Chen, but now, he had to take Mu Chen seriously. After all, if he was careless, he would be defeated by Mu Chen. Hoof. As Dragon Arm Sovereign thought of this, he took a deep breath to calm himself down. With a stern look, he slowly grasped his fists together. As he did so, the red light on his arms brightened even more, and his arms started to expand. His fingers became sharper and were covered by dragon scales. When glimpsed from afar, his arms no longer looked like those of a human being, but had turned into the claws of a ferocious flame dragon. As Dragon Arm Sovereign was activating his power, Mu Chen lifted up his head to look at the real dragon shadow, his gaze turning sharp. Buzz! At that moment, a bright golden light burst out from Mu Chen's body, causing him to look like a golden god of war. He then grasped his fists and punched outward. The blow was slow and as heavy as a mountain. As Mu Chen punched outward, the golden light on his body started to shift. It flowed like a tide along his arms, moving toward his fists. As the golden light gathered together, his fists became hard like gold. Then, the wind blast of his fists fluctuated, smashing the space up entirely. The real dragon's punch. Mu Chen recognized it instantly. Right then, the wind blast of the fists surged and a majestic golden light shot forth from them. The light then turned into golden light fist shadows. Roar. The real dragon shadow roared mightily in the sky. It then whizzed down and entered the golden fists. After which, golden dragon scales grew on the golden fists, thus increasing their power. Wherever the wind blast of the fists passed, the space cracked. When the top powers saw the golden fists, they were startled. Even the three kings looked grave and fearful. They felt threatened by this simple punch that Mu Chen had just thrown out. Boom! Boom! The golden real dragon's punch pierced through the void and appeared instantly before Dragon Arm Sovereign. Golden light then shone out, leaving no escape route for him. As the vast wind blast of the fists hovered above Dragon Arm Sovereign, golden light filled the area, asserting its sovereignty over the entire place. As it did so, Dragon Arm Sovereign's hair stood on end. Do you think you can defeat me so easily? Dragon Arm Sovereign shouted then threw out a punch instantly. Boom! Red light burst out and a large flame dragon flew out from Dragon Arm Sovereign's palm. Fire swirled around the area, as though it were burning the entire place down. Boom!
Boom! The golden punch and the flame dragon collided with each other, creating a thunderous sound. At the point where the two met, it looked as though a bright sun was rising up. Space warps started to form, covering a large area, while the terrifying clashes continued to rage. Bang! Bang! The stone platforms below turned into powder, as they were affected by the shockwaves. Upon seeing the scene, the top powers in the area turned pale and retreated in sorry states. After seeing the horrifying shockwaves, Mandela flicked her fingers. As she did so, a spiritual light appeared in the area and a light shield came down from the heavens, covering the center of the square. Somehow, the light shield was able to withstand the horrifying attacks that also came down on the square. The top powers heaved sighs of relief once they saw that Mandela had stepped in. They quickly looked at the square, where the golden light was raging. At this instant, the golden light engulfed the red light. Dragon Arm Sovereign turned ghastly pale. He realized that he had underestimated the power of Mu Chen's punch. Boom! Before he could do anything, the golden light had whizzed toward him. As it swept past him, it hit him, sending him flying backward in a pathetic state. Swoosh! The top powers saw Dragon Arm Sovereign fly backwards, the air behind him exploding as he went. Even the space started to crack in his wake. Dong! After flying a far distance, Dragon Arm Sovereign threw out a blow with the back of his hand. After that, the space cracked and he managed to stabilize himself. Blood flowed from the corner of his mouth, but he ignored it. He was looking into the distance at the mountain where the square was. He had been thrown out of the mountain by Mu Chen, with just a single punch. Dragon Arm Sovereign looked ghastly pale. He had never expected to be thrown out by Mu Chen with just one punch. As he stood in the sky, there was excitement in the square, as the top powers widened their eyes to look at him. They looked at one another and gasped. Mu Chen had thrown a grade 9 sovereign out with only a punch. If this had happened to any one of them, they would have turned into ashes instantly under the horrifying power. They then turned their gazes toward the center of the square. As the smoke dissipated, the figure of a youth appeared. Mu Chen maintained his punching posture, blood dripping from his fists. His earlier punch was too forceful, which had obviously caused some repercussions. At the moment, the majestic real dragon shadow was nowhere to be seen, and even the overbearing spiritual energy around Mu Chen had disappeared. He slowly lifted up his head, showing his young and handsome face. He looked at Dragon Arm Sovereign, who was in the sky at a distance. Then, with a smile, he asked, Dragon Arm Sovereign, what do you think of this punch? Mu Chen had garnered all of his strength for that punch, and with the additional power from the real dragon shadow its power had been immense. Even a true grade 9 sovereign would have been afraid of such a punch. Dragon Arm Sovereign looked at Mu Chen, tempted to strike again. However, he restrained himself, as he no longer had confidence that he could defeat Mu Chen. Although he had not yet used all of his trump cards and strength, he knew that this same condition might apply to Mu Chen as well. If they were to meet in a life and death fight right now, he might not be able to get out alive. After pondering this for a while, he said in a low voice, The kingship is yours. Chapter 1088, The Relic. There was an uproar when the crowd heard what Dragon Arm Sovereign had said. However, they were no longer surprised but were making all sorts of remarks. Mu Chen had already proven his strength. As a half-step to Grade 9 Sovereign, he possessed the combat force to contend with a Grade 9 Sovereign. He indeed deserved to be conferred as king. He is so amazing, Lord Asura exclaimed as he looked at Mu Chen, who was standing among the mess. He usually looked stern, but he was now touched by Mu Chen. When Mu Chen first came to Daluo territory, he was just a commander. In just a few years, he had surpassed all of them and assumed kingship. The rest of the older lords were touched as well. They had witnessed how Mu Chen had worked his way up to become what he was this day. Lord Bloodhawk, do you still remember that you had a lot of grudges against the two of them previously? Lord Mountain Cracker teased Lord Bloodhawk as he glanced at him. When Nine Nether first returned to Daluo territory, Lord Bloodhawk had had a lot of conflicts with her and created a lot of trouble. 
Lord Bloodhawk became embarrassed when he heard it. If Mu Chen and Nine Nether were as powerful when he had first met them, he would not have had the audacity to offend them. He was glad that he had not gone overboard back then. Otherwise, he would be trembling with fear now. The other new lords were whispering among themselves. They had not expected Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man to fail in securing the kingship. Mu Chen and Nine Nether would become the fourth and fifth kings in Daluo territory. There would be a change in the power structure of Daluo territory, with the addition of the two kings. After all, kings had great power, and they could even decide on the allocation of resources for the lords. The new lords were secretly wondering if they should pledge allegiance to the two new kings to get protection from them. The square was boisterous, and everyone had his own thoughts. Condor King, Spiritual Pupil King, and Sleeping King were smiling. Nine Nether and Mu Chen were not new to them, and the three kings were more ready to accept them as kings than Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. Mandela stood up from her throne. She was petite and inconspicuous, but when she stood up, the square instantly quieted down. The older lords and the new lords turned to look at her with great respect. Mandela was a prominent figure in the North Territory given her status as an upper earthly sovereign and as the top guy in the North Territory. The fight for the kingship has come to an end. From now on, Daluo Territory will have two additional kings. They are King Mu and King Nine Nether, Mandela announced. Congratulations, Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether for assuming kingship. The people in the square started to congratulate Mu Chen and Nine Nether, and many people looked at them with admiration. Both of them were the youngest kings that Daluo territory had ever had. As the people were filled with admiration for Mu Chen and Nine Nether, they were shocked as well. The two of them possessed such great talents and strength at such a young age, and had even prevailed over the two long-standing top powers like Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man. They were astoundingly talented. Mandela turned to look at Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man, and comforted them saying, both of you need not be dismayed. You indeed possess the capability to become king. You only need a bit more experience and time. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man were grade 9 sovereigns, after all. They were important to Daluo territory, thus Mandela had to appease them to prevent them from bearing any grudges. The two of them were new. If they had become kings, they would have become proud, and this would not do Daluo territory any good. Mandela was thus happy that Mu Chen and Nine Nether had secured the kingships. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man felt a little better after hearing Mandela's consolation. After this experience, they had mellowed out. When they had first come to Daluo territory, they were prideful. Other than Mandela, they were only wary of Sleeping King, and were not even afraid of Condor King and Spiritual Pupil King. When they were at Grade 9 Sovereign and became masters in the North Territory, enjoying all the attention, Condor King and Spiritual Pupil King were only at Grade 8 Sovereign. They had thus presumed that they would naturally assume the kingship and be second only to Mandela. They thought no one was capable of vying for the positions with them. However, they had not expected Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether to appear and put him down so thoroughly. From the look of it, Daluo territory indeed had strong foundations and must not be taken lightly. They would have to behave themselves. As they thought of this, both of them nodded and bowed to Mandela. Their attitude had changed, and they had become more respectful and submissive. The square was still filled with excitement. The conference of the lords had come to an end with the emergence of the two kings. Mandela looked at the crowd and suddenly said, I believe all of you know about the ancient celestial palace relic which was a hot topic in Tianlo the Great Six. The square suddenly became silent at these words. Many top powers were filled with excitement. Everyone in Tianlo the Great Six, including the North Territory, had been talking about the ancient celestial palace. From old, the ancient celestial palace was the only supreme power that had dominated Tianlo the Great Six, and it was prominent among the top powers. Its founder was one of the nine emperors, known as the Heavenly Emperor. After the extraterritorial race invaded the Great Thousand World during the Primordial Age, the ancient celestial palace had ceased to exist. There were mentions of its relic once in a while, but after some time, 
they had been proven to be inauthentic. However, everyone knew that this time around, it was for real. The supreme forces in Tianlo, the Great Six who had the ability to track the relic had been paying close attention to the direction where the relic was located. There are many opportunities in this grade of relic, and even I am interested in it. I have come to an agreement with the other top forces in the North Territory that we will form an alliance to participate in this fight over the ancient celestial palace. As the top powers heard what Mandela said, they became even more zealous. They did not doubt Mandela. The opportunities in the ancient celestial palace that had been left behind by the heavenly emperor were much coveted by everyone. Not only an upper earthly sovereign, but a complete earthly sovereign or even a heavenly sovereign would be interested in them. Needless to say, the top powers were excited about it. The ancient celestial palace was peerless in Tianlo the Great Six. If they could obtain some opportunities from it, their strength would increase, and they could be like Mu Chen and Nine Nether. They had to form an alliance, as North Territory was not a great force in Tianlo the Great Six. There was no overlord, as there had been constant struggles. If the Dominator had not reached Upper Earthly Sovereign, they would not even have the chance to form an alliance. They would not be able to fight with the other Earth-class top forces in Tianlo, the Great Six based on their own power, thus an alliance was necessary. Dragon Arm Sovereign and Withered Old Man looked at each other and were intrigued by it. They had stagnated as Grade 9 Sovereigns for many years, which was a common setback for many of them. They had no confidence of breaking through the bottleneck to step into Earthly Sovereign, but if they could enter the ancient Celestial Palace relic, they would have more chances of doing so. The two of them immediately cupped their fists and said, we support the Dominator's decision and will do our best to assist you. After the two of them had spoken, the rest of the top powers echoed the sentiment. The scene was truly majestic. Mu Chen took a deep breath when he saw it. Although he looked calm, his trembling fingers gave him away, revealing his excitement. When he left the Northern Heaven Spiritual Academy and followed Nine Nether to Tianlo the Great Six, North Territory, and Daluo Territory, he had continually honed himself. His status had been enhanced at the same time. He had gone through all of it simply for this very day. The ancient celestial palace possessed the means to evolve the great solar undying body, and if Mu Chen could possess it, his sovereign celestial body could be transmuted. Although the great solar undying body was special, Mu Chen would soon unearth all of its potential as his strength advanced. He knew that when he stepped into earthly sovereign level, the great solar undying body would become less useful to him. After all, it was still a fundamental sovereign celestial body regardless of how profound it was. Mu Chen had to successfully evolve the great solar undying body in order to pursue the legendary primitive celestial body, the primordial immortal body. This was the perfect celestial body that even a heavenly sovereign yearned to have. It was also Mu Chen's ambition to possess it. When he had succeeded in doing so, he could easily move around the great thousand world and be unstoppable. He would not be afraid of the mysterious clan that his mother was in. Mu Chen was looking forward to the ancient celestial palace more than anyone else. As Mandela looked at the people, she saw the excitement in them. When she saw Mu Chen's calm look, she smiled. She could tell from his eyes that he was excited. Everyone seemed interested in the ancient celestial palace. She then tilted her head and looked into the distance. She seemed to have pierced through space and seen the ancient relic. Since the ancient celestial palace relic had appeared, that person would appear as well. She knew how important the ancient celestial palace was to that person. As Mandela thought of this, she touched her wrist to recollect the curse that had inflicted the excruciating pain on her. Cold light flashed in her golden eyes. It was about time to settle the old scores. Chapter 1089, The Strength of the Ancient Celestial Palace. Even after the prince's meeting ended, the atmosphere in Dalwotion remained highly charged. Part of the reason for this intensity was due to the appointing of the new princes, but the most important factor was the appearance of the ancient celestial palace relic. Almost everyone knew how mighty the ancient celestial palace was. No other forces had ever reached its status or strength, even throughout the current Tianlo continent. Hence, 
Wherever the relic was concerned, everyone was interested. In fact, if one had enough luck within this ancient relic, he could leap to greater heights and rise with the wind. From then onwards, he would shine. Therefore, the battle in this ancient celestial palace relic was the most exciting and competitive battle that the Tianlo continent had witnessed in a thousand years. Any forces, even those with the least strength, would not want to miss it. After all, the attractiveness of the ancient celestial palace was too overwhelming. While all of the people in the Daluo territory were discussing the ancient celestial palace, Nine Nether Palace was also engaged in spectating. Ever since Mu Chen and Nine Nether had been crowned with prince status, Nine Nether Palace had suddenly become the strongest among the forces in the Daluo territory. After all, there had never been a force having two princes at the same time. So when the meeting ended, Nine Nether Palace soared in both status and popularity. All of the top powers from various teams came to visit, with the intention to forge alliances and seek refuge. They also figured that, I they could get the support of the two new princes, they could save themselves a lot of trouble in the future. However, this also made Mu Chen and Nine Nether vexed, as they soon grew exhausted by these endless visits. After all, they were not good at socializing to begin with. Eventually, they convinced their majordomo, Tang Bing, to handle the situation, while the pair announced themselves as being in a closed-door meditation. This clever ploy finally provided them some peace. Nine Nether Palace, in the backyard. The stone pavilion and the running stream created an elegant and peaceful environment within the secluded backyard. Nine Nether sat on the rocks alongside the stream. Her body was curvaceous and slender, the sexy outline of which was hidden underneath her clothes. Her eyes were closed and her spiritual energy circulated gracefully around her. There seemed to be a transparent flame burning around her. Although there was no high temperature being exuded, the flame continuously twisted and had a daunting oppression. After quietly meditating for quite some time, she opened her pretty eyes and stretched her back lazily. As she extended her body, her overwhelmingly curvy lines only grew more alluring. This attracted a stare from the direction of the stone pavilion. Somehow sensing the stare, which turned out to be coming from the eyes of Mu Chen, Nine Nether threw a death stare back at him at once. Mu Chen cleared his dry throat and acted like nothing had happened. He then quickly turned towards the scroll on the spiritual array in his hand. The crowd outside of Nine Nether Palace is making a lot of noise, whereas the both of you are hiding here in the peace and quiet. Suddenly a playful voice, belonging to Mandela, was heard in the pavilion. As a space rippled above the stream, Mandela appeared in her black dress and bare feet. A faint smile spread across on her small delicate face. My respects to the dominator, Nine Nether said, immediately standing up. Mu Chen put down his scroll and said, the preparation for the alliance of the North Territory. Has it been completed? If not, how would you have time to drop by here? There isn't much to prepare. Those fellows are not idiots. Given their individual strengths and knowing how tempting the ancient celestial palace is, they knew they were not qualified to vie with other top-notch forces of the Tianlo continent. So, they naturally would be even more concerned about the alliance, Mandela said casually, while sitting on a stone. She then soaked her feet in the cold stream water and asked her own question of Mu Chen. How about you? Aren't you the one who has been waiting for the appearance of the ancient celestial palace? Now that it has finally revealed, how are you still keeping your cool? Mu Chen laughed. I'm faking it. The appearance of it has stirred up quite a commotion. I wondered how many top-notch forces would be coming after it. My half-step grade 9 sovereign could barely be useful. As the news regarding the ancient celestial palace spread, Mu Chen had initially been very excited. By now, he had calmed down. Although he had been waiting for this day ever since he obtained the great solar undying body, he knew how competitive it would be to fight for it. Under such circumstances, even Mandela, who was an upper earthly sovereign, did not have absolute confidence of winning a victory, let alone a half-step grade 9 sovereign like himself. Mandela smiled when she heard this, then said, the evolution method of the great solar undying body is of no use to common people. 
Only those who have been practicing it can cultivate it successfully. Hence, most of the people would not fight with you. At this point, Mandela changed her tone. Even though the competition is small, it means that its difficulty level is higher. Mu Chen nodded slightly. Those who were fighting for the evolution method must be those who had been practicing the great solar undying body for some time. It also meant that his opponents would have some extraordinary talents. Otherwise, they would not have been able to maintain the stringent conditioning required for cultivating the great solar undying body. The difficulties in fighting with these elites would be far greater than any of the previous battles that Mu Chen had undertaken. But, he has no fear about it. Just how powerful was this ancient celestial palace? Mu Chen pondered aloud. He thought it was essential to have sufficient understanding of the strength of this old dominator, so that he could decide the best strategy for the relic. The ancient celestial palace was divided into five halls and nine mansions. The one we met previously at the big hunting war was the fourth hall master of the ancient celestial palace. All five hall masters were complete earthly sovereigns in their primes. The nine mansion masters, although they were weaker, were all earthly sovereigns, the upper earthly sovereign being the highest ranking among them, said Mandela slowly. At this point, Mu Chen and Nine Nether could not control their expressions. That lineup was already terrifying. That isn't even the scariest part. There are another three heavenly sovereigns in the ancient celestial palace above these people. Mandela wore a solemn expression. Phew. Mu Chen and Nine Nether drew in cold breaths. This piece of news was definitely unexpected. Are there two more top powers in the ancient celestial palace, apart from the heaven emperor himself? Mandela seemed to know what they were both thinking and shook her head. The other two heavenly sovereigns were also transformed from the heaven emperor. Transformed from the heaven emperor. Mu Chen repeated in surprise. Both he and Nine Nether were a little stunned. Apparently, they could not understand what she meant by this. Mandela looked at the stunned duo and asked, Did you know that there were 36 volumes of rare superpowers, and that the heaven emperor was practicing one? which was known as the Aki into Trinity. He could actually split himself into three parts by creating another two clones. Each clone was independent, marvelous, and even possessed the power of a heavenly sovereign. As such, even though there was only one real heaven emperor, it was basically as good as having three heavenly sovereigns. Wow! 36 volumes of rare superpower. Mu Chen swallowed his saliva with difficulty. The only superpower that he knew of had three different levels, which were known as the Minor Superpower, Grand Superpower, and Supreme Superpower. The difference between the standards was as evident as night and a day. This was the first time he had heard of the 36 volumes of rare superpower, however. But, when he thought of the superpower art known as self-sacrificing demonic fist, its power was already shocking to most people despite its being an incomplete grand superpower art. When he thought of the rare superpower that was two levels higher than that, Mu Chen could somehow understand its mightiness a bit better. After all, even as an upper sovereign, Mandela had been tempted by the grand superpower, and she had never had her hands on the supreme superpower before. So, if this was the case, the 36 volumes of rare superpower could be the highest level that a heavenly sovereign might achieve. This lofty ideal might still be a bit too far out of Mu Chen's reach currently. The ancient celestial palace, which rules the entire Tianlo continent, is understandably a treasure land for countless people. Hence, if you were to enter it, you must find its two treasure spots, Mandela said, while looking at Mu Chen. Which two? Mu Chen was still a little stunned. The superpower hall and the sky pool, Mandela said. The superpower hall was the place where the superpowers were stored in the palace. There were many different types, but all of them were strong superpowers. You can explore and see if you can find the evolution method of the great solar undying body there, too. As for the sky pool, it is even more important. This is because it is the treasure spot coveted by countless top powers in the ancient celestial palace. The Sky Pool possesses a strong deity power that could further secure one's spiritual foundation, allowing an upgrade to make a breakthrough and increase the success rate of overcoming any spiritual calamity. Back in ancient times, 
Only those who had contributed the most to their society would be able to access to the sky pool in the ancient celestial palace. At first, Mu Chen and Nine Nether were rather calm as they listened. But, as Mandela continued talking, they both could not help but reveal the passion burning in their eyes. As everyone knew, only those who had reached the level of earthly sovereign would then be known as one of the rulers in the Great Thousand World. Any level below that, including Grade 9 sovereign, was simply incomparable. Although becoming an earthly sovereign made one quite powerful, less than 10 out of 100 Grade 9 sovereigns would ever make it. The main reason for such a low number was because of the strong earthly sovereign shackle. Before they could break through the shackle, they would need to go through the daunting spiritual calamity, which might cause them to become paralyzed, or worse yet, to die. Such a low success rate was the barrier to most of the grade 9 sovereign top powers who had reached their peaks. They did not dare attempt to make a breakthrough to the earthly sovereign. As if they did not make it through their spiritual calamity, they would be ruined completely. Both Mu Chen and Nine Nether knew a little about this process, as neither were far from it now. Of course, apart from this, you still have to beware of Garuda. He might be the strongest opponent in your ancient celestial palace trip this time. Mandela squinted her eyes slightly and spoke slowly. Strongest opponent. Mu Chen was confused. He then realized what she was saying, his eyes narrowing immediately. If Mandela had made it a point to mention this person to him formally, this Garuda must have practiced the great solar undying body too. Chapter 1090. Garuda. Garuda. In the tranquil garden, Mu Chen looked solemn. The sharp radiance in his eyes surged as if he had met his biggest match. He lifted his head and looked at Mandela. Who is he? The North Territory was constantly chaotic, and it was not a significant region among the many regions in the Tianlo continent. The news about other regions was not as frequently updated. Hence, this was the first time Mu Chen had heard of this name. He is the Holy Sun from the Saint Demon Palace of the South region in the Tianlo continent. Hey, Garuda is much more renowned than you are in the Tianlo continent. With a teasing look, Mandela continued, the South region is bigger than our North Territory. Garuda has made tremendous contributions in expanding their territory by wiping out numerous sects and forces. Not only do the various forces in the South region tremble upon seeing him, but even those forces around the region are wary of him. He's now a grade 9 sovereign. I heard that he wasn't afraid of the top powers at the peak of grade 9 sovereign when he was just a beginner in grade 9 sovereign. That's scary. Some of the nosy people even created a ranking chart for those young generations in the Tianlo continent. Garuda was ranked third on it. Mu Chen had a slightly shocked expression in his eyes. Ranking third place among the young generation in the Tianlo continent was quite a thing. After all, the Tianlo continent was a supercontinent in the Great Thousand World. It was not easy to stand out among those talented and skillful people. Nine Nether suddenly smiled and asked, How about Mu Chen's ranking? Mandela darted a look at Mu Chen. No one seems to have counted him in yet. Mu Chen was embarrassed when he heard this. The North Territory was not very significant in the Tianlo continent. There was no overlord due to the endless disputes. Hence, no one would pay much attention to the North Territory. Moreover, he was always missing in action. His contributions were not flashy enough to attract any attention. Thus, it would not seem possible to have a ranking on the chart. Nine Nether and Mandela knew this very well. However, they purposely put up a show to tease him. Mu Chen shook his head helplessly. As powerful as Garuda was, he only ranked third among the young generation in the Tianlo continent. From this, Mu Chen could tell how strong the young generation was. Those people he met in the land of the divine beasts were not a match in comparison. Despite this, Mu Chen also understood that those people he had met in the land of the divine beasts might not be the top-notch players even though they were the supreme talents from the various divine beasts clans. However, they were just not the best in terms of overall performance. Like Bai Ming, he did not seem to be the main supreme talent in the Phoenix clan. How about Saint Demon Palace? Mu Chen shook his head and changed the topic. The smile on Mandela's pretty face seemed to have vanished. 
A cold radiance flashed in her golden eyes. She said indifferently, Saint Demon Palace is the true overlord in the South region. The master of the palace is Lu Yuan, commonly known as the Saint Demon King. He became an upper earthly sovereign a few years ago. Lu Yuan, the Saint Demon King. Do you have any grudges against him? Mu Chen was stunned by the domineering nickname. As sensitive as he was, he sensed the change in Mandela's tone and had to ask. The South region and the North Territory were poles apart with numerous lands and districts in between. Even an earthly sovereign would require a long time to travel that kind of distance. How could both bear grudges against each other? We're old friends, said Mandela coldly. He tricked me and planted that curse in my body back then. Mu Chen's expression changed. The curse in Mandela's body had been torture for her. Previously, she fell into deep sleep for a long period of time because of it. If she had not met Mu Chen, she might still be sleeping even now. However, Mu Chen never thought that the curse had something to do with the saint demon king, Lu Yuan. Mu Chen looked at Mandela's cold face and said helplessly, it seems like we have some affinity. The holy son of the saint demon palace would be my sworn enemy, and the saint demon king is your sworn enemy, too. Therefore, you must get the evolution method of the great solar undying body. It can never be in Garuda's hands, said Mandela seriously. Mu Chen nodded gently. His pitch black eyes were determined, as he knew very well how important the evolution method was. He had been making plans for this throughout the years. Now, he finally saw a light at the end of the tunnel. Therefore, he would not give up easily. Regardless of the fame that Garuda had in the Tianlo continent, Mu Chen would fight until the end as long as he dared to vie with him. Garuda might have information from Lu Yuan about the super power hall and the sky pool that I mentioned to you. You just need to watch out. Mu Chen nodded, but he had his doubts. Since the ancient celestial palace disappeared thousands of years ago, such news would be concealed. Why would you and Lu Yuan know about it so well? Mandela looked somber when she heard this. She kept quiet for a moment before she finally said slowly, because both of us came from the ancient celestial palace. What? Both Mu Chen and Nine Nether stared hard at Mandela with looks of disbelief. She came from the ancient celestial palace. Didn't all the people of the ancient celestial palace perish along with the death of the ancient heavenly emperor after the ancient grand war? How had Mandela and Lu Yuan managed to walk out of there? The news must have been highly confidential. They bet no one knew about this in the entire Tianlo continent. Otherwise, Mandela and Lu Yuan would not be enjoying their peace now. It's a complicated situation. I can't explain it. Those memories during that period are rather vague now. I only knew all this information based on bits and pieces from my memory. Mandela waved her little hand. She did not want to explain further. Seeing that Mandela did not wish to continue, Mu Chen and Nine Nether had to suppress their shock and curiosity. Only now did they understand why Mandela had such insightful information regarding the ancient celestial palace. She was from there herself. Who are the stronger forces that are eyeing the ancient celestial palace this time? Mu Chen asked, changing the topic once again. Those who can eye the ancient celestial palace are all very strong. Mandela continued, from the information that I got, the Saint Demon King from the South region will surely be there. The Chia dynasty from the East region, the Antiquity sect from the West region, the Myriad Beasts King from the Grand Million Mountain, the Lord from the Netherworld Stream, and more will be there, too. All these lords from the various forces possess the daunting strength of an upper earthly sovereign. Their foundations are strong. Apart from that, other secluded top powers in the Tianlo continent and the renowned people from outside of the Tianlo continent who have heard about the news will be there as well. Mu Chen was slightly shaken. The lineup was daunting. Most of the top-notch players in the entire Tianlo continent would not be missing out on this. It would be truly destructive when the fights broke out. Will there be any heavenly sovereigns? Mu Chen asked softly. Although at their level, any ordinary relic would not be attractive to them, the ancient celestial palace was different. That was the place where the heavenly emperor perished. In those ancient days, 
The Heavenly Emperor was considered to be a top-notch player among the Heavenly Sovereigns. The skill he was practicing, key into Trinity, was one of the 36 volumes of rare superpower. Any Heavenly Sovereigns would be tempted by these rare arts. Mandela pondered for a while and said, according to the rumors, vast spiritual energy burst the space and created great amounts of turbulence in the space where the ancient celestial palace was rediscovered. On top of this, the ancient celestial palace is a creepy place. There were a lot of secret moves used during the destructive war between the heavenly emperor and the demon emperor from the extraterritorial race back then. These secret moves were threatening to the equally powerful heavenly sovereigns. Hence, even though they might be tempted, I think they might not want to risk entering the palace. Mu Chen felt relieved after hearing this. If those big shots at the level of heavenly sovereign made their moves, they would be out of the show. Despite the fact that the lineups from the various forces seemed domineering, it was nothing in the eyes of any heavenly sovereign. Even so, the battle in the ancient celestial palace would be the most competitive and aggressive the Tianlo continent had seen in the last 1,000 years. Mandela looked at Mu Chen with her golden eyes as she reminded him, in the ancient celestial palace, I will also be tied down. When it's time to vie for the evolution method of the great solar undying body, I will not be able to help. You have to depend on yourself. The only help I can offer is to stall those people such as Lu Yuan. That will suffice. Mu Chen nodded and laughed. Apart from raising his status, the reason why he joined Dalwotian territory was for Mandela's promise today. He knew very well that, without any background or the help and support from an upper earthly sovereign, he would not be able to take away the evolution method successfully, even if he got it by chance. Mandela nodded her delicate chin. With a flick of her finger, a beam of golden light headed towards Mu Chen. Mu Chen received it in his palm. It was an ancient golden scroll. He gave it a quick look. His expression could not help but freeze slightly as he sensed a familiar fluctuation from it. It was the spiritual array. Is this the heavenly grade high-ranked spiritual array? Mu Chen looked at Mandela in shock. Your skill level with spiritual arrays is getting better, and such a high-ranking spiritual diagram array is becoming rare. I started collecting them quite some time ago, but I only managed to get one scroll, said Mandela indifferently. Although you're now a half-step to grade 9 sovereign, the opponents you are meeting this time will be those top powers of the young generations from the entire Tianlo continent. They are not any ordinary characters like those in our North Territory. Hence, you need to be more prepared. Mu Chen slowly clenched the golden scroll. He looked at Mandela and nodded formally. Thank you, he could sense the effort from Mandela. She must have done her best to help him. If she had not searched the entire Tianlo continent, it would have been difficult to find a diagram array at such a ranking. Mandela did not make a big deal about it as she waved her hand softly and left. While she was walking away, her voice slowly resounded. Prepare yourself during this period. We will be making our way to the ancient celestial palace relic in half a month. Mu Chen looked at her disappearing figure. His hands were tightly clenched. Blazing fighting desire was burning in his pitch black eyes. Although he was going to face the young top powers from the Tianlo continent, it was impossible for Mu Chen to concede defeat. Let us have a fierce battle and see who the final winner will be. Mu Chen wet his lips. Somehow, he had high expectations of the upcoming battle in the ancient celestial palace. Chapter 1091. The West City. Half a month passed in the blink of an eye. During her preparation for the trip, Mandela finally confirmed the list of people that she would be bringing from the Dalwotian territory. It was a small group of people, all of whom were selected very carefully. In fact, almost all of the elites in the entire Dalwotian territory were summoned to take part in the battle. Not only would Mandela be going personally to the ancient celestial palace, but all of the five princes were going as well. Even the most outstanding among the Castellans would be allowed to follow them into battle. Approximately 50 people were going in total. As the ancient celestial palace was known to be filled with danger, no one knew what kind of terrible crisis awaited him there. As such, it would be unwise to barge in recklessly with a large army. Hence, 
The choice of the team for this mission was determined based on the individual's skills, not on numbers. However, this time, the Dalwotian territory was not alone. They would be joined by the Alliance Army, which was formed by the top forces in the entire North Territory. This meant that grouping up with the rest of the forces could be slower, as it required time to be fully prepared. After much consideration, Mandela ordered Mu Chen and Nine Nether to be the advanced team. As such, they would be leading the rest of the princes, rushing to the ancient celestial palace and collecting as much information as possible before the North Territory Alliance army reached it. Mu Chen was rather happy to be part of the advanced team. He was especially excited about the ancient celestial palace. As such, he figured that he might as well make his move to the location first and scout around. After all, it was far away from their North Territory. Moreover, being an upper earthly sovereign, Mandela might not know much about the place. Dalwotian, outside a transfer spiritual array. Mu Chen stood with his hands behind his back. Nine Nether was beside him. A white-robed old man, a middle-aged man, and a pretty woman stood respectfully behind the pair. The white-robed old man had a strong spiritual fluctuation around him. He was already a grade 8 sovereign. He was the new prince of the Dalwotian territory, commonly known as King Bai. King Bai was considered to be outstanding in regards to his strength. He also had a wealth of experience, as he had traveled far and wide throughout the Tianlo continent. This was also the reason why he chosen to be part of the team. The middle-aged man and the pretty woman were both grade 7 sovereigns. Their strengths were also impressive. Both of them had been visiting Nine Nether Palace diligently of late, and they were individual cultivators, who were lucky to have practiced up to their current stages. Hence, they had come to the Dalwotian territory looking for protection and more cultivation resources. As such, Nine Nether Palace, which had two appointed princes, had been the best choice for them. At first, Mu Chen was not concerned about their presence. After all, it had been Tang Bing, the majordomo, who had recommended them both to Mu Chen and Nine Nether. From what they could see, the pair were diligent and possessed strong personalities. Both also had great potential. Most importantly, they valued relationships highly, so they were not ungrateful. Tang Bing had been taking care of Nine Nether Palace all of these years. As such, she had outstanding judgment in regards to the people there. It was for this reason that Mu Chen and Nine Nether trusted her completely. Hence, when she vouched for the pair, they agreed to let the duo stay in Nine Nether Palace. This time, the pair was even allowed to follow them to the ancient celestial palace. Lord Mu, the transfer spiritual array is linked directly to another city outside of the Dalwotian territory. It would be fastest to leave the North Territory through a few more transfers from there, said the pretty woman, who was wearing a long red dress, which showed off her curvaceous body. She was only wearing a tiny bit of makeup, but she still looked gorgeous. Her name was Tan Chu, but she was known as Lord Chu in the Dalwotian continent. According to rumors, she had myriad pursuers among the princes. Okay, Mu Chen said. He then nodded and exchanged glances with Nine Nether. Let's go. As Nine Nether had no objections, they both stepped forward into the transfer spiritual array. As they did so, the spiritual lights flickered and their figures disappeared. After they disappeared, King Bai looked at the pretty woman and the middle-aged man. He then said, the dominator sent a message to us. Although the two lords are talented and skillful, they are still too young. We have been traveling for years, so we have more experience. Hence, we need to look after the two lords. If anything happens to them, we would surely be banished from the entire Dalwotian territory. Elder Bai, since the two lords have decided to let me stay, I'll repay them with my kindness for sure. Tan Chu gave a radiant smile. If anyone is going to try to hurt the two lords, they will need to kill me first. The burly middle-aged man said while pointing to his chest. He looked very serious. As this middle-aged man worked like a stone, with great force, everyone in the Dalwotian territory called him Lord Stone. King Bai nodded. He then brought the two of them into the transfer spiritual array. As the spiritual lights flickered, all of them disappeared in a flash. 
At the far edge of the western part of the Tianlo continent, the land was the most desolate. As such, it was not surprising that countless natural disasters occurred there. Hurricanes that could tear the mountains apart and snowstorms that could freeze thousands of miles ruled the land. Strange beasts with low intelligences also roamed the area. These beasts all had their own spiritual skill sets, which made it extremely difficult to kill them off. All of these dangers stopped most people from ever setting foot into this land. In fact, apart from those specifically hunting the strange beasts, as well as the treasure hunting groups, no one ever came. But, the situation had completely changed during this last half year. During this time, the space had burst open, and the ancient celestial palace, which was lying in the deepest area, had been revealed there. Specifically, it was the ancient celestial palace. The surfacing of the ancient celestial palace had ignited the passion of the entire Tianlo continent, making the desolate land exceedingly famous all of a sudden. Countless forces and top powers swarmed to the land like locusts, nearly turning the entire place into the most prosperous territory in the entire continent. As time passed, more top powers kept coming, the qualities of whom were also heightened. Without a doubt, the current land in the far west might have become the central district of the Tianlo continent, all because of the surfacing of the ancient celestial palace. And, it just so happened that it was also the current destination of Mu Chen's advanced team. The distance between North Territory and the land of Far West took up nearly half of the entire Tianlo continent. If Mu Chen were to fly this entire long distance, it would take him more than half a year. Luckily, there were many operable transfer spiritual arrays that he could avail himself of. Despite this, almost half a month passed before Mu Chen finally arrived to the land. Upon their arrival, Mu Chen and his team sat in a tea house within a small city on the outskirts of the land of the far west. The town was isolated initially, but now the place was filled with people. The crowd in the tea house was robust, each of them surging with spiritual energy. Each of them was apparently strong, judging by these energies. Lord Mu and Lord Nine Nether were closing in on the land of the far west. But, there are no more transfer spiritual arrays for us to use. So, we can only approach by the usual roads, said Tan Chu gently. She was sitting beside Mu Chen. Mu Chen nodded. The land of the far west was too desolated, so no other forces would want to spend their time and effort to build transfer spiritual arrays there. The good news was that they were not far away. Given their speed, they could reach their destination in just a few days. From the previous information received, there is the main city named the West City, which is situated at the border of the land. It is the largest city in the area, and it is currently where all of the talents and elites from all around the continent are gathering. There are also scouts there, who have been exploring around in the land, so we should be able to get some information about the ancient celestial palace from them, said King Bai respectfully. I even heard that some daring fellows snuck into the palace through some cracks, then obtained some treasures from it. They then attracted a lot of attention by auctioning them in the West City at a high price. King Bai's eyes brightened. Oh, Mu Chen's eyes flickered slightly after he heard this. These people really were willing to risk their lives. As the space was still distorted and messy at the ancient celestial palace's current location, if one did not pay attention, he would be sucked into the space cracks. Hence, it was unwise for anyone to venture in now. However, if they could obtain some items from the palace, they might be able to discover more clues, which would then give them more advantages upon entering the palace. After all, opportunities were always given to those who made the first move. It looks like we have to go to the West City, said Nine Nether with a nod. Mu Chen also nodded. The West City must have gathered numerous talents and elites from all over the Tianlo continent by now. This made him wonder if there would be someone rising from the young generation in the Tianlo continent. If so, he would like to meet that person. Let's go to the West City, Mu Chen said resolutely. Hesitating no more, he stood up and left the tea house, then beamed into a light and soared into the sky. Nine Nether and the rest followed him immediately. In the blink of an eye, all of them had disappeared into the sky. While Mu Chen and the clique were rushing towards the West City, 
another white-dressed young lady walked out from an inn in another city far away. She had slender, dark eyebrows and was very pretty, like a fairy. Her eyes were also enchanting, making her appear as though she was someone who had walked straight out of a painting. But, she did not seem to be aware of her fairy-like appearance. With the flick of her hand, she took out a rare spiritual fruit, which was exuding a daunting spiritual energy. While the people surrounding her stared at her with greedy looks, she gobbled it up in a few bites. She then wiped her jaded hands casually and lifted her pretty face, while thinking to herself. That fellow is in Tianlo continent, too. I wonder where he is now. I still owe him a favor. She tilted her head and pondered this a while. Then, she pouted her little red lips and walked out of the city, her hands behind her back. Chapter 1092. Chia Hong. West City was the main city that sat along the border of the land of the far west. Although it was said to be the main city, it was run down, and human traffic was sparse. Hence, the city almost fell apart. However, ever since the ancient celestial palace appeared in the land of the far west, the city had become vibrant again. Its prosperity and popularity were far beyond imagination. When Mu Chen and his clique hit one of the mountain peaks outside of West City, all they saw was the never-ending light figures blotting out the entire sky. The screeching of air-rending sounds never stopped for a single moment. Countless spiritual fluctuations rippled out from the huge city. Even from a far distance, one could sense the overwhelming spiritual aura within the world fluctuating as the spiritual energies gathered together. The ancient celestial palace's attraction cannot be undermined since it can turn an ordinary city into such a prosperous city, Mu Chen could not help but exclaim as he watched the scene. He could vaguely feel numerous concealed, yet dominant spiritual fluctuations hidden in this city that was full of spiritual energies. The people who possessed those spiritual fluctuations must have daunting strength such that he could not even overlook it. According to his estimation, the strength gathered in this city was already greater than the entire elite lineup from Daluo territory. Of course, this was only a comparison on the surface. If Mandela were to strike, she could reduce the entire city to rubble. Apparently, the daunting existence of an upper earthly sovereign was not present in the city. Let's go. Mu Chen and Nine Nether exchanged glances, and they darted out first. Bai Lao, Tan Chu, and Lord Stone followed suit immediately. The five of them beamed into lights, joining the non-stop light figures, and landed in the vast city. After entering the city, the clique found a wine house, and they took a rest there. Bai Lao and Tan Chu went around to scout for news while Lord Stone followed behind them like a loyal bodyguard. Mu Chen could not help but let out a sigh of admiration after seeing how they split their work. It was a wise decision to bring the three of them. Otherwise, he would be going around to collect information by himself. That would not be an easy task. With the experienced Bai Lao around, he and Nine Nether just had to wait for the delivery of the information. This saved him a lot of effort. In the wine house, it was loud. Mu Chen and Nine Nether were hearing various discussions amid the noise. Information was being passed around in this complicated place, too. I heard that someone struck again at the north side of the city. That person wore a green robe and held onto a golden spear. His combat ability was not weak. I think he is at the peak of grade 8 sovereign. Tisk. That's the golden saint spear, Lu Meng. He seemed to have come from the west region. And he is at the peak of grade 8 sovereign now at such a young age. During this period, he challenged other people non-stop, and many people lost to him. This person is talented, but I think he is still not as good as the green lotus swordsman who showed up a few days ago. From the look of it, he should be a half-step to grade 9 sovereign. He he, he slashed all the arms off four grade 8 sovereigns in one go. That's formidable. And half a month ago, Mu Chen was listening to the pieces of information passing through non-stop. He was a little stunned himself. The current land of the far west really gathered uncountable elites from the Tianlo continent. These characters were mostly the top-notch figures in the young generation from everywhere else, and now they were sprouting out everywhere here. One could not help but exclaim. 
Rumble. As Mu Chen was stunned by the hidden dragons and the crouching tigers in this west city, a clap of thunder rumbled in the sky above. A flash of lightning came sweeping after. Within the blink of an eye, something appeared in the sky. People in the city immediately cast glances at it. Soon, countless exclamations resounded everywhere. Mu Chen took a look at the sky, and he was slightly dumbfounded. He pursed his lips the moment he saw a golden and resplendent carriage amid the lightning. Golden dragon runes were engraved on the wagon. Impregnable spiritual energy fluctuations exuded from it. The carriage itself was actually a divine artifact. However, the most attractive thing was not the carriage itself. It was the four massive silver beasts that resembled horses come lions. Thunder lights flickered under their feet as though they were riding on a thunderbolt. They were the thunder lion spiritual beasts, rumored to have the bloodline of a divine beast. When they eventually grew up, they would evolve into real divine beasts. No one could have thought that they would be used to drive a carriage. Such a lineup was incredibly luxurious. Who is it with such glorious splendor? Nine Nether frowned at the scene. Apparently, she was unhappy about someone treating divine beasts like livestock. Mu Chen also shook his head. He leaned forward and listened. Admiration and envious voices immediately spread around the wine house. That's really luxurious. Look at the runes on the golden carriage. It must be someone from the Great Chia Dynasty in the East Region. Tisk tisk. The Great Chia Dynasty is the overlord of the East Region. Who would have thought they would be here? I guess it must be one of the princes in the carriage. Hey hey. Seemed like there was some female laughter coming from the carriage. Looks like this person is fond of such things. Among the royals in the Great Chia Dynasty, no one other than the fourth Prince Chia Hong would be such a show-off and favor a carriage like this. Oh, the fourth prince, Chia Hong. Are you saying the Chia Hong, who ranked 20th on the chart of those young generations in Tianlo continent? Of course, it's him. I heard that Chia Hong just became a grade 9. He usually acts creepily and strangely. He practices plundering the vital energies of his partners during sex to speed up his cultivation progress. Mu Chen and Nine Nether squinted slightly when they heard the discussions from the wine house. This person was the fourth prince from the Great Chia Dynasty. No wonder he was such a show-off. The Great Chia Dynasty ruled the entire East region with domineering strength and a strong foundation. They could afford such extravagances. The Great Chia Dynasty is indeed formidable. Mu Chen let out a sigh of admiration. Compared to the North Territory, which experienced constant disputes, the East region was much more peaceful. That could be the biggest reason why the Great Chia Dynasty could sit and hold the region in awe like a fearsome tiger. Nine Nether also nodded. Just when she was about to speak, her attention was drawn by another voice in the wine house. Although Chia Hong is not bad, he is still far from the crown prince of the Great Chia Dynasty. He he, that goes without saying. The crown prince ranks fourth on the chart. That's much stronger than Chia Hong exclaimed a voice full of tremendous admiration for the crown prince of the great Chia dynasty. Both Mu Chen and Nine Nether were slightly shocked when they heard this. Their expressions turned solemn immediately knowing the crown prince was that formidable. Ranking fourth on the chart meant he was not far from Garuda. Never underestimate the great Chia dynasty, indeed. The Tianlo continent was definitely a supercontinent with supreme talents rising from everywhere. While everyone in the wine house, including Mu Chen, was stunned by the strength of the great Chia dynasty, a restless figure got out of the golden carriage in the sky. He was hugging and holding onto beautiful ladies by his side. When the figure walked out, he attracted a lot of attention. Wearing a long golden robe, he was giving off a sense of prestige from head to toe. The handsome face was somewhat fair. The smile at the corner of his lips was sinister, but that made his charm unique, too. Apparently, this person was Chia Hong, the fourth prince of the great Chia dynasty. Chia Hong looked down from a commanding height. He was looking below casually, like an emperor making an inspection tour. It was his nature to be sensitive to beautiful ladies around him. Hence, he spotted Nine Nether who was sitting with Mu Chen. Nine Nether was in her usual black dress. 
With a slender figure and sexy silhouette, her features were as beautiful and delicate as usual. She was usually cool. Hence, she exuded a cold and pretty disposition. On top of this, her nobility triggered by the waking of her undying bird bloodline gave her an extraordinary vibe. Consequently, when Chia Hong swept his gaze on Nine Nether, his eyes brightened up immediately. However, before he could do more, Nine Nether sensed it. Her pretty face turned cold immediately, and she threw him an icy glare. Chia Hong had a slight change in his expression as he could sense some threat in it. Interesting. Chia Hong gave a casual laugh. He did not expect that the unknown beauty would have such a daunting ability, and she did not seem to be any weaker than he was. It looked like it was quite a fruitful trip this time. Chia Hong flickered his eyes, but he did not lower himself to the ground. He gave a nod and a smile to Nine Nether from afar. He had some manners, after all, but apparently, he totally disregarded Mu Chen. Nine Nether continued putting up a cold face in response to his actions. Cold radiance even gathered in her pretty eyes. She looked like she was going to strike at this fellow who was feeling good about himself. However, just when she could hardly control herself, Mu Chen stretched out his hand suddenly and patted her clenching fist. He smiled and said to her, Looks like you have great charm. You're getting attention now that you're here. Nine Nether rolled her eyes at his teasing. Her expression was much gentler than her previous cold look. For a moment, she displayed a rare feminine look. Chia Hong also saw Mu Chen's actions and the gentle expression on Nine Nether's face from his golden carriage in the sky. The long and narrow eyes squinted for a moment. Then, he cast a sharp-looking glare at the young man whom he had ignored previously. Mu Chen even looked younger than he was. Sensing Chia Hong's gaze, Mu Chen smiled and lifted his head. The pitch black eyes looked at Chia Hong, undaunted. Within the noisy city, the two exchanged gazes. Coldness seemed to linger around quietly. Chapter 1093 Token Amulet. Mu Chen and Chia Hong exchanged gazes within the boisterous city. Coldness seemed to be surging throughout the space and the spiritual energy that was surrounding him appeared to be fluctuating slightly. Chia Hong faintly smiled at Mu Chen, yet the smile had no warmth. Mu Chen returned a smile, his face calm. Hey, the ancient celestial palace has really attracted tons of weird beings. Chia Hong squinted his eyes slightly, obviously meaning Mu Chen. He could tell that Mu Chen's strength was not even that of a true grade 9 sovereign yet. Even so, Mu Chen clearly had neither respect nor fear of him, which made him very unhappy. Although Chia Hong was assured of his strength above Mu Chen, he still had his reservations. Hence, he did not make things difficult for Mu Chen on the spot. After all, given their strengths, Mu Chen and Nine Nether must have some powerful backing. So, if he was rash and picked a fight with him, he might get himself in big trouble. His eyes flickered and he retracted his gaze. Chia Hong then decided to get someone to check up on them. If they were nobodies, he could then make his move. The moment he thought of this, Chia Hong smiled widely. He looked deeply at Mu Chen and Nine Nether again, then swung his sleeves. As he did so, the Thunder Lion spiritual beast gave a roar and transformed into a thunder light. It then dragged the golden wagon and charged towards the other side of the city. This fellow has an annoying look in his eyes. Nine Nether frowned, as she watched Chia Hong depart. Nine Nether had very acute senses. Even though Chia Hong hid himself well, she could sense his filthy thoughts towards her always. If it were not for Chia Hong's strong backing, she would not have let him escape. Mu Chen nodded slightly, then said, Take note of this person. If he is up to no good, we will make him pay. I don't care if he is the prince of great Chia dynasty. If Chia Hong decided to lay his hands on Nine Nether, which they both knew was in his dirty mind, Mu Chen would not even think twice about punishing him. After all, Mu Chen had made numerous enemies over the years, so one more was of no consequence. Mu Chen and Nine Nether then decided to change the topic. Not long after that, another violent spiritual energy fluctuation came from the sky in the distance. 
The people in the city then witnessed a few light figures flitting over. All of these figures were accompanied by massive and violent spiritual energy fluctuations. Apparently, all of them were quite strong. When each of the figures arrived, the people of the city would roar with various exclamations. That's the young pavilion master, Mu Shan, from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion. I heard his ranking was around 20 on the chart of the Tianlo continent's young top powers. When he heard the hubbub, Mu Chen turned to see what was happening. At that moment, he saw a massive dragon roaring above in the sky. This dragon was from a strange species, but it obviously had a dragon clan bloodline. As such, although it was not from a pure bloodline, it could still evolve into a real divine beast. At this time, a man stood on the head of the dragon. His robe was blown up by the wind, and his surrounding spiritual energy caused the entire space to vibrate. The man then rode the dragon straight into the West City. That is Jiang Lin from the Sword Deity Sect. I heard that he went into secluded training for three years in the Sword Tomb. Then, he finally had a breakthrough and moved up to Grade 9 Sovereign. After the appearance of Mu Shan, another green-robed man flew into the West City. Even Miss Chin Ya from House Tianya is here. House Tianya specializes in selling information. They have the most updated information, so if she is here personally, it must mean something big is going to happen in the West City. Another lady, who was dressed in red, had just showed up. She was demure and sweet-looking, yet she had a very hot body. She also had an attractive and flirtatious expression on her face. Moreover, she concealed her spiritual energy fluctuation. Hence, she gave off a mysterious and secretive vibe as well. Shu, Shu, a wind-breaking sound in the sky was heard, while the figures continued sweeping in from afar. Some of these figures were slightly renowned in the Tianlo continent. With such an influx of famed figures, the West City was suddenly filled with excitement. Meanwhile, back in the wine house, Mu Chen and Nine Nether watched as the figures appeared. They also overheard the exclamations of the crowd. Their expressions turned solemn, as they both felt that something big was going to happen soon. After all, the various forces in the Tianlo continent were eyeing the land of the far west. And while those earthly sovereign top powers did not dare enter it recklessly, as the interior space had yet to stabilize, they had sent their outstanding young generations to collect information on the ancient celestial palace. Looks like we're in the right place, said Nine Nether. She then turned to look at Mu Chen with a smile. Although she did not know why these people were gathering here, she knew that it must have something to do with the ancient celestial palace. Let's wait for Bai Lao and the rest to return. I'm sure he will have some updates for us. Mu Chen nodded. Mu Chen and Nine Nether did not have to wait for very long, as Bai Lao and Tan Chu came back just two hours later. I believe you've noticed the gathering of the various supreme talents in the West City, right? Bai Lao was smiling. Mu Chen nodded and asked, Did you both find out why they came here? Tan Chu, who was standing by the side, smiled and said, Yes, we heard that there was a team that went deep into the land of the far west via a space crack. However, half of the team died. It was the surviving half that just got back today. Did they get anything in return for their troubles? Mu Chen's eyes suddenly lit up. Tan Chu nodded gently. Yes, we heard that one of the items was quite unique. The team said that a spiritual energy windstorm was triggered in the palace when they chanced upon it. More than a dozen of their teammates got squashed into a pool of blood by that windstorm. Most likely, that item that they spoke of was an important thing from the ancient celestial palace. What is it, then? Mu Chen asked. I heard it was a token amulet, said Bai Lao. A token amulet. Mu Chen repeated the words, then turned to meet Nine Nether's gaze. The expression in their eyes turned solemn. In such an ancient relic, Things like token amulets were the most attractive items, as they might be able to unlock something, thus giving him an advantage over others. Also, that token amulet had the ancient word, second, inscribed on it, Tan Chu added. Second, Mu Chen was slightly shocked to hear this. Mandela had said that there were five hallmasters in the ancient celestial palace. The one they met in the big hunting war was the fourth hallmaster. 
Did this so-called second token amulet belong to the second hall master of the palace? Mu Chen looked at Nine Nether, who nodded at him gently. Apparently, they were both thinking the same thing. All of these supreme talents from various forces are most likely here for this, Mu Chen said slowly. But, how do we get it? asked Nine Nether. She had no idea how she could use the token amulet yet, but she did know that it would be good to obtain it if possible. After all, it would be beneficial to them after they entered the palace. Bai Lao smiled and replied, the most proper way would be the auction, where whoever bids the highest price will get it. Mu Chen nodded. In this situation, where everyone was wary of each other, there was no fairer way than this method. What should we do now? Tan Chu asked gently. Mu Chen and Nine Nether exchanged gazes and smiled at the same time. Mu Chen then answered, since we are here, we cannot just watch and do nothing. Let's poke our noses into this tomorrow. If we can keep the token amulet to ourselves, that would be the ideal situation. Bai Lao, Tan Chu, and Lord Stone all nodded in agreement to this plan. Mu Chen then stood up with Nine Nether and walked out of the wine house. As he turned his head in the direction of the central west city, dark clouds were spreading over the area, as if a downpour was fast approaching. Chapter 1094. The Auction. At the break of dawn the next day, West City was already in a state of excitement. All the immediate attention was drawn towards it after the supreme talents from various places gathered there. It was even more so, especially when the news about the mysterious token amulet got around in the city yesterday. All the various top powers who came for the ancient celestial palace relic gathered there in the land of the far west. However, the space in this land was somewhat unstable, and as such, no one dared to barge in without a plan. Instead, they were all secretly waiting for a chance. Hence, everyone felt excited about the sudden news of the mysterious token amulet. Most of the people knew that those powerful forces would have been eyeing the token amulet, and they would be powerless to fight with him, yet everyone clung on to the slightest hope. What if they had a chance to obtain it? That opportunity would allow him to rise above others and become the most famous person in the entire Tianlo continent. They would shine and attract all the attention. With such a mindset, numerous air-rending sounds resounded in West City the next day. An overwhelming number of light figures swarmed to the center of the city. There was an ancient auction venue situated at the city's center. It had been vacant for many years, but today, it was put to use again. The popularity was not any weaker as compared to those auctions held at the other main cities in the Tianlo continent. The interior of the auction house was divided into three levels. Those normal seating areas were at the lowest level while the higher levels would have a better view. The higher seating areas were also more luxurious and comfortable in comparison. At the same time, they could have a bird's eye view of the entire auction house. At this point in time, Mu Chen, Nine Nether, and the rest were already seated on the third level. He patted the cushion made from the ice fiery mink fur he was sitting on. It was so comfortable that when one sat on it, one's entire rear end seemed to sink into it. All these accessories were prepared by Tan Chu. Mu Chen could not help but sing praises in his heart. It was more comfortable compared to roaming outside by himself and having someone taking care of him. If it were only him alone, he would not think of such details. Mu Chen asked casually, who organized this auction? Was it those people who showed up yesterday? If one of those people had organized the auction, then it would be best to stay cautious. Bai Lao quickly answered, the organizer is from a local force. Their strength is just so-so, unlike those top-notch forces such as the great Chia dynasty. He he, no one wanted any parties to host the auction to avoid unfairness. Hence, they voted one of the local forces to host it to have peace of mind. Mu Chen then nodded gently. The atmosphere in the auction house lifted suddenly while Mu Chen and Bai Lao were having their conversation. Mu Chen swept his gaze across and saw a few groups of people making their way in through the entrance of the auction house. These people had outstanding stances. Four people were leading slowly at the front with magnificent dispositions. Those were the four people who stirred up a commotion yesterday in West City. 
They were Chia Hong, the fourth prince from the Great Chia Dynasty, Mu Shan from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, Jiang Lin from the Sword Deity Sect, and Miss Qin Ya from House Tianya. Those four people were the supreme talents from the young generation of the Tianlo continent. They were all ranked on the young top powers chart. The moment they showed up, they drew much attention and exclamations. Hey hey, dear all, the great Chia dynasty is getting that token amulet for sure. If you all can let us have it, we'll remember your gratitude. Chia Hong looked at the numerous figures within the huge auction house. He then turned around and smiled at the other three people beside him. After hearing what he said, Mu Shan, the young hall master from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, laughed and said, Why don't I give you five million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid, and you give up the auction? The Hidden Dragon Pavilion will also remember your kindness. The mockery in his laughter was unconcealed. Although the great Chia dynasty was the overlord in the East region, it was still incomparable to the Hidden Dragon Pavilion. Hence, he was not afraid of Chia Hong at all. Miss Chin Ya from House Tianya covered her red lips elegantly while she giggled. She was watching the two of them bickering with a smile. As for Jiang Lin from the Sword Deity Sect, he was holding onto his long, sharp sword as though he had not heard the conversations between Chia Hong and Mu Shan. There was no expression on his face. Chia Hong put on a smiling face and looked at Mu Shan. If this is so, I hope young pavilion master Mu brought enough sovereign spiritual liquid today. With a pause in his words, he decided not to carry on with Mu Shan. He turned around to Miss Chin Ya who was wearing a red dress. She was sweet looking, but her big round eyes were gleaming. They were displaying a slightly coquettish vibe. Chia Hong smiled at her and said, Miss Chin Ya, do you want to join me to watch the auction? He he, we'll be rivals later. I don't think it's appropriate to be together in the same place. Chin Ya smiled and politely declined his request. She then made her move up elegantly. Chia Hong did not mind too much about her declining his offer. He lifted his head and watched the curvaceous and sexy body of hers. A fire seemed to be bursting in his eyes, but Chia Hong quickly returned to a normal state. He smiled and followed her. Halfway up the stairs, Chia Hong suddenly felt the pause in Chin Ya's movement. He lifted up his head and saw that she was looking in the other direction with a slightly stunned expression. Chia Hong followed her gaze. Both eyes were then slightly squinted. The ones whom he saw yesterday, Mu Chen and Nai Nether, were sitting there. What's wrong? Does Miss Chin Ya know them? Chia Hong asked in a low voice. House Tianya had much information. Miss Chin Ya would know best when it came to those unknown top powers. Chin Ya paused for a while before she smiled and said, If my guess is correct, both of them come from Daluo territory, North Territory. I heard that there were two newly crowned kings lately, King Mu and King Nai Nether. I think it's referring to them. North Territory, Daluo Territory, they really don't know their limits. Chia Hong was a little stunned, but his lips immediately drew up into a mocking smile. The North Territory was considered to be a remote area in the Tianlo continent. Moreover, the North Territory was always involved in endless disputes. There was no overlord like the great Chia dynasty in Daluo territory. Hence, they were not well known at all. Chia Hong thought at first that they had a strong backing since the young fellow did not seem polite to him at all. It turned out to be only somebody from Daluo territory. Chin Ya spotted the mockery in his expression. With a flicker in her beautiful eyes, she could sense that there might be something going on between Chia Hong and the two new kings from Daluo territory. However, it was evident that Chia Hong did not know about the emergence of Daluo territory, even though there was no overlord in the North Territory. They might not be as strong as the great Chia dynasty, but the dominator of Daluo territory was already an upper earthly sovereign. She was on par with Emperor Chia from the great Chia dynasty. If Chia Hong really did something to the two new kings, the dominator of Daluo territory would not let him off easily. Until then, even Emperor Chia would be in deep trouble. Perhaps it was not a bad idea for the great Chia dynasty to have another enemy. With all these thoughts, Chin Ya walked up the stairs with a smile and found herself a seat on the other side of the auction house. 
Chia Hong, Mu Shan, and the rest also found other seats with a broad view of the entire auction house. Their maids were serving diligently by their sides. Mu Chen had been staring at those people who were at the center of the attraction. He also saw Chia Hong and Qin Ya whispering to one another, and the former displayed a mocking look. He pondered for a while and seemed to understand something. Mu Chen laughed and said, Looks like someone looked down on me. This is not the North Territory. No one will know about your fame. Nine Nether, who was beside him, teased him, too. What fame do I have? Mu Chen shook his head helplessly. He paused for a while before he continued saying, but if anyone thinks I'm a pushover, they might hurt themselves. His tone was not harsh, yet his voice was calm and firm with self-assurance in it. All these years, he had made his way up from the newly condensed sovereign celestial body in the Northern Heaven Spiritual Academy to becoming a half-step grade 9 today. He had met too many formidable opponents, but he was still standing firm at the end. Hence, Mu Chen had confidence when he faced an opponent of the same level as he was. It was fine if Chia Hong behaved himself. However, if he decided to be up to no good, Mu Chen would not mind making him understand that he would pay a terribly high price for being too arrogant. After Mu Chen finished his sentence, he tilted his head and saw Nine Nether staring at him. He touched his face suspiciously. What is it? Nine Nether was looking at Mu Chen who was displaying strong belief in himself. She sang praises in her heart. The current Mu Chen was no longer the greenhorn from back then. He had lot more confidence as compared to before. He had grown up during these few years. Dong. While Nine Nether's attention was slightly diverted, a bell rang in the huge auction house. The sound of the bell consumed the various loud noises within the auction house. Countless people gradually went quiet. They watched with fires burning in their eyes as a middle-aged man climbed up the stairs to the center of the building. I'm Han Fei from the Cold West sect. Glad to see all of you here. I'll be hosting the auction for everyone this time. As soon as Han Fei stopped, he waved his hands. A few young ladies in chiffon dresses held a silver tray upon their jaded hands. They walked up elegantly and slowly. There was a spiritual energy light shield over the silver tray isolating the spiritual energy fluctuation in it. Countless gazers stared at the silver tray with passionate fires in it. Han Fei smiled when he saw it. Since everyone cannot wait, I'll declare that the auction of the palace item opens now. Chapter 1095, Nine Dragon Devouring Fairy Array. The sea of people gathered within the auction venue. The number of people was huge, but a respectful silence was still observed. All of the people were staring at the stairway with passionate eyes. To be more precise, they were staring at the silver trays in the hands of the four beauties. Spiritual energy runes were flashing on the trays, forming a light shield to isolate the spiritual energy fluctuation. This way, no one could sense it. The middle-aged man, Han Fei, looked at their passionate eyes and smiled. He then said, this is not a large-scale auction. However, these four items from the ancient celestial palace relics were carefully chosen for today. Now, we'll begin with the first item. Han Fei swung his sleeves, and a young girl walked up with the tray. The spiritual light was glowing upon the tray. After the radiant glow slowly dissipated, the item finally revealed itself. Numerous top powers cast their curious glances over it. It was a black pearl stone, with mottled traces, and an ancient aura exuded vaguely from within it, giving it a very mysterious and secretive vibe. Mu Chen also stared hard at that black pearl stone, his eyes squinted in concentration. Then, a slit suddenly opened between his eyebrows, allowing him to observe the massive spiritual energy that was hidden within the pearl stone. What's that? asked Nine Nether. The pearl stone looked extremely ordinary to her. It's a quasi-divine artifact and it's pretty powerful. The slit between Mu Chen's brows disappeared as he was answering her. Using the scanning power of his exterminating eye, Mu Chen was able to sense the massive power that was hidden within the pearl stone. The power was quite extraordinary among the quasi-divine artifacts. In fact, it might even rival his exterminating eye. Mu Chen could not help but be amazed. 
as the ancient celestial palace was indeed an outstanding place. While Mu Chen was singing its praises to himself, a commotion began stirring up in the attic. Although the majority of the people could not identify the power of this mysterious pearl stone, some still had the special ability to scan it. Hence, whisperings started spreading among the people. Eventually, the crowd became unsettled. Hey hey, everyone, this thing is named the Shattering Sea Pearl. It was rumored that only those elites, who had made great contributions, could be rewarded with this item. It's a quasi-divine artifact, after all. Plus, it has the power to divide the sea. As such, even a grade 9 sovereign could not underestimate it, said Han Fei, speaking from the stage. The moment he spoke, the unsettled crowd grew even more excited. Countless pairs of passionate eyes were staring at the quasi-divine artifact, as this item was a rarity. Moreover, the shattering sea pearl was more powerful than any other quasi-divine artifact. The bid for this item starts at 10 million units of sovereign spiritual liquid. Each bid should be no less than 1 million. Interested parties can start bidding now, Han Fei smiled and said. Once the 10 million price tag was announced, the crowd quieted down. After all, this amount was rather huge. If one had no backing from a top-notch force, no individual could afford such an amount of sovereign spiritual liquid. Even if they did have backing, most of the people would want to keep it for that support for the use of self-cultivation, as sovereign spiritual liquid was an essential item during the cultivation process. This was because the speed of cultivation would be affected by any shortage of sovereign spiritual liquid. Even though most of the people shied away from the pricey bid, tons of top powers and supreme talents from various places were gathered in the West City, all of whom were well prepared to pay such a high price. 11 million. A white-robed man yelled from the second level of the attic. His yell immediately drew jealous gazers and launched more whispering among the crowd. That's the young pavilion master from the Golden Jade Pavilion. I heard he's now in the peak of grade 7 sovereign. He's so generous. I could sure use that to break through to grade 7 or 8 sovereign. The white-robed man was fanning his jade folding fan, while he looked at the envious gazes of the people. He was acting pretentiously, yet wore a vague, humble smile. Then, another yell pierced the air, 12 million. The white-robed man seemed stunned and turned around. A middle-aged man with a hideous scar across his face was sitting in a corner. Apparently, he was another formidable character, as a wolf-like, ruthless radiance could be seen blinking in his eyes. Isn't that the leader of the celestial wolf lair in the northwest? I'm surprised that he's here. An onlooker asked. The crowd was full of excitement. Mu Chen was also watching the auction like a spectator, not a bidder. Although the shattering sea pearl was tempting, he did not want to participate in the auction. After all, he had the exterminating eye, and its power was no weaker than the pearls. Hence, there was no need for him to vie for it, especially for that price. Even though Nine Nether Palace was much wealthier than it had been before, Tang Bing would still be furious if he just threw away such a great amount of sovereign spiritual liquid. In the blink of an eye, the price tag of the shattering sea pearl quickly rose to 14 million. At this point, even the young pavilion master of the Golden Jade Pavilion and the leader of the Celestial Wolf Lair could barely afford the price. They both realized this and looked hesitant. 16 million. While the two were hesitating, their expressions changed when they heard the lazy voice make its bid. They immediately lifted their heads and saw a laid-back look on the face of Chia Hong the fourth prince of great Chia dynasty. When they saw Chia Hong, both of them continued to hesitate for a while, then they both finally sat down and gave up reluctantly. After all, they could not afford to mess with the great Chia dynasty, who were obviously much more wealthy. After casting an indifferent glance at him, Chia Hong looked away and asked emotionlessly, is there anyone offering a higher price? Mockery filled his voice. Even though his attitude provoked some of the top powers, none of them made any sound, as 16 million in sovereign spiritual liquid was equal to an entire year's income for some of them. Han Fei watched as the crowd grew silent. He then gave a smile and said, since no one else is bidding, the shattering sea pearl will go to the fourth prince. 
He clapped his hands gently, and the young lady with the tray took the shattering sea pearl and disappeared behind the stage. At the same time, a second young girl walked up. Everyone sighed with regret, while watching the shattering sea pearl be carried away. They turned their attention to the second silver tray. The rest of the top powers were rubbing their palms. If the next item was something of interest, they were ready to vie for it. Han Fei did not stall for too long, as he could feel the excitement in the air. He swung his sleeves and the spiritual glow dissipated, revealing the item on the second silver tray. Mu Chen took a look at it from his lofty perch. His eyes and face showed some interest immediately. The second item was an ancient bronze scroll, which was a little torn up. But, there was a vague yet unique fluctuation coming from it. Mu Chen determined that this must be a scroll from the spiritual diagram array, meaning that it was at least at the heavenly grade level. While Mu Chen was filled with interest, disappointed sounds were heard among the crowd. This was because the spiritual diagram array was only useful when it was in the hands of a spiritual array master. Apparently, the spiritual array masters present were few and far between. Everyone, this scroll is called the Nine Dragon Devouring Fairy Array. It is known to be of an ancestral master rank, Han Fei quickly said, since he had immediately noticed the lack of interest from the crowd. Everyone was astonished after Han Fei said this, as they knew that a spiritual array ancestral master was the equivalent to an earthly sovereign. Thus, if a spiritual array were ranked at the ancestral master level, it would mean that it possessed a power similar to an earthly sovereign's. A spiritual array of such an impressive level had never existed among the top-notch forces in the Tianlo continent. Everyone had to wonder how one could possibly be here. Mu Chen was also a little stunned, frowning immediately. Given Mu Chen's sharp eyes, he could tell that the bronze scroll did exude a special fluctuation, but it did not seem to be at the ancestral master rank yet. Did you say that it was a spiritual diagram array of ancestral master rank? After much observation, one of those spectators with sharp eyes finally voiced his doubt. Han Fei coughed with a little embarrassment and said, Indeed, if this was a complete nine dragon devouring fairy array, then it would definitely be a spiritual diagram array of ancestral master rank. Do you mean to say that this is an incomplete nine dragon devouring fairy array? The spectator was rather smart to have understood what Han Fei truly meant. Han Fei gave a hollow laugh. This diagram array is indeed incomplete. However, if anyone can display this array successfully, even the top powers at the peak of grade 9 sovereign would be in a sorry plight when facing you. Boo! The crowd booed him mercilessly after hearing the truth, and most of the people shook their heads. They were not spiritual array masters so they had no interest in spending a considerable amount of sovereign spiritual liquid for a useless torn scroll. Han Fei had no choice but to immediately continue the auction. Then, we shall begin auctioning our second item, the Nine Dragon Devouring Fairy Array. The bidding starts at 5 million. This amount of sovereign spiritual liquid was much cheaper than the Shattering Sea Pearl, but surprisingly, no one bid. Some of the people, who looked like spiritual array masters, were considering it, but no one knew if they could successfully comprehend the secret of this incomplete diagram array. If they failed to comprehend it, it would be useless. With such thinking, the crowd was turned off immediately. Han Fei could not help but shake his head. He did know that it would be so difficult to auction off these four items. Hence, after he pondered for a while, he was about to make another speech to pique the interest of the spiritual array masters. However, before he could do so, a voice was suddenly heard in the vast attic. Six million, the mystery voice shouted. Han Fei was slightly stunned. He lifted his head and saw a young man with dark eyes, looking back at him from the third story, a wide grin on his face. Chapter 1096, The Competition. A calm voice resonated from within the loft. Six million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Shocked gazers scanned the crowd for the source and finally fixed themselves on a black-eyed youth three floors above them. Who is this person? Could he be a failed spiritual array master auctioning his spiritual array map? I don't know. Currently, many supreme talents of the Tianlo continent have gathered in the far west. I can't recognize them all, 
but he looks very unfamiliar, so he shouldn't be among the cream of the crop of Tianlo continent's younger generation. But the spiritual energy fluctuations around him are a half-step to grade 9 sovereign, which is considered extraordinary among the younger generation. The sound of many curious voices filled the pavilion. They clearly did not know who Mu Chen was. Similarly, above the loft, several gazes were fixed on Mu Chen, one of them belonging to Chia Hong, the fourth prince. He narrowed his fox-like gaze slightly, and scanned Mu Chen coldly with a glint in his eyes. At the balcony, after a glance at Mu Chen, Han Fei turned his gaze to the crowd with a smile and asked, Ha ha, this friend is offering six million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Will anyone else bid? The crowd was silent, but there were other spiritual array masters present who were also very interested in the nine dragon devouring fairy array, so after a brief silence, one of them spoke up. Six million and five hundred thousand. A long-haired man stood. He was wearing a broad, remarkable-looking robe decorated with many glowing spiritual symbols. That is Mabai, a disciple of the Celestial Array sect. Rumor has it that he is a spiritual array grandmaster who can perform the heavenly grade middle rank spiritual array. He is indeed extraordinary. The loft was filled with discerning people who could immediately identify the man, and cries of surprise rose thereafter. The long-haired man called Mabai was extremely amiable. He greeted Mu Chen with a smile and clasped hands. Mu Chen returned his friendly smile. While the man's modesty left him with a good impression, he nonetheless didn't plan to give up on this highly interesting ancient scroll, and he immediately raised his price. Seven million. Mabai was taken aback, but he immediately recovered his smile. Eight million. Both of them were obviously very interested in the ancient array scroll. This object was useless to ordinary men, but to spiritual array masters like them, the object was a treasure. Even if they failed to master the array, they could still learn a lot from it, thereby enriching their own spiritual array attainments. The competition between the two gradually heated up, attracting everyone's attention. However, they could tell that the atmosphere between the two was very amiable, and there were no hostile sparks between them despite the continuously increasing bids. Both were unwilling to give up, and their competition attracted other spiritual array masters to bid as well. After a while, the price of the ancient scroll had already increased to 11 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Such a figure was almost equivalent to the price of the previous quasi-divine artifact. Fewer and fewer people were bidding, so it returned to a competition between Mu Chen and Mabai. Mu Chen calmly placed his bid. 12 million. This figure was not a small sum. Although times had changed for Nine Nether Palace, 12 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid was still a painful sum. If Mandela had not contributed most of the sovereign spiritual liquid, he would have had no choice but to admit defeat by now. The loft was in an uproar over the price of 12 million. They clearly did not expect that the competition for the ancient scroll would go to such an extent. Mabai's gaze turned serious. He hesitated. After all, 12 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid was pretty much his income for the whole year. Mabai mulled over the matter, and finally, with an internal sigh and an impatient shake of his head, was about to sit down and give up on his contest with Mu Chen. Sensing that Mabai was about to surrender, Mu Chen quietly heaved a sigh of relief. Had the opposing party persisted, he would have had no choice but to capitulate within the next few rounds. However, just as Mu Chen was heaving a sigh of relief over Mabai's surrender, an impassive voice rang out abruptly, causing a commotion within the loft. Fourteen million. Countless gazes jerked upwards, locking onto the direction of the voice, and they immediately began to look excited. On the third floor of the pavilion, the fourth prince of the great Chia dynasty, Chia Hong, was toying with a black stone pearl with an expressionless look on his face. The black stone pearl was clearly the broken sea pearl he had won the bid for previously, and once he had gotten the stone pearl at such a high price, he had stared at it without looking at anything else, oblivious to the strange looks being thrown his way. He had not even looked at Mu Chen once despite having disrupted Mu Chen's flow. It was as if Mu Chen was not even worthy of his notice. His attitude shocked many masters in the loft. 
He and Mu Chen clearly had a past together. This bastard. Nine Nether's beautiful eyes were furious and steely cold. Chia Hong was clearly against Mu Chen. He obviously did not want Mu Chen to get what he wanted too easily. Compared to Nine Nether's fury, Mu Chen's expression was calm. He had clearly already predicted the worst case scenario, and he merely looked at Chia Hong calmly, then smiled and said, 15 million. The stone pearl in Chia Hong's hand rolled slightly, and without raising his head, he said, 16 million. The pavilion was in an uproar. If the previous contest between Mu Chen and Mabai had been considered friendly, then this contest between Mu Chen and Chia Hong was carnage. Wearing a cold expression, Nine Nether clenched her jade-like hands, and a scary spiritual energy fluctuation surrounded her like an aura. Behind her, Bai Lao, Shi Wang, and Tan Chu were wearing similarly bleak expressions. 17 million. Mu Chen's tone remained calm, and his face, expressionless. The figure he gave shocked the entire crowd, and even the revolving black pearl in Chia Hong's hand paused. He raised his head, finally looking at Mu Chen, and with a thoughtful expression, said, Our friend is indeed wealthy and overbearing. If that's the case, I'll concede today and stop contesting for the ancient scroll. The people listening smacked their lips. They could clearly tell that Chia Hong had no interest in the scroll and merely raised the price so that Mu Chen would have to pay more. Indeed, his plan worked well, since he got Mu Chen to pay 5 million more drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Many thanks to the fourth prince. Then, Mu Chen was seemingly indifferent towards the sympathizing gazes of the crowd, and he even smiled at Chia Hong, saying, I do hope the fourth prince will not regret letting me have it later on, or this 10 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid will seem a small price to pay. Mu Chen's words raised eyebrows. The masters in the crowd clearly thought he was being arrogant. Chia Hong's eyes narrowed slightly, and he felt a little uneasy, but he quickly pushed down that tiny niggling feeling. Even with this ancient scroll, what could a fellow who was a mere half-grade nine do to him? When the great Chia dynasty's army arrived, this fellow could be crushed to death at any time. So he merely chuckled, and the edges of his lips curled in contempt. If that's the case, I'll be waiting, so don't disappoint me. Mu Chen merely smiled without saying anything, letting him have the last word. What an annoying fellow, Nine Nether said coldly. While five million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid wasn't a small amount, what really made her furious was Chia Hong's underhanded tactic. Does he really think our Daluo territory is a pushover? Tan Chu was also enraged. Daluo territory was not like before, and while their foundations were lacking compared to the Great Chia Dynasty, in a fight, the Great Chia Dynasty would not have the upper hand, either. Faced with their fury, Mu Chen just waved his hand dismissively and smiled. No big deal. As I said, there will come a day when the fourth prince regrets allowing me to have the ancient scroll. He spoke with confidence, as he could vaguely sense that the nine dragon devouring fairy array was extraordinary, and if he managed to comprehend it, its value would be incomparable to over 10 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Mu Chen's confidence made Nine Nether and the rest heave a sigh of relief. While they weren't too clear about the potential of the Nine Dragon Celestial Devourer Array, Mu Chen's words made them believe it would be extraordinary. As they were talking, Han Fei, who was on the balcony, had already ended the auction for the Nine Dragon Celestial Devourer Array, and after ordering someone to hand it over to Mu Chen, had started the auction for the third item. It was a slightly defective and extremely ancient superpower art of extraordinary power, but Mu Chen was not interested in bidding, as he didn't want to bite off more than he could chew. He didn't have enough free time to collect so many defective items to peruse and research one by one. The defective superpower was finally auctioned off at the price of 18 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid to Miss Chin Ya of Tianya House. The atmosphere in the pavilion suddenly turned tense after the defective superpower was auctioned off, and countless gazes fixed on the fourth silver plate. Most of the powers who came here were not interested in the first three items, but rather were aiming for the item which had been the subject of hot debate in the city over the past few days. On the balcony, 
Han Fei turned solemn upon noticing the interested gazes on him. He personally held up the silver plate, and with a glow, gradually revealed the item within. A mottled gold token amulet was lying on the silver plate, and the blurred outlines of two archaic words could vaguely be seen. On closer inspection, those two blurred outlines sharpened into the words, the second. Mu Chen's eyes flashed. It was the second hall master's token amulet. Chapter 1097. The Mysterious Girl. The ancient golden token lay on top of the silver plate, the mottled traces upon it revealing the taste of the era. This token did not appear to have any special characteristics, but it caused one to have a mysterious feeling, like there was something special about it. In the huge pavilion, countless eyes were focused hotly on the golden token. Most of the powerful individuals present came from different parties, the sole purpose of their trips being to seek out this very mysterious golden token. The second hall master's matter was obviously not only known by Mandela. The other top forces of the Tianlo continent had obviously conducted an investigation on the ancient celestial palace, so they also knew the position of the second hall master. The news about his token, which had been spreading, would definitely attract even more unscrupulous people in the future. The resources and opportunities within the Tianlo continent were too vast, and if the top forces of any party were to obtain the token, the person would use the opportunity to rise through the ranks and inherit the legitimate right to become the Tianlo continent's new conqueror. This would mean that they could also leap into the Great Thousand World at the same time, setting them among the ranks of the truly powerful. On top of the pavilion, the fourth prince Chia Hong was not the only one who became swift and fierce at this moment. Miss Chin Ya from Tianya House, Young Pavilion Master Mu Shan from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, and Jiang Ling from the Sword Deity Sect all looked covetously at the token as well. Apparently, the item that they were waiting for had now appeared. Standing on top of the pavilion, Han Fei looked out over the whole place. He could feel all eyes on him. He smiled and lifted the silver plate with his hand, then said, This item will be auctioned now. The starting auction price is 1 million in sovereign spiritual liquid. The price of this token was extremely low at the beginning, far less than the previous items. However, no one felt relaxed about this, because they all knew that the price of this item would definitely reach its peak in no time. 2 million. As everyone expected, just when Han Fei's voice settled down, a rushing voice sounded out the first raised bid. 3 million. The echo of the previous bid had not yet had time to fade, when another shout broke through the air. Four million. The bids continued to rise, one after another, echoing throughout the huge pavilion. The atmosphere had reached a climactic peak because of the appearance of this token. The forces of all parties had covetous eyes, they looked supremely determined, like they would not give up before they got their hands on that token. Because of this fierce competition, in just a few minutes, the token's auction price had increased by 10 million in sovereign spiritual liquid. Another few minutes passed, during which the price was raised up to 16 million in sovereign spiritual liquid. From his perch on top of the pavilion, Mu Chen looked at the battle array and felt shocked. The real top forces still had not bid yet, but the price was already quite terrifying. 18 million. Another bid rang out. The moment when Mu Chen sighed, a fit of laughter spread throughout the pavilion, which immediately turned the fierce atmosphere dead silent. All eyes were focused on the source of the laughter, the young pavilion master Mu Shan from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion. He was smiling to the audience, a smug look on his face. He had been the one that had just bid 18 million. Obviously, after some observation, Mu Shan, who was supported by an outstanding force, had felt confident in raising the price by 2 million. This had embarrassed most of the top forces, who could not possibly match such an amount. After hesitating for a moment, they finally went back to their seats and gave up. Now, only those top forces who were rich and powerful were left to compete for the token. 21 million. A bid, followed by soft laughter was heard. It was Miss Chin Ya from Tianya House, who was covering her red lips with her hands. She laughed and said, since the two of you are so interested in this treasure, I will also join in the fun. 22 million. Jiang Ling from the Sword Deity Sect called out. 
representatives from the top four forces had actually bid simultaneously, immediately raising the price to a rather horrifying point. At this moment, the other forces gave up completely. Chia Hong glanced at the other three people, then said in a chilly voice, 25 million. He was desperate to have this token, but knew that it might cost him a pretty penny. He was certain he could attain it though, as the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, Tianya House, and the Sword Deity Sect were no match for the Great Chia Dynasty. Mu Shan, Qin Ya, and Jiang Ling started to worry for a bit, as they felt Chia Hong's desperation. Such an amount was not a small sum to their forces. Chia Hong sneered at them when he saw their worried reactions. These top forces without deep pockets want to compete with the great Chia dynasty. They must be fools. 28 million sovereign spiritual liquid. Just at the moment when Chia Hong was secretly feeling so pleased with himself, a calm voice broke the silence with another bid. Swish. All of the people were looking around to see who had bid. Finally, they saw a young man with a smile, who was on top of the pavilion. This man was Mu Chen, who had won the array previously. He can actually pay such a high price, someone asked in disbelief, as 28 million was not something that could be provided by just any force. Qin Ya, Mu Shan, and many others glanced at Mu Chen with surprise and bewilderment. Chia Hong was stunned for a moment as well. When he composed himself, he glanced at Mu Chen, then said with a ghastly voice, Hey kid, this is not the place for you to be fooling around. If you call out a price, you need to be able to pay that price. Mu Chen looked back at him and said, No need for your reminder, fourth prince, as 28 million is a price that the Daluo territory can still afford. Tan Chu and the others who were standing behind Mu Chen were stunned by Mu Chen's high bid. After all, the sovereign spiritual liquid that they had left, minus that which had been used by Mu Chen before, now totaled only 30 million. And now, Mu Chen had just bid almost all of it at once. However, even they were stunned, they did not say anything. This was because they understood that, since they had such limited financial resources, if they wanted to compete, they must show some pomp and arrogance to intimidate their opponents. However, it was unclear whether the 28 million in sovereign spiritual liquid was enough to shock and intimidate Chia Hong. On the opposite side of the loft, Chia Hong looked gloomy. His cold eyes were staring at Mu Chen. Although the resources of the great Chia dynasty were vast, the amount of them that he could use was not limitless. He thought for a minute, deciding that 30 million sovereign spiritual liquid was enough to support a strong exhibition and attract many powerful individuals to work with his forces. So, Chia Hong took a deep breath and sighed grimly, then called out, 30 million. Wow, the whole pavilion was shaken up by his new bid. Even the faces of Qin Ya and the others turned grim, as they secretly shook their heads. Then, all eyes turned to focus on Mu Chen, as everyone was wondering what he would choose to do next. Under the gaze of those eyes, Mu Chen did not hesitate and said, 31 million. He looked calm and confident. Hence, only nine nether, Tan Chu, and the others who stood behind him knew that this price exceeded their limit. Beyond this, they could not afford even another 10,000. Swish. Chia Hong stood up, he grinded his teeth and glanced at Mu Chen. The handrail that he had been grasping was full of his deep fingerprints. He had not expected that Mu Chen dared to toy with him. Glaring at Mu Chen, Chia Hong growled out a new bid. 35 million, he shouted. This price had reached the limits of the great Chia dynasty. Mu Chen stared at Chia Hong, whose face was still distorted. He looked calm, but he sighed deep down in his heart. This great Chia dynasty was really rich and the level at which they fought really made him unbearable. After giving it much thought, Mu Chen shook his head gently and chose to give up. Let's find a way later, Nine Nether whispered. Mu Chen nodded, knowing that was the only way. How come? Chia Hong saw Mu Chen gave up, so poked at him with a mocking question. He then said with a cold laugh, the small Daluo territory tried to compete with great Chia dynasty. You had no idea what you were dealing with. Nine Nether was angry and wanted to get up and confront him, but she was stopped by Mu Chen. 
He knew that nothing good would come from fighting in this place. Chia Hong snorted and turned his focus to Han Fei, who stood on the stage. He then asked, Are you still not going to announce it? After all, no one would be able to outbid such a price. So, Han Fei quickly nodded, ready to announce the official end of the auction. However, just as he was about to make the announcement, a sweet voice suddenly echoed throughout the pavilion, shocking everyone. I will pay 45 million, the sweet voice said. A dead silence filled the entire pavilion. Chia Hong's eyes were bulging wide open because of this price, and Mu Chen was equally stunned. Inside the pavilion, all eyes started to search crazily to discover who had made such a bid. After a while, many eyes were focused toward Mu Chen. Mu Chen was shocked to realize that all eyes were focused on him. Immediately, he turned his head and looked behind him. He saw a girl, who was as beautiful as a fairy and wearing a black dress. She was chewing a spiritual fruit. Her eyes were lovely and she was an amazing beauty. While she chewing the spiritual fruit, her eyes met Mu Chen's stunned gaze. She quickly raised her hand and swallowed the fruit's flesh in her mouth. She then smiled and said, Hey Mu Chen, we meet again. Chapter 1098, Lin Jing's Reappearance. The pavilion was silent. Under countless gazes of disbelief, Mu Chen was shocked as he saw a girl in mysterious clothing appear in front of him. Her smile was beautiful, her teeth were bright, and her eyes were filled with spiritual aura. The combination made her look unforgettable. You, are you Lin Jing? Mu Chen asked doubtfully after he had recovered. Looking at the slightly familiar girl, he shook his head in disbelief. Lin Jing was the girl Mu Chen had met when he was traveling from the Northern Heaven Spiritual Academy to Tianlo Continent. Her true identity was the princess of the martial border. Her father was the well-known and respected martial ancestor of the Great Thousand World. Mu Chen couldn't believe that they would be reunited at this place after so many years. He couldn't help but to laugh a little while reminiscing. When they had first met, Mu Chen couldn't even materialize his sovereign celestial body, but now he was already halfway towards achieving grade 9 sovereign. What brings you here? Mu Chen couldn't resist asking in surprise. Lin Jing smiled and said, I heard there is a celebration event here for the birth of the ancient celestial palace, so I decided to come and have a look. Furthermore, I remembered you told me that you wanted to pay a visit to Tianlo Continent. I was too bored staying at home, so I chose to escape. She looked around the place with curiosity and said, It looks like this is fate, because we always meet each other at auctions. Speaking of the auction reminded Mu Chen where he was. As he looked around, he realized that countless eyes were looking at Lin Jing because they were shocked by the extremely high price that she had bid. On the opposite side of the pavilion, Chia Hong came to life and exclaimed, Damn! Where did this little girl come from? How dare you play around here in this auction? He then looked in the direction where Lin Jing was standing. He could not stop salivating when he saw her beauty and charisma. According to his observation, Lin Jing and Nine Nether were both rare beauties, one of them cute and the other elegant. Their level of beauty was like venom, extremely poisonous. Ahem, Please cancel the bid that you have placed just now. Mu Chen quickly reminded Lin Jing to remove the bid because spending 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid was as good as sucking the Daluo territory's treasury dry. Furthermore, it was not worth the cost if they still had no idea about the function of the mysterious token. As Mu Chen finished his sentence, Chia Hong sneered. Hey, where do you think you are now? You think you can come and go as you please? When he turned towards Lin Jing, he smiled and said, Why don't you come to my seat, and we can watch the auction together, pretty lady. Then no one will keep the previous incident in mind. Lin Jing blinked for a second and said, Would you pay the bid of 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid for me? The smile on Chia Hong's face stiffened, and he said, This token isn't worth 45 million. I can take the things you've said before as a joke. Lin Jing pouted her red lips and said, I wasn't messing around with you. My bid is 45 million, and if you can't afford to bid higher, then please shut your mouth. All the guests were shocked. They stared at Lin Jing, 
wondering if this young lady could afford the price she bid. Qin Ya, from Tianya House and Mu Shan, from the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, were both shocked because this situation was way beyond their expectations. It was quite embarrassing for Chia Hong to get talked back to by Lin Jing, a little girl. His glance turned grave as he spoke to the girl coldly. Little girl, I hope you know exactly what you are doing. The thing you bid on costs 45 million. You'd better be able to pay. Chia Hong was interrupted before he could finish his sentence. His vision stopped at Lin Jing's hand as she waved to summon a bottle. As she tilted the bottle, tumbling sounds could be heard and several rivers poured out. The immense spiritual energies they carried along instantly filled the top floor of the pavilion. Countless eyes were staring at the rivers. Based on their knowledge, they definitely knew that the rivers were formed by countless drops of sovereign sovereign spiritual liquid of relatively high quality. Looking at the endless stream of rivers eliminated the doubt among the people at the auction. This delicate little girl really seemed like she could afford 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. Chin Ya and the rest looked grim as they noticed that this little girl could actually carry such a great amount of sovereign spiritual liquid around. The young lady was truly from an abnormal family background. After all, not everyone could have the financial ability to take out 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid that easily. Shimmer. As Lin Jing waved her hand, all the sovereign spiritual liquid went back into the bottle. She then glanced at Chia Hong, who was staring in bewilderment, and asked, Do you still have any problems with my bid? Lin Jing looked at Chia Hong's pale face and continued, But you do know you could hike up the bid right? Who knows? I might give up my bid if you did. Chia Hong's face was sallow. Although Lin Jing took a step back, she was obviously trying him. She never even showed a hint of giving up. With such pride as she had, no matter how much Chia Hong was going to bid, she would definitely follow the bid without hesitation. Furthermore, with a bid as high as 45 million, who else would dare to keep up with her? Even if his big brother were there, he would need to reconsider the decision. The resources and financial background of the great Chia dynasty were strong, but they were not to be spent unnecessarily. Everyone was looking at Chia Hong, and some of those gazes were decidedly amused. Chia Hong used to overwhelm others with his financial capabilities, but now, someone even more brutal had appeared. He was pressured by a little girl who was rich enough to make him hesitate to hike up the bid. Chia Hong was mad underneath the gazes of everyone there. He was thinking of driving up the bid, but when he thought of the terrible consequences, he eventually gave up the idea and sat back with anger. He clenched his fists until cracking could be heard. As Chia Hong cut a sorry figure and sat back, Lin Jing took a slow glance at Mu Chen. I have brought more than enough money this time. It seemed like she still remembered that it was Mu Chen who had lended her a helping hand when she escaped empty-handed years ago. Mu Chen and Nine Nether looked at each other and then shook their heads with bitter smiles. It did not take an ordinary billionaire, but an extremely rich multi-billionaire to cash out 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. However, when it came to knowing Lin Jing's identity, they could only accept the truth. The martial border was a well-known force in the Great Thousand World. The level of forces they had was even stronger than the army forces in the entire Tianlo continent. Since the owner of the martial border was a true sky sovereign, he was one of the top fighters in the Great Thousand World. This martial ancestor was unpredictable and unmeasurable. With such a respected father, no matter how extravagant her actions could be, it would only be a matter of course. Just as Mu Chen was talking to Lin Jing, Han Fei, who was at the stage, regained his senses. He stared at Lin Jing's eyes as if he had seen God. Finally, after so many years of waiting, it was the first time he saw someone throwing such a large fortune into a bid. Ahem. This young lady bid 45 million. Anyone up for bidding higher? Han Fei asked loudly as he looked around. However, his question only brought back some dumbfounded stares, as if they were looking at an idiot. 45 million. Even Chia Hong chose to step back, so who else would dare to follow? Seeing everyone's gazes, Han Fei felt a little awkward. He quickly announced, If so, this precious token now belongs to this young lady over here. 
As soon as he finished announcing, he waved his hand to order his staff to hand over the token to Lin Jing. Of course, there were a few security personnel who followed along. The entire process went smoothly. After he finished calculating the tremendous amount of sovereign spiritual liquid, Han Fei's hands were shaking as he respectfully handed over the token to Lin Jing. Lin Jing took the token and simply swung it up and down. Her actions caused the people around to panic because that was worth 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. What if she broke it? Just as the people were panicking, Lin Jing made a move that caused their jaws to drop. After playing with the token, she smiled and threw it to Mu Chen. There, last time you bought me the heavenly fire chalcedony. This time, I bought you something, too. But don't you dare decline my offer, or else I'll dump it. Everyone's faces twisted in shock. The heavenly fire chalcedony, worth only 10,000 drops, for the mystery token worth 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. One for one, countless people looked at each other, and eventually they took a deep breath. They would also like to have a friend who was as arrogant as that. Under countless looks of disbelief, Mu Chen was also somehow silently terrified by Lin Jing's actions. He was trying to decline her offer, but after hearing her next sentence, Mu Chen couldn't help but smile helplessly. He hummed quietly and kept the token with respect. Thank you very much. I'll keep this favor in mind. Looking at how straightforward Mu Chen was, Lin Jing only smiled but deep inside, she admired him a lot. Everyone was trying to treat her well after knowing her true identity except for Mu Chen. She could clearly feel that he was treating her as just herself, not as a little princess from the martial border. Therefore, when she heard Mu Chen say that he would keep the favor in mind, she did not take that as a joke. Even though with her strong and rich background, any debt of gratitude would be worthless to her. Lin Jing smiled and said, All right then. Please take me in, since I've got nowhere to go. Mu Chen smiled as he nodded. He then settled his process of purchasing the auctioned ancient scroll and gathered Lin Jing, Nine Nether, and the rest to leave casually under countless gazes of the crowd. On top of the building, Chia Hong stared at them with a gloomy look. The next second, he tilted his head slightly and said, Dig up the little girl's identity. One more thing, keep an eye on him for me, trying to steal from my hands. How dare you? Chapter 1099, Observing the Dragon Array. The auction in the West City had come to an end, but the entire crowd was still in a bit of an uproar. All of the forces were still amazed by the final price of 45 million sovereign spiritual liquid. In fact, most of them were still doubted Lin Jing's identity, precisely because of the high bid that she had just placed. However, some sensitive people understood that this wasn't the final ending of the case of this particular gold token. This was because the West City was full of powerful people. Although the people from the Daluo territory had successfully acquired the token, that couldn't guarantee that they would be the true owners of it for long. Although the Daluo territory was quite well known in the North Territory, that wasn't the case in the entire Tianlo continent. As for Mu Chen, who came from the Daluo territory, although he was quite powerful, he was still only a half-grade nine. Hence, there was still a level of difference between him and Chia Hong. Therefore, all of the forces were not disappointed that the token had fallen into the hands of the Daluo territory. Instead, they were considering stealing from Mu Chen, as they assumed that countless forces would be taking actions towards him as well. Then, once the conflicts commenced, they would have the chance to steal away the token. Amid all of the hustle and bustle in the West City, an undercurrent, like a brewing storm, was building in intensity. The door of one of the courtyards in the West City was closed. That particular courtyard had a spiritual array floating over it, which protected it from being detected by the outside world. Mu Chen was standing in the courtyard. He looked into the sky and smiled. He then turned to Nine Nether and said, I believe that we are the target of everyone else in the West City now. Nine Nether nodded in sad agreement. Yes, it seems like it won't be an easy job to take this token away from here. The people actually think that we are not powerful enough to do it. Mu Chen shook his head. It was true that their force, the Daluo territory, was not well known in the Tianlo continent. Moreover, 
Among his group, only nine nether had achieved the level of nine-grade sovereign. Even Mu Chen was only a half nine grade. It seems like the thing I bought has caused you guys all of this trouble. Lin Jing, who was playing with a tiny bird in the courtyard, overheard their conversation and chimed in. She looked up and smiled, then added, if you need any help, please do not hesitate to ask. Mu Chen turned and looked at her through his squinted eyes. He could not detect any leakage of spiritual energy from her. Obviously, she had some sort of artifact to cover up her spiritual energy, preventing others from detecting her strength. However, when he first met with Lin Jing, she was on her way to cultivate her body to achieve the sovereign state. Years had passed, and with her identity as a princess and the daughter of a sky sovereign, her power was now comparable to Mu Chen's. Facing an assistant, who could provide such great support, Mu Chen smiled and shook his head. If we can't afford to protect the token, we might as well just hand it over to the others to save ourselves some trouble. His young face showed a little bit of calm. This was because he refused to panic because of the current situation. His showing such composure only made Lin Jing appreciate him even more. No wonder her mother had held Mu Chen in high regard. Lin Jing had not realized his value back then. She now had to admit that Mu Chen was indeed exceptional. So what do you plan to do? Asked Nine Nether. Mu Chen's eyelids were drooping. He was obviously exhausted by the stress of this situation. He looked at Nine Nether and said softly, We'll just have to wait. Since they look down on us, let's just give them a taste of our impressive skills. After night fell, Mu Chen was sitting in his room with his legs crossed. He was surrounded by spiritual energy, as the aura from the heavens and the earth was flowing into his body continuously. His meditation lasted for a long while. Then, he slowly opened his eyes. With a wave of his robes, two items appeared before him. They were a fragmented array and a token. Specifically, these objects were the Nine Dragon Devouring Fairy Array and the Mysterious Token, which he had obtained from the auction. Mu Chen stared at the items and hummed lightly. He then focused all of his attention on the fragmented array. The complete form of the array was at the level of a true spiritual array ancestral master. Once it was deployed, even an earthly sovereign level warrior could hardly resist its power. Achieving the level of a spiritual array ancestral master was every spiritual array master's dream. Once one stepped into that particular level, the cultivation of the spiritual array could be counted as complete. Of course, the real peak was still the legendary master. Such an existence was comparable to sky sovereigns, who were extremely rare in the Great Thousand World. In fact, Mu Chen's mother was one of them. This was a fact that made him very proud. I hope that mother is doing well now. And big sister Ling Shi, too. Ever since she left the Northern Heaven Spiritual Academy, there had been no more news of her. She told me that she was going to find mother, but who knows what she is doing now. Mu Chen was rubbing the ancient fragmented array, but his thoughts were far away. He then took a deep breath to suppress his emotion. Now, even though he was halfway through becoming a grade 9 sovereign, it still wasn't enough. With his abilities, he could somehow feel the strength of his mother's mysterious clan. Such an incredible force could even threaten his mother, who was a legendary master. Although she was trying to protect Mu Chen and his father, her actions also showed the tyrannical strength of the mysterious clan. Mu Chen licked his lips, then focused on the fragmented array. He closed his eyes and spiritual energy surged in his hands. His spiritual energy then flowed slowly into the fragmented scroll. Boom! A spiritual energy perception infiltrated Mu Chen's mind, as splendid lights burst open and immediately changed his vision. There appeared to be an old man standing on top of the mountain, his hands behind his back. He waved his robe and suddenly, an overwhelming spiritual seal came like tidal waves, merging into the void and forming many complex spiritual runes. As they came across each other, it created chaos between the heavens and the earth. The old man then flicked his finger, causing nine waves of light streams to suddenly appear out of nowhere. At the same time, a faint dragon's roar could be heard in the background. The nine light streams rushed into the array. As the lights faded, the array revealed its true appearance. 
Within the light were nine authentic ancient dragon bones. The nine dragon bones formed the nine central positions of the seal formation. As they fused into the array, the array seemed to have been resurrected. The majestic spiritual aura surrounding the dragon bones eventually formed the flesh and blood of the dragons, then turned the nine bones into nine real dragons. However, these dragons were formed by the spiritual energy instead of true flesh and blood. But even so, the terrifying oppressive aura coming from the nine dragons was extremely powerful. Zoom! As soon as the nine dragon devouring fairy array was complete, a shining light appeared in the sky above the mountain peak. A human figure then also appeared, immediately dominating the atmosphere by sheer force of character. He was obviously an earthly sovereign warrior. The old man, who was the one who had formed the array, then flicked his finger again. The nine dragons started to roar. Then, suddenly, the nine dragon breaths burst through the void, directly crashing into the earthly sovereign's body. Bang! The earthly sovereign was blown away by the collision. His blood was everywhere and the spiritual energy surrounding him went through a sudden decline. After this, the vision ended. A huge amount of information then poured into Mu Chen's mind. Phew! Mu Chen drew a deep breath, then opened his eyes in shock. Such a powerful and complicated spiritual seal. He shook his head and sighed. The message in his mind wasn't complete but he could piece together that the nine dragon devouring fairy array was not only huge, but it also needed central items, like the dragon bones. The array connected with the dragon bones via the dragon bones aura, which enabled them to materialize. The power generated through the fusion of both items was comparable to a true earthly sovereign. But the scroll was a fragment after all. According to what it said, even if we managed to learn from it, we could only form a four dragon devouring fairy array. This is far from achieving the nine dragon devouring fairy array. Mu Chen felt a little sorry about this. Even though the scroll was in a complete formation, it would be impossible for him to arrange the array because of his current spiritual capability. This fragmented array, if well executed, would increase his chances of success. It seems that we have to collect some dragon bones in preparation. Mu Chen said to himself, according to what the array had revealed in the vision, the stronger the owner of the dragon bones was, the more powerful the nine dragon devouring fairy array would become. However, in his current state, he did not need dragon bones of high quality. Therefore, it would not be too hard for him to procure them. At this point, Mu Chen was satisfied. He then turned and looked at the ancient gold token. Chapter 1100 loaning ahead. The ancient and dappled golden token amulet floated silently in front of Mu Chen's eyes. When bright light shined on it, most of it was not refracted. It felt as if the amulet were a black hole and rather mysterious. Mu Chen stared closely at the golden amulet. He stretched out his arm, allowing the amulet to fall into his palm. His fingers ran over the amulet's surface. While the writing that read, second, seemed ancient and faded, it still exuded a sense of indescribable majesty. Mu Chen concentrated his spiritual energy flow upon the amulet, attempting to examine it more deeply. However, his efforts did not pay off. The amulet did not react even slightly to his examination. It was as if it were just a common object. Let's see if I can refine it. After a soft grunt, he spilled a few drops of his blood on it, and his spiritual energy seemed to turn into flames, enveloping it, trying to refine it. Lying in the flames of spiritual energy, the golden amulet still did not budge. Mu Chen's blood droplets only rolled on its surface, unable to penetrate it. It was as if there were an indescribably strong yet unfathomably difficult to detect barrier blocking everything that tried to infiltrate the amulet. After the spiritual flames burned a while to no avail, Mu Chen let out a disappointed sigh. As expected, it was not that easy to pry into its secrets. Although the investigation was fruitless, Mu Chen was not dismayed by the great price he had paid to obtain it. The difficulty in deciphering it showed its mysteriousness and importance. If he really could extract its mysteries, it would definitely be worth much more than the 45 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid. As the spiritual flame faded away, the golden amulet descended.
Mu Chen received it with his hands and gently ran his fingers over it. He could faintly feel a very thin and obscure wave emanating from the amulet. However, the feeling was so weak that he could not pinpoint its origin. However, Mu Chen could confirm that this item must have belonged to the second hall master of the ancient celestial palace because it was emitting an ancient and powerful pressure. Although it was just a remnant from several thousand years ago, it was like a shadow following its object, and it terrified Mu Chen in his heart. The only one who could do this in the entire ancient celestial palace would be those at the level of hall master. It seems like I can only keep trying. Mu Chen ultimately decided to give it up for the time being. It was no urgent matter, anyway. Perhaps he should wait until entering the ruins of the ancient celestial palace. At that time, he might understand exactly how this object worked. He suspected that it would not disappoint him. Now, let us first focus on this nine dragon devouring fairy array. At this thought, Mu Chen stopped worrying. He stowed the golden amulet and took out the tattered scroll containing the nine dragon devouring fairy array. He started to research it, attempting to be enlightened as quickly as possible so that he could employ this incomplete master grade spiritual array. The following day, Mu Chen stayed in the garden, focusing his mind completely on performing the array. He was not anxious to leave the West City in a sneaky manner. He understood that it was impossible to sneak under the surveillance of so many people. Furthermore, he did not wish to do it that way. Other than Bai Lao and Lin Jing, none of the others went out. Bai Lao had received Mu Chen's orders to procure some dragon bones from the antique shops around the city, and Lin Jing could not stay put. She ignored the fact that she was a moving vault of gold in the covetous eyes of others. She continued to skip around, following her whims and fancies. Surprisingly, although many powerful individuals were eyeing her, none of them dared to actually act against her. Ostensibly, they were wary of her mysterious background. The peace lasted until the second day. As the sun was setting on the second day, Mu Chen and Nine Nether sat in the stone garden within the courtyard. There was a chessboard on the stone table, and they were casually playing a game. Now that we are here, we have become the talk of West City. Nine Nether swept to look beyond the courtyard. The past two days had seemed peaceful, but everyone could feel the treacherous waves raging beneath the calm. The covetous eyes were multiplying each day. Mu Chen nodded, and then he said with a laugh, if they are willing to drag this out, let them be. That will give me more time to perform the Nine Dragon Devouring Fairy Array and more time for our reinforcements from Daluo territory to arrive. Nine Nether nodded. Playing with a spiritual rabbit from who knows where, Lin Jing suddenly raised her heart-tugging, pretty face and said with a smile, Your subordinate is not back yet, it seems. Nine Nether was startled for a moment. She just remembered that Bai Lao should have been back long ago. He was not a procrastinator. She raised her head and looked at Mu Chen. The latter had a calm expression, but his eyes were slightly squinted, as if a glint of danger had appeared. It seems like somebody can't hold back anymore, he mumbled. As he finished mumbling, laughter wrapped in a ferocious spiritual energy penetrated the air like thunder rumbling through the entire city, and resonated in the courtyard surrounded by the spiritual array. Ha ha, ladies and gentlemen from Daluo territory, your subordinate is now a guest of mine. Why don't we have a reunion? The voice boomed and echoed through the heavens and the earth. It was the voice of Chia Hong, the fourth prince of the great Chia dynasty. His voice was not disguised, so the entire city could identify it clearly. Immediately, people from every force were alerted. Could Chia Hong no longer resist attacking Daluo territory? What a detestable fellow. Nine Nether had a tense expression. He is a careful guy, Mu Chen said plainly. He thought that Chia Hong would come directly to them, and did not expect him to use such a dirty trick. Obviously, Chia Hong was aware that Mu Chen had been there for a few days, and there might be spiritual arrays set up to give the Daluo forces a geographical edge against him. Master, what should we do? Tan Chu looked at Mu Chen, awaiting his orders. Mu Chen stood up his slender body as straight as a spear. He raised his head and faced the origin of the voice. With a smile, he said, 
The chicken I have be waiting two days for is finally here. Without this chicken's head, how can we frighten the others? Let's first use this guy to bolster the reputation of Daluo territory in the Tianlo continent. As he finished speaking, his body transformed into a stream of light and rushed into the sky. Nine Nether, Tan Chu, and Lord Stone followed after him closely, all fuming with killing intent. How interesting. I wanna see how this half-grade nine will fight against that nine-grade sovereign fellow. Lin Jing grinned ear to ear watching this. A glint of expectation shined in her eyes, and she, too, turned into a stream of light and followed. When Mu Chen and his party rushed out of the courtyard as streams of light, countless shadows leaped up in West City as well. The shadows covered the earth and the sky, all heading towards Chia Hong. It was obvious that the hidden forces of light and dark in West City would finally erupt into battle today. However, could the party from Daluo territory keep that mysterious amulet? In three other places within the city, Qin Ya, the young mistress of House Tianya, Mu Shan, the young pavilion master of the Hidden Dragon Pavilion, and Jiang Lin of the Sword Deity Sect looked on at the countless streams of light coming from Mu Chen's place as their eyes shined. Mu Chen from Daluo territory truly has the skills and the guts, daring to go there personally. However, while Chia Hong is quite a nuisance, he is not a weakling. Today's events will definitely be interesting. The three of them smiled, and with a wave of their sleeves, they took off into the air in a rush. Behind them, shadows followed suit one by one like lightning, every one of them exuding immense spiritual energy. Therefore, the entire West City exploded at that moment. In the middle of West City, within a heavily guarded courtyard on one of the huge practice stadiums, Chia Hong was seated upon a throne. At his side were two beautiful ladies serving him wine, depicting an envious scene. Behind him, a dozen figures stood straight in the shadows. They exuded immense spiritual energy that faintly vibrated the air. Among the figures, one of them was the most noticeable. He was an elderly man clad in grey robes. His entire body emitted a cold aura, and even the spiritual energy within his body was extremely dark and cold. A chain extended from the top of a pillar in the stadium to its bottom. A person was chained on that pillar. It was Bai Lao. Runes with spiritual energy were shining on his body like a seal, trapping his inner spiritual energies. Chia Hong swirled the wine in the crystal goblet he was holding and asked jokingly, Wang Gong, do you think that boy will come? The elderly man behind him laughed softly and said, to come or not, the ending has been decided. That amulet is not something that petty Daluo territory can keep. Hearing this, Chia Hong laughed with satisfaction and finished the drink in his hand. As he raised his head, he could see the horizon starting to crowd. Many figures were standing in the sky, awaiting the start of the show. Chia Hong stared into the horizon, then he laughed and said, he is here as expected. Such bravery. As his voice fell, bright lights appeared in the stadium. Under uncountable gazes, several figures appeared. The one leading them was none other than Mu Chen. When he appeared, he glanced at Chia Hong. Then, he immediately flicked his fingers, sending a spiritual rainbow toward Bai Lao, cutting him free from the chains and then grabbing him back. Seeing this, Chia Hong did not stop him. Only after Mu Chen had rescued Bai Lao, did he slowly speak. Leave the amulet and the two beauties and I will assure that you can leave this city. Hearing this, Mu Chen laughed lightly as he looked at Chia Hong. May I borrow your chicken head? Chapter 1101. Spreading Reputation. Mu Chen's calm and composed laughter resonated throughout the huge stadium. It also reached the ears of the countless spectators around the sky, some of whom could not resist laughing with him. This kid from Daluo territory has guts. Ignoring his many powerful subordinates, Chia Hong himself had recently entered into grade 9, which placed him within the top 30 powerful youths in the Tianlo continent. Although Chia Hong had just achieved grade 9, his actual combat strength was much higher than that. Before this, with his newly attained grade 9 powers, he was able to survive an encounter with a grade 9 sovereign at his peak. This alone was shocking enough. Mu Chen, however, was not shocking at all. In the sky far above the stadium, Qin Ya, 
Mu Shan, and Jiang Lin stood in the air. They looked upon the stadium with fervent interest, obviously intrigued by the fearlessness of Mu Chen. No one knew whether he was really confident or was just toughing it out. When the countless powerful individuals that filled the sky were praising Mu Chen's confidence and guts, Chia Hong's eyes squinted slightly. Staring at Mu Chen, he said jokingly, I did not expect a day would come, where I would be looked upon as a stepping stone. He had clearly seen through Mu Chen's intentions. It was evident that the latter wanted to use him as a stepping stone. If Mu Chen could defeat Chia Hong here, Mu Chen's name would spread far and wide in the Tianlo continent. When that time came, if he wanted to take away the amulet, the others would have to think twice before stopping him. Won't it be a waste to not accept a free gift, which was delivered to my doorstep? Mu Chen asked, while smiling. He pretended as if he did not notice Chia Hong's dangerous gaze. You think you are worthy? With a treacherous smile, Chia Hong's lips curved into an extremely sinister angle. Then, with a wave of his palm, he commanded, Wang Wu, take care of him. Bam! As Chia Hong's voice fell, a figure behind him flew out suddenly, sending out a wave of immense spiritual energy. The spiritual energy fluctuation had also reached halfway into grade 9. The figure, which carried with him an immense spiritual energy, shot straight at Mu Chen. It could be seen that he had a blood-red longsword in his hand, too. Moreover, his killing intent and swift movements indicated that he was experienced on the battlefield. At this time, some of the spectators in the surrounding sky sighed silently. The great Chia dynasty was indeed the absolute ruler in the West Territory. With their deep foundation, even a warrior, who they had casually sent, had achieved halfway to grade 9. This strength, in other places, could be considered the highest standard, even among the elites. The figure moved extremely quickly, appearing in front of Mu Chen almost within a few blinks. His eyes were ice old, and the blood sword that he was holding slashed down immediately. A blood red light then arose, rushing upwards, as if a blood red crescent moon was striking toward Mu Chen's head squarely. The person moved unusually quick, swinging with his full strength. If any other half grade nine took that hit, they would have fallen immediately. The blood-red light filled Mu Chen's eyeballs. But, surprisingly to the onlookers, his face remained calm and peaceful, unfazed by the oncoming blade of light. Behind him, Nine Nether, Bai Lao, and Chu Tan were all standing still, each with sardonic expressions in their eyes. Lin Jing, however, opened her big googly eyes, watching with excitement. She wanted to witness Mu Chen's improvements with her own eyes. Under the gaze of the many powerful individuals, the blood-red blade of light enveloped Mu Chen, who still did not move at all. At that moment, he closed his eyes slowly, as if giving up all resistance, allowing the blade to cut him. You were seeking death. Seeing this, the man could not help but sneer. The blade of light swept downward, but as it approached Mu Chen's body, a golden light shone brightly from his body. At the same time, an earth-shattering dragon's roar echoed in the air. The golden light exploded, and a purplish-golden giant dragon suddenly emerged from inside Mu Chen. An indescribable and oppressive aura filled the air, causing the blade to immediately stop in its tracks. Roar! The purplish-gold giant dragon coiled around Mu Chen, its claws clenched tight. The claws then turned suddenly into dragon fists which immediately sent a punch crashing into the blade of light. Bam! A wave of power, violent and without match, swept forth, shaking the void. Golden light also filled the place. The man with the sword suddenly had a terrified expression on his face, as he felt a strong power coming from the tip of his sword. This power carried destruction within it. Even as he tried to release all of the spiritual energy within him, it immediately dissipated as it met the vibration. Car Shack. The blood red longsword immediately shattered, injuring the man seriously. His body was sent flying backward and blood was squirting everywhere. Finally, he slumped on the floor. Wow! The faces of the powerful individuals fell. Obviously, no one had expected this half grade nine to be defeated in such an awkward manner, especially in just a few moments. In fact, 
Before Mu Chen even moved a finger, the man with the sword had already fallen. Swoosh! Countless gazes then looked toward Mu Chen's direction. The purplish gold dragon had coiled around Mu Chen and was roaring continuously, stirring up the air. At the same time, the gigantic dragon's body was exuding an oppressive and majestic aura. However, Mu Chen still stood with his hands down, his youthful face undisturbed and calm. The aura from the dragon, this pressure, it is rare, even among the dragon clan. A spectator in the sky marveled loudly, shocked as he noticed the uniqueness of the purplish gold dragon. Other onlookers began to comment as well. Could it be that this Mu Chen is a descendant of the dragon clan? He is indeed human, but perhaps he has cultivated a technique related to the dragon clan. This dragon looks like the real thing, but it still carries a feeling of transparency. But, judging from the power that exploded from within it, it seems to have exceeded most half-grade nines. By merely materializing a cultivated dragon, he defeated a half-grade nine. Many powerful individuals could not resist squinting their eyes in amazement. What kind of great secret was this? This Mu Chen was truly sophisticated. No wonder he was fearless, even when facing Chia Hong. It turns out that his trump card was as strong as his opponent's. As he was now depending on the power of the purplish gold dragon, along with his own strength, it seemed that he was more than ready to face the powerful individuals that had newly attained the level of grade 9. Lin Jing blinked and observed the purplish gold dragon, which was still coiling around Mu Chen. It is truly the aura of a dragon, she mumbled. She knew the truth behind the dragon. So, she was aware of the relative purity of the dragon's aura, which was obviously due to its pure origins. This was because she had once seen a true dragon of the dragon clan during a visit to her father at the martial border. The aura of that true dragon was majestic and somber, as if it was controlling the world. And now, the aura from Mu Chen's dragon felt exactly the same. Meanwhile, Chia Hong was watching the scene from the throne, the scornful smile on his face slowly fading away. With a goblet in his hand, he stared at Mu Chen expressionlessly. His eyes were sharp as knives, causing others' hearts to palpitate in fear. However, Mu Chen simply ignored his cruel eyes. He looked at the spirit of the real dragon coiled around him, then turned toward Chia Hong and said calmly, It is rude to not repay a gift. As he finished speaking, he stepped forward. He then clenched his fists and a shining, bright gold light rushed out from his body. He had just sent a fist flying out. Roar! As Mu Chen punched the air, the dragon roared, directly transforming into a stream of purplish gold light that rushed down and combined with Mu Chen's knuckle, becoming a flying fist. The purplish gold fist looked like a dragon that was brandishing its claws. As the fist was sent out, a terrifying energy wave swept forth, shattering the earth. This punch was several times more powerful than the blade, which was created by the man with the sword. Facing this punch, even some of the newly attained grade 9 sovereigns could not help looking sullen. Fear was apparent in everyone's eyes. F whom? The golden dragon fist swept forth as fast as thunder. Within seconds, it was already in front of Chia Hong. Chia Hong's face turned dark, while an icy cold light shone in his eyes. Even after seeing Mu Chen's fist, which was intended to spread the latter's fame, he did not budge. Rather, he sneered at Mu Chen. Let me, the prince, weigh how much strength you have. As he finished speaking, he curled his fingers up, as if they were claws, then scratched at the air. Suddenly, a dark light shone from his fingers. Between the claws, a spiritual light was shining, as if it was turning into a black shadow of a tiger, opening its ferocious jaws to devour the sky. Boom! Then, the golden dragon fist rushed violently forward, colliding brutally with Chia Hong's black tiger claws. Chapter 1102. Digging a Hole. Boom! When the golden fist of light swept past and finally crashed directly into Chia Hong's black tiger claws, the whole earth shook. Even with the naked eye, one could see ripples spreading from Chia Hong's feet, sending ash and dust flying up into the air. The earth cracked and crumbled. The gold and black brutally ate each other up, sending wave after wave of explosions. Finally, 
They were both dissipating as their spiritual energies were exhausted. At the same time, countless spectators threw their gazes at the collision. A wind blew through the sky, sending dust and sand flying. The scenery on the stadium was clear once again. Chia Hong could be seen standing with his body stretched, and his hands maintaining a clawed position. His expression was static, and only his slightly shining eyes showed a terrifying gaze. Countless gazes focused upon Chia Hong. He stood unmoving. The powerful impact was not able to touch him, and not even his garments were lifted. But some spectators with sharp eyes were looking at the golden throne behind him. As a wind blew at it, the sturdy and shiny throne turned into golden dust and was scattered in the wind. The eyes of many spectators froze for a moment. While Mu Chen's fist did not threaten Chia Hong at all, it broke through his defenses and crushed the throne behind him. There was no doubt that this punch was an act to earn him a reputation. And it seemed to be working pretty well. At the very least, many of the spectators were focused on Mu Chen, and their faces were more serious now. Everyone could see that Mu Chen's real combat power was far beyond his rating of a half-nine grade sovereign. In the sky, Mu Shan of the Hidden Dragon Pavilion looked at the scene and commented with a smile, this kid seems to be quite capable, eh? He had many misgivings about Chia Hong, and seeing Chia Hong Lu's face was rather enjoyable for him. It was unexpected, but Chia Hong will probably be more careful after this. And a serious Chia Hong is not an easy opponent, Tianya House's Chin Ya replied with a smile as well. Mu Shan nodded in agreement. He was unable to get the upper hand, even after fighting with Chia Hong for years. Even on the ranking of Tianlo Continent youths, he was always slightly behind Chia Hong. That's why he was very aware of how difficult an opponent a serious Chia Hong would be. Although Mu Chen was not simple, there was still a long story to tell before a winner could emerge. As the whispers continued, Chia Hong slowly elevated his gaze. He looked at Mu Chen with eyes as sharp as knives. As he retracted his palm, he spoke with indifference, not bad. He seemed to be evaluating Mu Chen's punch that had penetrated some of his defenses. I thought today would be boring, but it seems like it won't be as bad as I thought. Chia Hong walked forward steadily. As he stepped forward, the spiritual energies surrounding him rose at a shocking rate. Within a few steps, the entire stadium was enveloped in the pressure of his spiritual energy. Under such an oppression, the faces of Bai Lao, Tan Chu, and the others went pale, and the spiritual energy within him started to become stagnant. This was a true grade 9 sovereign. Chia Hong's sharp eyes were looking directly at Mu Chen. With a solemn tone, he said, but if you are only capable of this, then don't hope to leave this place today. As he finished his sentence, an equally brutal immense spiritual energy shot up into the sky, dissipating the spiritual pressure exerted by Chia Hong. Chia Hong's eyes froze for a moment, then he slowly averted his gaze, finally stopping on Nine Nether, whose spiritual energy was unfolding around her like a storm. Nine Nether looked at Chia Hong with her ice-cold eyes. A translucent flame burned brightly in her hand. With a grave look, she suddenly extended her fingers, and the flame turned into a beam of flame, shooting toward Chia Hong at the speed of lightning. Swoosh! But just when the beam emerged, a grey light shined before Chia Hong. The elder in grey robes appeared, and his dry palm caught the beam of flame. A brutal spiritual energy sprayed out from his palm, forcibly extinguishing the beam. The elder in grey clothes said to Nine Nether with a squint, He he he, since the prince has chosen his prey, it is best for others to stay out of this. Looking at the elder in grey robes, the expression in Nine Nether's eyes became sombre. She could feel the immense ice-cold spiritual energy exuded by the elder. It seemed that this man was just a step away from attaining the peak of grade 9 sovereign. His capabilities were far beyond that of a typical newly attained grade 9 sovereign. Swish! Behind the stadium, the sound of wind rang out, and a dozen figures burst forth from the darkness, emerging around the stadium to surround Nine Nether and the others, cutting off all retreat. Tan Chu and Wang Shi could not stop their faces from turning sullen when they saw the figures.
at least four of them had achieved half grade 9, and the others were at least grade 7 to grade 8 sovereigns. The opponent's lineup was far stronger than theirs. At that moment, the area was under the well-fortified control of the great Chia dynasty warriors. It would be a difficult task to escape unscathed. Since we are already here, it's too late to regret it now. With a faint smile, Chia Hong's eyes scanned Nine Nether's slender body lewdly, and he took a look at the beautiful Lin Jing. A dirty smile appeared on his lips, and he said, A pure battle is rather boring. Why don't we gamble on something? Mu Chen's eyes remained calm when he heard this. He was obviously uninterested, but before Mu Chen could say anything, Lin Jing's eyes brightened up, and she asked with great interest, who, who, on what? Let's bet on who will win, him, or me. Chia Hong pointed at Mu Chen, and he continued with a sheepish smile. If I lose, I will let you all leave in peace, along with three sacred artifacts. Hearing this, many of the spectators could not help clicking their tongues. Tisk tisk tisk. Three sacred artifacts. With his deep pockets, this Chia Hong really could promise anything. Lin Jing blinked her pretty eyes a few times as she said, What if you win? Then I will have you two beauties by my side, Chia Hong answered with a laugh. Lin Jing pouted her small red lips and complained with a laugh, Are the two of us only worth three sacred artifacts? Our prince of the great Chia dynasty is rather stingy. Shocked, Chia Hong asked with a twitching eyebrow, Then, what do you suggest, young lady? After thinking for a moment, Lin Jing answered nonchalantly, you should write a receipt and stamp it with a spiritual seal, saying that you'll owe me a 100 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid if you lose. Wow, many jaws dropped as she finished speaking. Even Chia Hong's face twitched for a while. A hundred million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid could even empty the treasury of the great Chia dynasty. A hundred million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid could even buy a true sacred artifact. With a stiffened face, Chia Hong replied with a dry laugh, Young lady, this is rather unrealistic. Furthermore, forgive my frankness, but, even with the receipt in hand, you won't be able to take a drop of sovereign spiritual liquid from the great Chia dynasty. He was not lying. Anyone holding a receipt for a hundred million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid and trying to claim it from the great Chia dynasty would probably be sentenced to their end by his father, the king for their astronomical greed. Even an upper earthly sovereign would not be able to claim this amount of sovereign spiritual liquid. Lin Jing ignored this and continued saying with pouting lips, if you don't have the guts, why gamble? Just fight normally. What a waste of my time. Sensing the indifference in Lin Jing's voice, Chia Hong frowned tightly. Then he replied with a laugh, all right then. Since our young lady is so interested, I shall be profligate with my purse. He took out a golden scroll, and as his fingers danced before it, spiritual energy was transformed into words in thin air before fusing with the scroll. At the end, with a flick of his fingers, a drop of his blood fell onto the scroll, forming a spiritual seal. After all this, Chia Hong threw the golden scroll carelessly, and it transformed into a stream of golden light, shooting into one of the stone lions on the stadium. If I lose, then you can take it. But I have to remind you, if you really plan to claim this from the great Chia dynasty, you will be seeking your own death, Chia Hong said with a smile. He did not think much of it, as he assumed Lin Jing was just messing around. Moreover, he never thought that he would lose. Even if he actually did, anyone who would really take the receipt to the great Chia dynasty would be an utter fool. Well, chasing the debt is my job you don't have to worry about it. When she saw this, Lin Jing's eyes narrowed slightly, like a fox's eyes with a glint of cunning in them. Mu Chen, the rest depends on you. After you win, we will split the 100 million drops of sovereign spiritual liquid in half. Lin Jing looked at Mu Chen and pumped her fists to encourage him. Seeing her actions, Mu Chen did not know whether to cry or laugh, but he nodded anyway and he looked at Chia Hong with a bit of sympathy. How wonderful would his expression be when he realized that the playful girl before him was the daughter of the well-known martial ancestor of the Great Thousand World. Although the Great Chia dynasty was a tyrannical force, if they were to find trouble with this young girl, 
It would not be a simple matter like a few upper earthly sovereigns showing up. If they really did provoke her, and a heavenly sovereign from the martial border was sent for her, Emperor Chia could only swallow his grievances. Chia Hong had jumped into an abyss dug for him by Lin Jing. Mu Chen and Nine Nether exchanged looks and silently nodded. This unlucky child is really too naive. Chapter 1103 Battling Chia Hong While Mu Chen and Nine Nether were expressing their sympathy for Chia Hong subtly, the latter could not help but frown, as he sensed their glances. This made him feel uneasy, but in the end, he suppressed the subtle emotion. This was because, even after much deliberation, he could not think of any mistake that he had made in this matter. After all, he knew that neither his bills signed in acknowledgement of the debt nor Lin Jing's earlier remark about being accompanied by a beautiful lady would be admitted by both sides afterwards. The reason why he had proposed this was because he had wanted to stay behind and deal with Mu Chen. Then, he would be able to deal with Lin Jing and Nine Nether. After sorting through this all in his mind, Chia Hong was able to calm down. He glanced at Lin Jing, who smiled like a fox. This caused his heart to skip a beat, as he thought to himself. After you land in my hands, we'll see if you are laughing then. But first, I must get rid of this rather annoying boy. Chia Hong's eyes slowly turned toward Mu Chen. In the previous clash, he had suffered a small loss by underestimating Mu Chen. However, he would not make that same mistake again. Instead, he would do his best to show this man his prowess. At that moment, the spiritual power that was sweeping through the heavens and earth rolled up, with waves of the powerful force of spiritual oppression surging towards Mu Chen. The fierce suppression caused even the earth beneath Mu Chen to tremble slightly. Mu Chen's expression became calm, even though he knew that Chia Hong had the power to contend with him. At once, Mu Chen's hands drooped, and his body's spiritual energy began to activate, sweeping over him like the sea. Behind him, the space warped and the sovereign sea loomed above it, exuding a domineering spiritual energy. Chia Hong's spiritual oppression was then washed away completely. Although he was only half a step into the ninth grade sovereign, the spiritual energy within Mu Chen's sovereign sea had been cultivated in the blood sea space for nearly three years including three years of practice and refining. This meant that Mu Chen's own spiritual power had only grown richer and more immense. Moreover, because he had also refined the undying flame left by the undying bird, it also gave his spiritual energy a peculiar edge, such as being inexhaustible. Therefore, even if it was only a battle of how rich and enduring one's spiritual energy was, the current Mu Chen would never be weaker than ninth grade sovereigns. In fact, he would be even stronger. As Chia Hong acutely perceived Mu Chen's exceptional and unordinary majestic spiritual energy, a glint flashed in his eyes. He then sneered coldly, his eyes instantly filling with malice. Boom! The powerful spiritual energy exploded behind Chia Hong, causing his figure to transform into remnants of afterimages. Almost instantly, he appeared in front of Mu Chen, dealing him a swift punch. With that one single blow, Chia Hong's body unexpectedly had wisps of blood aura boiling within it. These blood auras encircled his fists tightly, making for a deeply shocking scene. That is Chia Hong's practice of the god of war battle physique. Qin Ya looked on, while Chia Hong's blood aura burst out from his body, her gaze turning serious. After all, this was a rather domineering and eerie body refining divine technique which required countless bloody battles for it to be tempered with the blood of the enemy. In Chia Hong's attempts to cultivate one, he had gone to the battlefield and gathered the blood of his enemies to successfully cultivate. Looks like he also was able to cultivate a body refining divine technique. Mu Chen commented. The majestic blood aura surged with a thick air of murderous intent, which made Mu Chen have the illusion that the blood sea was charging straight at him. However, this kind of interference did not have much effect on him. Then, suddenly, purple gold rays burst out from his body. It was the dragon phoenix body. Purple gold light trickled down Mu Chen's body, making it appear to be indestructible. His expression was nonchalant, as he similarly dealt out a devastating blow. 
Mu Chen did not take any evasive stance, as even though Xiao Hong was proud of how strong his physique was, in the eyes of Mu Chen, his opponent was simply laughable. The two fists, which both contained terrible forces, then tore through the void, colliding with each other brutally. Boom! The air itself seemed to explode at this moment, the visible impact of its shockwaves raging. The space also twisted, and the earth under their feet, not being able to bear the impact, cracked immediately. All eyes were fixed on the source of the shockwaves, the expressions of the onlookers changing slightly, for they saw that Mu Chen, who had just clashed hard with Chia Hong, was still standing strong, like a rock. On the other hand, Chia Hong's whole body was trembling, as if he had suffered much from the impact. Mu Chen's physique is terrifyingly powerful, someone from the crowd whispered. Qin Ya, Jiang Ling, and many other people's expressions also turned solemn. Amid the commotion, a gloomy glint flashed in Chia Hong's eyes, as Mu Chen's power had exceeded his expectations. Boom! The majestic murderous intent erupted from Chia Hong's body. He then stomped his foot and the earth collapsed, his figure unexpectedly turning into numerous remnants of afterimages. These afterimages then flew out, revolving around Mu Chen rapidly. The shadow of the fists, which were full of killing intent, immediately enveloped Mu Chen entirely. Such an offensive attack was almost too fierce to escape. Boom! Crash! In the face of such a stormy offensive attack, Mu Chen's expression turned grave. With a wave of his sleeve robes, the purple golden dragon rose from his body, surrounding him and forming a powerful shield. This shield immediately went to work, resisting the punches that enshrouded him. Dong Dong! A deep sound spread throughout the battle arena, as the earth at Mu Chen's feet caved in. Chia Hong's offense was indescribably aggressive, even the protection of the real dragon spirit was unable to resist all of the terrible fist shadows. In fact, at that moment, one of them came charging directly towards Mu Chen's head. At that moment, the ground cracked, shocking the two figures, who immediately flew backwards. Countless glances looked towards the two silhouettes in awe. Mu Chen lifted up one palm, his expression calm. If looking closely, one could see that his sleeve was slightly torn, as it had suffered the impact of the residual shockwaves previously. In the distance, Chia Hong's eyes were malicious. His previous offensive was so brutal, even a very strong ninth grade sovereign would have been injured, let alone a man who was half a step into the ninth grade sovereign. However, remarkably, Mu Chen had only suffered a torn sleeve. This incredible outcome caused Chia Hong hearts to be full of frustration, rage, and murderous intent. Chia Hong took a deep breath, the mood on his face gradually calming down, then finally returning to indifference. Perceiving this change, Mu Chen's eyes narrowed, and he began to detect a dangerous aura coming from Chia Hong. His opponent's gaze was indifferent and emotionless, his palms tightly clenched. Buzz! At that moment, the bright red light condensed in his palm, and in the next instant, the red light transformed into a red and ferocious battle spear, on which many runes were engraved. Then, terrifying spiritual energy fluctuations and a murderous aura erupted from it. Mu Chen looked at the red battle spear, his gaze turning grave. He wondered to himself, is that a quasi-divine artifact? As Mu Chen was slightly astonished, Chia Hong smiled maliciously at him. The red light surged on his body again, finally transforming into a blood-red battle armor, which had runes of a roaring dragon on it. As the auras of the spear and the armor were similar, they were clearly a set. When they appeared on Chia Hong's body, the spiritual waves emitting from them soared to an extremely alarming degree. At this point, even a ninth grade sovereign at his peak would be intimidated. That's the Scarlet Dragon Battle Spear and the Scarlet Dragon Battle Armor. This is a complete set of a quasi divine artifact. If used together, their power is enough to dominate all of the quasi divine artifacts. Chin Ya exclaimed, while looking at the scene, fear coloring his eyes. In the face of such an ace card dealt by Chia Hong, one could only retreat. After all, it was obvious that Chia Hong was hell-bent on murder now. As such, Mu Chen was really in danger. Chapter 1104, 
nine ferocious heavenly beast body. In the great battle arena, Chia Hong stood tall. Crimson waves swept out from his body, and such momentum actually made the heavens and earth darken. He pointed the crimson spear towards the ground, and the tip of the spear shimmered with red light. As it shined and surged, a wave tore the hard ground apart like tofu, and deep and unfathomable cracks were gouged out of the ground. Red armor wrapped around his body. A red dragon soared on the battle armor, and the roars of a dragon could vaguely be heard as strong spiritual energy fluctuations gradually radiated. Chia Hong's momentum was so strong that it caused many to shiver. In this part of the world, the strong men from all sides also looked at Chia Hong with shocked expressions. Finally, they shook their heads with envy. The great Chia dynasty was indeed rich. This set of equipment on Chia Hong's body was enough to make the other ninth grade sovereigns jealous. This was a true set of quasi-divine artifacts, and combined, other ordinary quasi-divine artifacts were not comparable. With the help of those two quasi-divine artifacts, this time, Chia Hong could really contend with ninth grade sovereigns at their peak. Nine Nether looked at this scene, and her beautiful face could not help but change. Even she was aware of a thick sense of threat emanating from Chia Hong. Tan Ya gnashed her teeth and could not help but to say, this guy is shameless. He's already a ninth grade sovereign, but has to rely on the power of the Quasi Divine Artifacts. Bai Lao and the others also looked immensely worried. Although they had seen Mu Chen conquer Dragon Arm Sovereign, Chia Hong's combat prowess far surpassed that of Dragon Arm Sovereigns. When you fight, it's only a matter of who wins and who loses. The loser is not qualified to question the winner's way of winning. Chia Hong swung his battle spear slightly, and the spear glowed with scarlet light as he glanced coldly at Mu Chen. Boom! When his voice had just fallen, his eyes were instantly cold, and his body burst out like a flash of lightning. The scarlet dragon battle spear swung as 100 feet of red rainbow surged. A sharp and unparalleled air of murderous intent soared into the sky, as if tearing it apart. The aura of the spear was so fast that it appeared in front of Mu Chen in the blink of an eye, and it surprised him a little. With the help of the spear and armor to increase his power, Chia Hong was nearly twice as strong as before. Whoosh! The long spear pierced through the void as Mu Chen hurriedly retreated two steps. With a wave of his sleeves, the roars of a dragon sounded as the real dragon spirit took off, transforming into the purple gold light shield, protecting Mu Chen. Buzz! The long scarlet spear landed harshly on the purple gold light shield, and the crimson light exploded in a frenzy. The light barrier formed by the spirit of the real dragon withstood it for a few moments, but was eventually penetrated by the spear as it charged straight towards Mu Chen's throat. Even though Mu Chen's real dragon spirit had evolved, the strength it possessed today was at best only a half-step to ninth grade sovereign. However, now Chia Hong's attack intensity had reached a new level, so Mu Chen's defense could no longer prevent it from attacking and could only put up some form of resistance. The spear shot towards Mu Chen at lightning speed, and just as it was about to stab Mu Chen's throat, suddenly a light condensed in the middle of his forehead. A strange vertical eye suddenly opened, and a fierce black light beam surged out as the space in front of it shattered. Boom! The black beam of light hit the spear, and a terrible shockwave burst out. The unstoppable spear was finally stopped by the shockwave. You have a quasi-divine artifact, too. The spear retreated as Chia Hong's gaze flashed in shock, looking at the strange vertical eye on Mu Chen's forehead. I wonder if your quasi-divine artifact is comparable to mine. Chia Hong harumphed coldly, and his palm suddenly shook as the scarlet dragon battle spear shot out of his hand, transforming into a huge scarlet dragon spear beam. Extremely domineering majestic spiritual energy swept out. Roar! The huge scarlet dragon spear beam swooped down carrying the power of destruction and directly enveloped Mu Chen. In the face of such a fierce offensive attack, even a real ninth grade sovereign would find it extremely dangerous. Mu Chen looked at the huge scarlet dragon spear beam, which magnified in his eyes, and his gaze grew solemn. The next moment, the purple gold light burst out of his body again, 
and the pair of giant phoenix wings stretched out from his back. Whoosh! The phoenix wings fanned as Mu Chen disappeared from his original spot. Boom! The huge scarlet dragon spear beam swooped down and exploded on the ground. The earth collapsed for hundreds of feet around, and a deep gully appeared in the ground. How fast! A blow unexpectedly failed. Chia Hong's eyes narrowed. The speed at which Mu Chen vanished was so fast that even he was a little frightened. Had this guy suppressed his speed previously? Whoosh! As these thoughts ran through Chia Hong's mind, a ghostly figure had appeared behind him. His face changed as he clenched his fist, and the Scarlet Dragon battle spear roared back. Boom! However, Mu Chen, who was behind him, did not give him a chance. His expression was cold as he dealt out a punch. Roar! In one punch, the sounds of dragons roaring and phoenixes crying reverberated as the spirit of the real dragon and phoenix entwined. Accompanied by Mu Chen's blow, they transformed into purple gold light, suddenly surging out. With the punch, the purple gold ray of light was like a shock to the air. Layers of ripples were visible as the faint boom of an explosion rang out. The ground under their feet was torn out leaving a deep gully. Mu Chen's fist had gathered the spirit of the real dragon and phoenix. With the two combined, even a true ninth grade sovereign would certainly be seriously injured. Aware of the terrible force coming from behind, Chia Hong's gaze also turned grave. Naturally, he could feel that Mu Chen's blow had become stronger than before. And the latter, who had previously taken advantage of his speed, had made it impossible for him to escape the punch. Chia Hong's gaze flickered. He immediately sneered as he flicked his finger. The Scarlet Dragon battle spear tore a hole through the space, and fierce crimson light charged straight towards Mu Chen's head, apparently intending to attack instead of guard. Boom! However, Mu Chen simply ignored the battle spear charging ferociously at him. His punch containing powerful spiritual energy pierced the space and finally hit Chia Hong's back. Clang! The sound of gold and iron clashing suddenly sounded as Mu Chen's fist hit Chia Hong's Scarlet Dragon battle armor. Immediately, red light surged and Scarlet Dragon runes hovered. As the dragon's mouth opened, a terrible power poured in and swallowed it up. This Scarlet Dragon battle armor's defense far surpassed Mu Chen's expectations. Boom! Even so, Mu Chen's fist still caused Chia Hong to fly backwards. As Chia Hong flew, a dark beam burst again from the exterminating eye on Mu Chen's forehead and deflected the Scarlet Dragon battle spear charging towards him. Chia Hong landed on the ground but quickly steadied himself. He clenched his fists, and the Scarlet Dragon battle spear was once again in his hands. His eyes were cold as he glanced at Mu Chen. If he had not had the protection of the Scarlet Dragon battle armor, Mu Chen's blow would have injured him severely. The expressions of the strong men looking at the fierce confrontation between the two gradually grew solemn. Some glances towards Mu Chen were also colored with fear. Qin Ya, Mu Shan, Jiang Ling, and others also looked solemn. The confrontation between Mu Chen and Chia Hong was lightning fast, but they could clearly detect the danger among them. If anyone was slightly negligent, they would pay a terrible price. Qin Ya sighed and said, this Mu Chen will rise to fame after this battle. To be able to take on Chia Hong, who was a ninth grade sovereign and had summoned two quasi divine artifacts, with the strength of a half step into ninth grade sovereign and still not lose, was comparable to ranking 20th or so on the powerhouse list of Tianlo Continent. I can't even grind you to death like this. What a stinking and hard stone. Under countless impressed gazes, Chia Hong glanced at Mu Chen darkly. His voice did not show the slightest emotion. However, in his heart, there was a slight trace of regret. If he had known that Mu Chen would be so difficult to deal with, he would have thought of a complete solution to end Mu Chen and not end up like this, forcing himself down a road of no return. At this point, he and Mu Chen must determine victory and defeat. Otherwise, today he would indeed become a stepping stone for Mu Chen. The proud Chia Hong absolutely could not tolerate this. If news of this got back to the great Chia dynasty, it would certainly affect his father's opinion of him. 
he would receive less grace, and his other brothers would climb over him. Mu Chen must die today. At this point, Chia Hong's eyes surged with murderous intent and glared at Mu Chen so ferociously that the temperature between heaven and earth lowered. Chia Hong's gaze was ruthless as his palms slowly loosened the scarlet dragon battle spear and immediate conjured up seals. Buzz! The space behind Chia Hong suddenly became distorted, and a majestic vast sovereign sea emerged. Within the sovereign sea, the spiritual energy was scarlet, as if it contained a monstrous murderous aura. Boom! The sovereign sea rolled endlessly, and all of a sudden, the spiritual power rose into the sky, directly through the sovereign sea, and turned the sky above the battle arena into a bloody world. Blood-red spiritual energy frantically condensed behind Seo Hong, and in just a few moments, amid countless shocked eyes, condensed into a sovereign celestial body thousands of feet huge. The sovereign celestial body was dark red, and a fierce and domineering spirit swept through it. The effect was suffocating. The sovereign celestial body's arms, feet, chest, and back had nine beast runes, and ferocious, ominous force burst out of the runes as if primordial ferocious beasts had passed through time and space and emerged. Ferocious and brutal. Mu Chen looked at the sovereign celestial body. His eyes narrowed, and then a message passed through his mind. Nine ferocious heavenly beast body, list of 99 sovereign celestial bodies, ranked 57th.